tent yet. Yeah, they'll face this year's amazing story. NC State, the 11 seeded Wolfpack, took out Duke 76 to 64, and UConn and Alabama will also be in Glendale. The Detroit Tigers, they are in first place. Three straight wins over the White Sox has them undefeated at the top of the AL Central. All three victories by one run, Jason Foley earning two saves in the series. The Wolverines will play in the Frozen Four again for the third straight time, taking out Michigan State 5 to 2. They advance to face Boston College in 10 days. And a 64 yard Field goal at Ford Field, Jake Bates sending the Michigan Panthers to a UFL victory over the Battle Hawks 18 to 16 with an impressive boot with three seconds to go in their first game. From the Corwell Health Sports Desk, I'm Chris Falar. For more, go to 971 The Ticket and Odyssey.com. You heard in the update, Purdue's in the final four. Long time coming. After the embarrassment of losing to a 16 seed, two wins away from a national title. They're the lone Big Ten team left. Could be the first Big Ten team to win a national title since... Since it was here. Uh, well, yeah, go Michigan all the way State. back to Izzo, yeah, yeah. 20 plus years ago. Do you root for the Big Ten? Do you root for Purdue? Purdue is a team that is going to get some support. People watched them in person at Little Caesars Arena. They're also a team that gets officiated in a way, Edie specifically, that's polarizing. Don't roll your eyes at me. The guy throws his elbows around like he's Frankenstein's monster. And he gets beat on for 40 minutes as long as he's in there. And everybody wants to complain about, oh, he's not getting calls. That guy gets abused. And and everybody he looks does. at it and goes, well, oh, well, he's a big guy. He can handle it. John, he shot 22 free throws in the game. Yeah, he earned them. Sure. I'm not disputing it. You watch. People do... Hammer you know, they have to. This is the only answer because he's 7'4", and they get called, and they should be called. But he never gets called on the other end. And he is not the most coordinated person, coordinated enough, but he's, he flails around too, and it never gets called. Greg, would you like to handle this one? Someone put a good compilation video out there from just yesterday's game alone. Mm-hmm. He selectively challenges at the rim. He lets a lot of layups go by in order to stay out of foul trouble. Right. But there's also time... When he needs it, at the end, doesn't connect, drives the basket. Mm-hmm. Look, he's got the length where he doesn't have to buy him up all the way, and he can just kind of play back. Right. Swats the shot away, and that was the game over. You saw the emotion out of Zach Eady after that play. Yeah. And listen, he he gives uh, uh, Gene Cady the, the net. Certainly yeah. seems like a nice enough that guy. He, that he cut down without having to use the ladder, by the way. Yeah, he's 7'4". Greg, you watch more college hoops than the two of us combined. Do you think he's officiated inconsistently? Uh, look, he's seven four. I mean, this this is the part of it. Like, it's it's. I, I think you're gonna have challenges. I, you know, I I think I get when I I hear this. I I hear when someone is guarding a, a superstar player, yeah. and you know, there's a you know a foul call that that like a color analyst doesn't agree with, mm-hmm. and the color analyst will say. Well, you know, if you're this player, just like, what am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to play defense? Sorry, that guy's seven four, right. and you just can't. You can only play to your abilities and your size, right? But you can see how that makes him unlikable to people. That it feels like his um, just by I sheer, don't know by, that, by, he's by, that unlikable. Oh, well, here, here, how I'll respond to that. If you find that unlikable, that is what you're going to have to carry. Yes, I'm not going to carry that. Yes, like, I you don't carry dislike on... Zach Eady because. He might get officiated differently because he's seven four, three hundred pounds. Yeah, I mean you can carry that in the pouch of that pink sweatshirt you got there. Okay, I'll carry it over here. You root for Purdue. You root for the Big Ten. I do root for the Big Ten, um, and I'm rooting for for Purdue. I, I I stated that one when we came out with our brackets. I also stated it last week when I was hoping that I wanted to have a, a Big Ten final. I wanted Purdue versus Illinois. They were the only two team Big Ten teams left. Illinois obviously got rocked. Um, with a 30 nothing run, that was uncomfortable in my house. But when I think about Purdue and Matt Painter, like I'm happy for him. I like him as a person, as a coach, as a guy that has developed some really good basketball players. But when he's interviewed, when I've interviewed him, when I've had interactions with him, he's always been very respectful, 
very professional. Mm-hmm. And I'm, yeah, I, I'm rooting for Matt Painter more than anything. And the, the fact that he's able to get to the Final Four, they haven't been to the Final Four as a program since 1980. Matt Painter has been much maligned because they've had some really good teams. He's recruited well, he's developed, but they have fallen woefully short when it comes to the tournament. And we had an opportunity last night to see two coaches go at each other that the monkey was going to get off one of their backs, whether it was Rick Barnes in Tennessee or it was Matt Painter and Purdue. They're in the final four. This is on the heels of getting bounced two years ago as a two seed against a 15. Yep. Last year as a one seed, the second time in history, it's always a three seed. Yes. Just as a correction in this, so let's understand that, by the way, yes, losing to a 15 seed St. Peter's was bad. That was in the Sweet 16. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But but they still got bounced by a 15 seed. They my, might. My apologies. They're playing another double digit seed in the final four. <laughs> right. No, I know. That, but so, and, and, but, but they're in the final four. Right. And, and so you're looking at it going, okay, well, all, all these teams have earned the right to be there. They've gone through the gauntlet. But the, to lose last year as a one seed to a 16, the second time in history. Now we know what Virginia did the following year, yeah. and, and right now I'm 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 generating a little bit of that excitement because they can respond, and if they do, they're going to be knocking off eventually the defending national champs in the championship game. Greg, to John's point, I mean they have been mocked for losing to smaller schools, these these double digit seeds early in the tournament. Three straight years, I believe, they've been knocked out by double-digit seeds, including the most embarrassing, a 16 seed. So there is a little bit of that, like, okay, Purdue's finally here. They're finally in the Final Four, and some people will root for them for that reason. The Big Ten thing, I've never fully understood. So I I know people do this. The SEC is maybe the, the biggest culprit of this. They accept any success as all of their success. So, like, if Alabama wins a national title, all of the SEC football fans thump their gums and, you know, put, pump out their chest. Well, yeah, the SEC just means more. Right. But I've never understood it because if I'm a Michigan basketball fan or an MSU basketball fan, I don't need the perception of the Big Ten to be different. We get six teams as is without winning a national title in 20 years. We're going to get our best six teams in damn near every season. If I'm not one of the six best teams in the Big Ten, I, I mean, that's my own issue. I don't think you need the perception of the Big Ten Conference to get boosted at all as it currently sits, and especially well, not if the field expands. But currently as it sits, that's one of your rivals. expansion. Nobody wants to hear the word expansion sorry, when it comes guys. to college basketball. But, John, Purdue is a rival, a, a, a team that sits in your way if you're going to win a national title. And the more success Purdue has, the easier it is for Purdue to continue that success because in college sports – there's, there's no draft. You go recruit the best, and you have the perception and the brand and the track record. It becomes harder to win against a Purdue if they win a national title as opposed to when they lose to a 16 seed, people are like, ah, do I want to go there? They always choke in the tournament. That's better for Michigan and Michigan State if Purdue had remained a punching bag or a punch line. Well, it kind of feels like there's a draft that's called the transfer portal and <laughs> NIL now. And, but but when there's, the there's, best no, teams there's don't no, have no to pick hierarchy. Last. You just have to pay the most. But the, the best teams don't have right. to pick last. The, right. There's no push to parity in college sports. The right. winners can continue to continue to win. So you don't you don't have to have my view on this, and and I don't care if you do or not. I do, and and maybe it's my disdain for the SEC because of their it just means more mantra down there. And now I'm just looking at it going, well, if my team's in, not in it, I've got to root for something. I'm not just going to sit there as, as, a, as a sports fan and not root for somebody. Root Are you for telling DJ me, Burns. Root for NC State. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to. Okay. I, there, there's, there are it, other it, options. There are other options. Yeah. So don't, why are you sitting there saying, and my reasoning is wrong for, I want to see Matt Painter and the Boilermakers do well. I also I have a personal connection. I have a daughter that's going to be going to Purdue. Would I like her to go to a a, a school that at least has something that they can hang their hat on? Ticket athletically. Yeah. You, okay. I get it. You you at that point you have a familial like, connection. But just yeah. as a Big Ten fan, because I see people doing that. We got a Big Ten team. Got to root for the Big Ten. Texture says, I agree with John. I root for my team, then my state, then the Big Ten, then the Midwest. Go Boilermakers. There you go. 
John, this is a loser's take. If Michigan can't win it, I don't want to see any Big Ten team win the national title. So if I can't win it, no one else can? Yeah. I, I, that, that to me seems like a loser take. Like You can, you can be... A f- you can root for other teams even if they're in your conference. Like, as soon as Michigan's out, which that happened back in November this year, <laughs> <laughs> um, it doesn't mean that when the tournament comes around that you can't, when, when, in any specific game, pick a win or lose. Have you ever watched a game when you're like, yeah, I don't really care who wins? I've turned games on and I've started that way, and then all of a sudden something happens in the game. I'm like, okay, now I've, now I've picked sides. Eventually, you pick a side. It's been a very long time since the Big Ten won a basketball title. So, yes, I'm rooting for Purdue. That's Rob in Redford. Another one says, I would root for all Big Ten schools except Michigan State because of your loudmouth Spartan co-workers at the station. I can I could understand that. More ticket texters. Half the foul calls against Edie were invisible. Touch him and it's a foul. Edie is eight feet tall and 100 pounds heavier than everyone. Shaq used to get beat on. Edie gets weak calls. And guys... And he falls on guys and doesn't get called. John, he's unliked, signed Pedro. I mean, I, for everyone that doesn't like him, I could find others that do. And, you know, when he's down there, like, is it a boring style of basketball? It can be. But it's, and maybe this is me being an old guy or older is that I I mean I grew up when centers mattered in the NBA. Now is he going to have an NBA career? Doesn't look like it or at least not one that that is going to be front and center as a superstar, but I like watching them play. And here's where I think that they do pose a threat to UConn. Last year it was all Zach Eady and we saw how well that did. This year it's not just Zach Eady, but they could put four guys out there with them. If they go with the small lineup, Smith, lawyer, they've got shooters. Yeah. They've got guys that are, are shooting over 40% behind the arc. Like they can beat you in a number of different ways. Now against Tennessee behind the arc was not falling. So they went, they went inside and it was 40 points. points. Yeah. Do you root for him? Do you root against him? The Boilermakers, the Big Ten, the conference as a whole. And I'm looking at the clock. We never asked you about uh, strip clubs. We'll do oh, that. Oh, geez. That's too bad. <laughs> It's, really, it's not that big a deal. We'll get to that next. It's 97.1. You want to talk about madness? Moran Chevrolet has mad deals going on right now. We're talking 2024 Silverado for only $3.59 a month. That's a 24-month lease with $9.99 down. Silverado's perfect for hauling whatever you need, whether that's those spring projects or just something for work. Moran has shipments arriving daily, so when you go, they're going to have the vehicle you're looking for. Score your best deal. Moran Chevrolet, MoranExpress.com. Check them out. Crash it north of 15 Mile in Clinton Township. Moran Chevrolet, where you always get the best price, period. Chevrolet, together, let's drive.
before we get back to the phones and the ticket text, John, you were out last week on Thursday. Rieger was in, and someone said it sounded like the equivalent of a strip club at noon. Well, Rie- you and him? Rieger and I. Oh, boy. Yeah, not a compliment. Uh, he, he, <laughs> he tried to turn it into a compliment. It was not. <laughs> of course he did. <laughs> but then it came up because he goes, have you ever been to a strip club? And I said, no, they're kind of you know gross and grungy, not, not my thing. People wondered, had John Jansen ever been to a strip club? I do think they're gross and grungy as well. I, I, it's kind I, of a sad <laughs> place to be, the strip club. It is. And so, yes. Um, uh, Mom, turn, turn, turn the, uh, the radio down for just a moment. Um, I was down at the Kentucky Derby for a bachelor party. And one of the stops that they made was at a strip club. So I'm like, all right, well, let, you know, okay, let's, let's, see, let's see what this is. I walk in with a couple of my buddies. Now, this is not that long ago. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm a grown man with three daughters. I walked in and was there for about five minutes. And I kept looking around. I'm like, do I leave my buddies and be that guy. (laughs) And, and I kept thinking to myself, I'm like, well, what if, what if somebody takes a picture and you know, Hey, hey, you know, Jansen was in, in the club. Like I just, I I couldn't handle the thought. And so I instantly at that point was like, Uber, I'm out. And when I made that call, surprisingly enough to me, there were a couple of buddies that said, you know what? Hey, Hey, what size Uber did you get? Because I'm hopping in too. I did, did not want to be there. It was as awkward and as, and I was as awkward as uncomfortable oh, as bet. you can imagine. I bet. <laughs> and so I was I was in and out, and it was didn't want I didn't want any part of it. And no, it just no. I instantly and it was before my wife and I were married. I was actually going down. I was driving. I stopped at the Kentucky Derby, drove down to to Austin where she was living. And I called her right away, too. I'm like, hey, babe, this is where I'm coming from. Like, I didn't want it to get back to her. She's like, hey, it's okay. I'm, you're, you're on a bachelor party. Like, I, yeah. I know what, 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 what goes on, and, and it's okay. I'm like, I, I just I, – I, I had to admit to it because I couldn't stand the thought of carrying that secret around. Yeah, so that's what I, exactly what I felt with. like. Thank you, Heather. Champ. Heather off today. She'll be back tomorrow. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. Meanwhile, Rieger's like naming all the the local establishments and the hours of operation and their deals. Yeah, so you so can who's see got it. the buffet? Who right. does yeah, it? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the buffet at the strip club sounds awful. We had someone send in the, the the five hosts most likely to go to a strip club at the ticket or spend the most time at the strip club. Stony was number one. <laughs> <laughs> I think Rieger was in the top five. A couple other people. Oh, what's uh, what's what's the last name of the the midday producer? <laughs> <laughs> we'll get Kang's thoughts and crosstalk. Um, I did find it funny, by the way. Getting back to Purdue, this is the one year Doug didn't take him. Well, that was brought up on Twitch, and uh, they wanted to know if 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 he could jump back on the bandwagon at this point. And everybody thinks that he is the, he was the curse for the Boilermakers, and so uh, they, they don't want him to jump back on because they think that if that happens, they're destined to lose. I'd be curious to see because, you know, he always had a soft spot for Purdue. Oh, yeah, this is the year. We started football. You know, this is the year Purdue, you know, finally does something, and then they would, you know, lose five games. Oh, this is the year, the next year. John, the West isn't very good. This yeah. is the year they put it together. And on the pregame show, we used to do picks. He would pick Purdue every time. I just knew that was a win for me, so I just take the opposite. Go for it. The question was rooting interest. Uh, you know, you you said you're rooting for Purdue. You got you know a daughter that's going to go there, and, yeah. and there are people here who root for them because Big Ten team. And I've never understood the Big Ten rooting interest thing. Uh, there's also a ticket texture that says, you know, we got to see it in our own backyard. And I got a message from someone who points out this was the biggest game that Little Caesars Arena has ever hosted. Pistons had a playoff series, right? Quick sweep. Wings have never played a playoff series at LCA. Yeah. This is a trip to the Final Four. I think they're right. 
and the Frozen Four that was supposed to be hoped was uh, hosted was canceled because of COVID. COVID. Yeah, yeah, that probably is. Uh, um, and in fact, uh, two of my daughters, not the one that's going to Purdue, uh, but Ruby and Ellie, got last minute tickets to go down for Friday night's game. Good crowd. Oh yeah, they said it was. Yeah, it wasn't sold out. There were some empty seats. Now I, I and I tried to explain. Hope you know, some come for the first game, some come for the second game. Right. Uh, but they said the the experience was unbelievable, and they actually got on the the fan cam. They sent me the the video of them, and they're you know in the in the you know the square, and they're they're sitting there looking at this camera, looking at the board, and and then obviously you know like twenty seconds later, I'm I'm sitting there. What what what's going to happen? And then all of a sudden, they go nuts because they saw themselves on the big screen. So they had a great time. They said the environment was a lot of fun. Let's get to Scott and Clausen. Scott, good morning. You're on ninety seven one. Hey, good morning, guys. Thanks for taking the call. Um, Just wanted to give a a, a reasoning as to why I'll be rooting for Purdue. As long as Michigan's not in the tournament, um, I'm a grad. You know, in 2018, I was living in New York and saw Michigan playing in the Big Ten tournament uh, at Madison Square Garden. In the final, they're going up against Purdue. And I just kind of absentmindedly, you know, turned it to my friends, you know, wondering, you know, who is Purdue beating this season? Uh, I just kind of asked out loud, who would want to be a Purdue fan? And this older woman in front of me just kind of turned around real slowly, just like, do you know that we're sitting right here? <laughs> uh, it's good to have awareness, you know, of other fan bases. I mean, I'll, I'll be rooting for them until they're out of it. Okay. And is it just because of that experience? Yeah, I don't know. You know, I, I feel like I kind of exuded the Michigan arrogance that a lot of people <laughs> talk about. And uh, I don't know, that's kind of, I, I guess, uh, boiler up. Yeah. This is you writing a Scott, wrong. Scott, let me ask you this question. Are you, uh, you mentioned you're a U of M grad. You spent some time in New York. Are you, are you a native to Clawson or are you a transplant? Uh, I mean, I started out in Bloomfield, but, uh, you know, did my time in the city. And uh, it was always a matter of when I was coming home. But, uh, Man, it's going to be back, especially in April, you know, in the D. Uh, that, yes, yes, yes. E- excitement yeah. around the Tigers right now. Spring is sprung. Spring Winter's is sprung. Done. Draft is here. Detroit will be the one. Yep. There it is. There you go. <laughs> Good stuff, Scott. Hey, thanks, Scott. Appreciate it. So it wasn't for the Big Ten. It was just a personal experience. Yeah. Uh, I think we've all probably had that moment where we've said something, not understanding who might be around us. Uh, but his his interaction with the Boilermaker there had said, okay, you know, the, the class act, huh? I could root for them if Michigan is out. Stan in Shelby Township. Stan, good morning. Good morning, Jim. Good morning, John. Good morning. Uh, Jim, you were nice enough to have me on the, uh, on the ticket uh, about a month or so ago, and I brought up the fact that in 2023, we, uh, the Tigers opened up with 37 on their first 40 games, 37 of the games were against playoff uh, Mm -hmm. teams that made the playoffs in 22, and the other three were the Boston Red Sox. And I predicted that they would go 27 and 13 because of their pitching and their defense. You know, the thing to me that I think is most important is that, you know, we have a team of hungry people that want to play. Uh, we have great pitching, and I, I see we're right now we're one game ahead. INS going two and one going into Chicago. I, I'm not like Jan. I don't think John. We're going to uh, win uh, all three in New York. I think you know I'm trying to go two out of three because that's the history of baseball. But uh, the Tigers, I think they're going to make the uh, win the division, and it's going to be because of pitching and defense and some timely hitting. What do you think? Well, that's their formula. It's the way they're built. I mean, the idea here would be that after drafting pitching for years and years and years, is this the year that it finally comes together? Scooble's healthy. Mize is healthy. Going to see him, uh, what, tomorrow? Uh, Olsen, another one of these guys yeah. that they've come tonight. up through the, the system. He'll pitch tonight. The two biggest free agent signings dollar-wise were pitchers, Maeda and Flaherty. Like, Manning isn't even with the club. Another first-round arm they drafted this has got to be the year it all comes together on the bump and you're going to have injuries and you're going to have to piecemeal it together. They've got a good bullpen, have had a good bullpen for years. That's the way they're built. Timely hitting is tough to rely on because, well, you're always kind of sweating it out. You don't have proven commodities at the plate. That's kind of what keeps me from believing they're winning the division, but hey, baby steps. 3-0 and start, get a winning record at the end of April. 
Spread your wings and fly. Yeah, I mean, you got to... It's 162 games. I don't think, as it sits right now, that anybody is looking at this team going, oh, they could go on a, a, a heater in July or August. Will they be better at that time? I think they could be. But if they dig themselves a hole, which they have at the start of the previous three years, now all of a sudden you're looking at it going, well, if they can just get to 500, be a 500 ball club at the end of April or 16 and 14, as, as you and I had both mentioned, then they don't need to be that team that's on a heater. They just need to be within striking range of the division to make it interesting at the end. We got a page of ticket text. People reacting to your strip club stories. Oh, Some people aren't buying it. We'll read those coming up next. Plus, <laughs> plus 64-yard game-winning field goal at Ford Field. You want to make that a fixture? It's 97-1.
it's so cringy, but it's so refreshing at the same time. Well, I mean, there. Yes, it is. Especially since you keep playing it. <laughs> It's April 1st. Our team's 3-0. and The Wings are technically in a playoff race. The draft is in Detroit this month. It is April in the D, John. Yes, it is. Uh, we have some ticket text, and we'll get to uh, a 64-yard field goal at Ford Field and whether this should be a fixture in Detroit. Ticket text on your strip club story. Quote, I was there for five minutes and couldn't handle the thought. Yeah, we've all heard that one before. John, that's from Eric in Nashville. Yeah, well, the thought was that my kids would find out that I was there. Somebody would take a picture of me walking in or out or in it. Like, that was the thought. You're like, I need to get out of here. Yeah. John played 11 years in the NFL, football player on the road. Guarantee you he's been to numerous strip clubs. Let's be real. Have you listened to me over the past three and a half years since I've been on? I, it was all football all the time. Kind of still is. <laughs> and... <laughs> No, I was, I was, I was not going to break curfew. I was not. I would go out to dinner with the guys. John was not a rule breaker. Well, no, I was. It, it wasn't necessarily that. It was just that wasn't part of getting ready for a game. Sad, dirty, grungy. You guys are going to the wrong strip clubs. One at Magic City will change your life. Day shift, lamb chops, etc. <laughs> Another one says, "John, stop lying. You came to the landing strip the night you signed with the Lion, signed Chastity and Brandy." <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, all right speaking of the lions 64 yard field goal by the michigan panthers to win it at the buzzer where the hell did this guy come from everybody starting to google bates jason bates jake jake bates yes jason bates is he a tv guy <laughs> 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 yes. what show was he in uh, that was, you're thinking of Jason Bateman. Oh, Jason Bateman. Yes. Yeah, yes. From yes. way back in, uh, what was that? I, I was too old. Anyways. Yeah. Uh, he's in the, is it Arrested Development? I didn't really watch it. Isn't that what the show was called? Uh, I, I, I don't know. Yes. Greg says. Yeah. Yes. Um, this guy's name is yeah. Jake. So if and then you... Master was in the uh, movie. The <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank you, Stoney. <laughs> so, um, so John, his background, because everybody started to Google this. Sure. He never kicked a field goal in college. He was like a kickoff specialist and he bounced around. Was it Central Arkansas, yes. Texas State, and then a year at Arkansas? As a kickoff specialist. Never kicked between the uprights in his entire time in college. And so kickoff specialist, you're thinking, okay, well, he's got the leg. And obviously, you know, once... He was able to put it through the upright. When it mattered most, game was on the line. He lined up 64-yard field goal to win the season oper for the Michigan Panthers. He actually made it twice. He made a 64-yarder, but there yeah. was a timeout called. Nah, no big deal. He made another 64-yarder. Mm -hmm. And clearly the, the pressure of kicking in the NFL is different. But John, every single Lions fan had the same reaction. Bring Sign him in for up. a workout. Yeah, call him up. See what he's up to. And Tony Paul, the Detroit News, says that the Lions have reached out to the Michigan Panthers. He notes Panthers GM Steve Kayser and Brad Holmes worked together with the Rams for years. Mm -hmm. How big a need? We use that word a lot with free agency. How big a need is kicker? Oh, I think it's 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 definitely on the list. Um, and when you think about, okay, can he reliably kick? a 45-yarder, a 54-yarder, when when it matters most. That's where you start to wonder, okay, was this a one-off? We have no idea. But we have seen – I mean, who was the kicker for the Cowboys? Who's – Out of nowhere. A soccer player. Mm -hmm. And now he's, he's one of the best in the NFL. Like, you never know until you try. So should they bring him in for a tryout? Should they bring him into camp and see if he can compete – for that spot? Sure. Why not? No harm, no foul. The Lions need for a kicker. Sure. But I think people view it as like if they got a good kicker, Campbell's not going for it the way he did in the NFC title. I think he still does. I think fourth and two, Dan Campbell's going to say, I got four first round offensive linemen. I got the best O-line in football. We're going to give either a 
a real honest shot on the ground or a real hard play fake. We're going to get the ball out in space to Laporta or St. Brown, our reliable options, Gibbs with a step on a linebacker. We're going for it on fourth and two. Where I think the kicker is obviously still a need is you want someone you can rely on if it's end of half, end of game, it's fourth and right. eight, it's not a 45-yard field goal, it's a 55-yard field goal. Now what? I don't think they... I know Badgley made the one in the playoffs, but I don't think people feel like they've got something there they can rely on. So yeah, if a dude can hit 64 yards, you got the leg for it, yeah, I'm interested. Yeah, see see if it works. See if it happens. Um, see if he can be consistent. I mean... The, I don't think it changes Dan Campbell's perspective or his theory no. on how he operates on fourth down. You mentioned it. Where it comes into play is if there's no timeouts, you're down by one or two or even three to tie the game to go into overtime, and the ball's at the 47-yard line. You got no other option. It's either Hail Mary, throw it into the end zone, or Hail Mary, let's see if we can kick it between the uprights. And as much as we like Jared Goff, do we think he's like the the drop back and show off his arm strength and put it 60 yards in the air into the end zone? Well, do I think he could get it there? Sure. Yes. But again, it's it's you'd rather have a kicker. Yeah, you you'd could rather. Kick. Yeah, you'd rather see if you could win it in regulation or send it to overtime at that point. And, and he's obviously got the leg for it. Does he have the accuracy, consistent accuracy? Yeah, I, I mean, that's the thing. And, and I guess this is why this league exists. It's, it, it's the U. FL now it's the merged league it's why it exists they they they're the ones that experimented with the kickoff rule that is now in the NFL yeah. for the upcoming season I don't think you're going to find a lot of star pro bowl players but if you find a guy who can help your team you use it as another scouting tool another way to evaluate and I do think guys like kickers are optimal for a league like this guys who just come out of nowhere finally get a shot show some competency some confidence and you yeah. say hey what the hell not he it's not like He's going to be asked to, to tackle or keep up with anybody. It's your independent skill set. Can you replicate the kicks in the NFL that you are at this level? Yeah, yeah. yeah sure. And, and they're, they're echoing exactly what we talked about in regards to Dan Campbell on Twitch. Um, some of it said, well, maybe he would, you know, wouldn't go for it as much. And everybody else says that's, that excuse is lame because Campbell has arguably been the best punter in the league, and he still has games where he doesn't use Jack Fox to control field position. Yep. Not going to change who Dan Campbell is. That's the only thing I say. People who really, really want a kicker, it's it's not going to change who Dan Campbell is. If you want it situationally, we can have a conversation. Ticket Texter says, Jason Bateman was most recently in Ozark. That's where you may most recently have heard from him. Uh, that was Jeff in Sterling Heights. Other one says, Jake Bates doesn't fit Dan Campbell's hit 20 in blackjack culture. Jay in Warren. <laughs> hit me. Dan, you got 20. You got two tens. Let me sit this one out. Give me an ace. Come on. There's one in there. I know, I know there is. I know. I know. Give me one of four. That's all I need. Morning, guys. What's Ford Field's longest made field goal? Sign Dave. And he has the answer. Gov, you want to you yeah, yeah, fill would people you, yeah, yeah. Gov, would you, would you like to, uh, or, or maybe give maybe your son get your a call? Son, put him on hold and we'll see. Doink. Oh, uh, Tucker. Tucker. Yeah. Did Jake Bates get his master's degree? Is the last ticket text. I don't know. You'd think being in school, that many schools that, that often, I mean, you'd probably got a, some kind of degree. Maybe maybe he did. There's one other decision that the Lions have to make. Not, I'm not biting on that one. <laughs> not today? Not today. Not today. Lions are on the clock. We are into April. The draft is at the end of the month, but they got a decision to make in the next 48 hours. We're going to get to that coming up next. It's 97-1.
Lions on the clock. Draft at the end of the month, but they got two days to make a decision. Brock Wright, do you match or do you let them walk to your biggest competition in the NFC, the San Francisco 49ers? See, the Lions had tendered him one year, roughly three million bucks round up. The Niners said, no, no, no. We also like to run the ball. We like tight ends that get physical. We'll put a second tight end on the field. We want Brock Wright. Mm -hmm. Here's a three-year deal worth up to $12 million, six of which is guaranteed the details from Adam Schefter. And now the Lions have an opportunity to match should they choose to, John. They have till Wednesday, and I I hope that they do. I'm not going to lose any sleep if they don't, but this is a guy that has proved to be very valuable to this team. There's been a couple of big moments with him catching important footballs Jets game two years ago being one yeah but again I'm not going to lose sleep over a guy that only catches 13 balls but it's the amount of times that he is on the field when we see big runs or even just the consistent four to five yard run Brock Wright is there and is James Mitchell going to be the guy that steps into his role if Brock Wright is not there James Mitchell came to the Lions recovering from an ACL yep. that he that he you know blew out at Virginia Tech. Shane Zilstra missed all of last year with an injury. Who is it that they are going to rely on to be that number one blocking tight end? Sam Laporte is great. There's no question about it. But you got to have that second tight end when you're a team that focuses on the run, on the play action, even if you go two tight ends and – you're going to you know, eventually send Laporta out into a route. A lot of times on play action, that, that second tight end stays in the block, and it's probably backside, and it's, it's, a, it's a very important block when you're talking about a quarterback that can't avoid anyone. Teams that want to run the ball like having more than one tight end they can rely on in the run game. San Francisco wants him. I think that's reason enough to want to keep him. Obviously, you know what he is. You've yeah. coached him. There's a reason to believe the Lions should want him regardless, but the fact that San Francisco wants him, well, and Part here's of the psychology thing. is like, no, no, we're keeping him. It's a million dollars more this year than they had originally offered him. Yeah. So they said, we're going to offer you the one year, three million bucks, approximately. Mm-hmm. And you go out there and see if anybody's willing to pay you more. If they do, then you have to come back. Let us know what that deal is. And we have five days to match it. I do think that they ultimately will match it. I think they value what Brock Wright has done. He he doesn't fall into the draft, develop, and and sign because he wasn't drafted here, but they have developed him over the last couple of years, and I think he's valuable enough. And with the way the salary cap is and is continuing to go, another million dollars when you had already earmarked $3 million for him this year, probably the same next year, because next year you don't have the same luxury of go go see if anybody else wants you. You have to going to give him a deal. I don't see that as prohibitive in re-signing him. The cap crunch that everybody is worried about really kicks in in two years, right? That's when the golf deal is 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 the on numbers the books, get big, yeah. and then the St. Brown numbers get really big, and Hutch and Sewell conversations are very real, if not already yeah. signed. This is a three-year deal if you match. Six million guaranteed, which means that third year, hardly any of it is going to be guaranteed, depending on how they structure it. Right. You will be able to get out from under this if you run into a problem. This isn't going to hamstring them or keep them from making any other roster moves. This is just prioritizing a second tight end on a team that runs the ball. And if you don't keep them, that's fine. Brad Holmes can go out and find another tight end. But just realize colleges do not have a lot of blocking tight ends. Most of these colleges are putting out the the, the the Y tight end or the pass catching tight end. Most schools aren't playing with tight ends like this. So there's smaller pool to pick from when you try to replace them. And they may have told Brock Wright, hey, we're going to give you this one-year tender, and we want you to go out and see what the market is. We're going to, whatever it is, we'll match it because we want you back. It, like Those are the conversations that we don't know. Or it could be, hey, we believe that James Mitchell is going to fill that role and be even better then if you go out and you sign a, a long-term deal, good for you. We're happy for you. We're not going to, you know, there's no animosity, but we just don't want to make that investment because we believe Mitchell or Zilstra or whoever we may draft in the, in the draft can fill that role or sign in free agency. Ticket text on it. What do you want them to do? Plus 
Shout out to Nicole from Clinton Township. She won the Red Wing tickets. She heard the April in the D song. She's going to see the Red Wings take on the Rangers Friday. Little Caesars Arena. If you want to be there, Red Wings, DetroitRedWings.com to get tickets and info. John, Texter says they should have kept my favorite lion ever, Zach Ertz. He is in Washington now. Yes. I believe. Yep. Yeah. And he'll be their number one tight end, right? I would think so, yeah. 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 Another one says, I'd rather not waste $4 million on a no-name. Let San Francisco waste their money on Brock Wright. Okay, well, San Francisco has done a, a really nice job of managing their roster, managing their salary cap. Why is he more valuable to them than he is to the Lions? They run a very similar style offensively. Mm-hmm. And, okay, Kittle, Laporta, now the variable becomes Brock Wright in that tight end room. We've talked about it. It's a, I think it's a 1A, 1B. It's fair to say San Francisco's the top dog until they're knocked off. You don't want to lose ground, and you don't want to lose players to San Francisco directly, especially guys that maybe don't show up on the stat sheet but do show up on the results. Yeah, Those kind of football players are the kind of guys that Dan Campbell and Brad Holmes have really flocked to and tried to you know, use as every little piece to turn this thing around. And there's a, a hyper-awareness of how the Lions like to add to the end of the line of scrimmage to add another blocker, and sometimes that is a report is eligible. <laughs> um, and so the problem with that is, one, you're either declaring that you're running, or if it's a miss, you know, if you're going to try and have a little smoke and mirrors, I don't think you're going to throw Dan Skipper the ball. Ticket texture should be a fireable offense for Jim to keep playing that effing awful song clip. Every time yeah. I do it, I see John just die a little inside. Yeah, it, it's, it's very irritating so it is april in the d and i can't promise it won't be played throughout the month i could have instead gone with jason benetti who had a great call on saturday and he punctuated it <laughs> love that <laughs> such a homer zach mckinstry Pretty double play baby fire up chips got benetti in on it wow. love it did you, a good weekend. The, did you see the milkshake yesterday that they were highlighting yes the campfire milkshake tell oh, me yeah. you guys did I, something I saw, with that i, I, I saw, saw that them. too yeah Gator? What? I don't even think I have to ask. What's that? What, are you going to eat that? that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Careful. I got, I got my finger on the dump. <laughs> that was a great response. The answer is yes. <laughs> I think Doug would even try that. I might try that, yeah. Yeah. There's no I mean, way I'd eat the, the, the toasted thing. marshmallow. Yeah. The whole... <laughs> There's no way you would eat the whole thing? No. Come on, John. You know Doug. Like what you couldn't you stomach it's, it's, it? It's not like it was a monster milkshake. It was a regular size milkshake. You know, it's a good size, though. It but, good, but it doesn't matter. It's Doug. He's going to have like, you know, three sips of it, and then he's going <laughs> to give it to his kids. No room for the Impossible Burger. Right. You got to make room. You got to yeah. save a little. Talking. Yeah, to sell one at the ballpark. Yeah. Uh, now we're talking. <laughs> Every's in a good mood today. We are in a good mood. Eh. Yeah. So it's, it's what a winning ball club will do for you. Eh? What's yeah, the, I want yeah, that I want over the, there? Oh, oh you, you still hung oh, up on the last night's hockey. game? Yeah. Yeah. That's I want the bad. question about the start of the season. Okay. All right. With 30 games before the start, as are on the schedule now, before the start of May. I gave this a lot of thought. To get to 35 and 5. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're well on their way. Yeah, they are. I mean, I mean 3 yeah. and 0. That's plus, they got the Mets who are winless. Yep. They've got the A's who have only won one game, and they can't get anybody to show up to their stadium. So you get to 9 and 0, and then what? What, so you got two what on the road at Pittsburgh. There. Pirates, you could be in both. Uh, All right, then 11. Minnesota. Well, the eight, four against teams. Minnesota. If you're going to be a 35-5, and five, they should be – I mean, they didn't do much to, to improve their roster. 11-0? Something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah so. 9 or 11. If We're paying numbers. attention. It's on our radar. So? So what's the record? Games? After, yeah. uh, they got to be at uh, – what are we going with? How about 26-4? and four? <laughs> <laughs> You know the funny thing is – is clearly it's ridiculous, but it still is mind boggling. Thirty five and five is yeah, mind boggling. Which is. is what the yeah. eighty four team did for people who don't know. I think they know. <laughs> <laughs> Most of them, I, I wasn't alive and I know. I mean it's yeah. it's legendary. Oh, all yeah. right. Did you hear that? That's unnecessary. Yeah. I know. That's totally Shots fired. Nine yes. and zero start, by the way. Yes, I'm a yes. child. Chump of the week. Yeah. You'll all be dead soon. Jim Cox. <laughs> yeah, that's we what hear I said. You. We hear you. <laughs> what are you guys gonna talk about? Uh well we'll open with Tigers. And uh, and what a great weekend it was! And 
you know, er, the early trends, the good and the bad, of course. Uh, plus, Champ and Chump, we do it every Monday. What, God, boy, I got to tell you, I feel like there's an ample supply of chumps to choose from. But and also some champs. Mm-hmm. So get your, get your votes lined up for Champ and Chump. Carson Anderson next, 97-1. Hey, everybody. Hi, and welcome. Carson Anderson on a Monday, 97 on the ticket. Hope you had a great, fantastic, lovely, positive spring break for those of you that took advantage of it and uh, were experiencing spring break on the calendar. A lot of households and high schools uh, last week was spring break. Um, But yeah, good weekend of sports. Really, really good weekend of sports. Underrated weekend of sports, probably. Uh, But um, lots to get to today. I'm glad. I'm glad we have the forum to do so. How are you today, Scott? I'm all right. Good weekend. Yeah, overall? it was it was, uh, it was pretty good overall. Yep. I mean, I am in full baseball mode. It's crazy. I am in I, full like, baseball. Thank mode. you, Detroit it, Tigers. It, it's of course it helps when they get off to a three zero start. But sure I does. was like, um, I was looking forward to Saturday, sitting in front of the TV all afternoon, watching hockey and baseball and uh, basketball, and I was uh, rip roaring, ready to go. Yeah, it's. It's a different feel just to get off to a 3 0 start. And, and we don't need all the disclaimers and the warnings. We all know. What? <laughs> we all know it. But I'm gonna lean I'm gonna lean into this thing. And yeah, I'm so glad they don't have a day off. I'm so glad they're right back at it tonight. That we got a Monday night game against a team that that the Tigers should compete against. And we got an exciting young arm on the on the bump. <laughs> and Reese Olsen, who uh, you hate that phrase, don't you? Not a fan. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the bump. Is that what you call it when, when your wife was pregnant three times? The bump? I did not, know. Rubber belly? No, so the I bump? Yeah. Here we go. Actually, I think maybe for the first one we talked a lot about the bump. But no, I, I realized that at no point at any time is it wise to reference any change in anything just you look great honey yeah <laughs> i can't i didn't even know you were pregnant You're most pregnant? people wouldn't be able to tell are you sure about this <laughs> just spilled water all over the place did you yeah i did oh you knew so yeah i didn't you do to the I, water scene i forgot yeah 
all over my face. That sometimes, yeah, sometimes you know, the aim is a little off. That was bad. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> like, now you got to over concentrate. <laughs> yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is why you stream the video of the show on Twitch and YouTube. Uh, okay, so look, um, yeah, Reese Olsen pitching tonight. This is exciting. It's a three and zero start. These close, these close games. I'm sure everybody's heard the stat. Detroit, first time in franchise history, they open the season with three one run wins. And the one run thing, I mean, is indicative of a lot of good. I mean, you know, it's it's a bad White Sox team. Yeah, got it. Don't care. Don't care. One run. There's still games on the schedule. I think one of the things. That I, I, I mean, I love. It was basically everybody that can contribute did with a couple of exceptions. Joey Wentz didn't pitch, and Alex Lang was bad, and everybody else. It felt like everybody Maeda. else didn't. Yeah, Maeda wasn't great. But everybody else did something that helped this weekend. Yeah, the bench, everybody. the use of the bench, the bullpen was outstanding. I mean, from Carson Kelly to um, Abanez. Javi Baez. I mean, Baez in the first helped. game, he was huge in the first game. Baez helped. But Mark Canna yeah. is showing a couple things that are pretty great. Um, you know, ran, ran into an out-at-home plate, but... Um, well, is that on him or is that on yeah, Joey right. Cora? Yeah, who, who was sending him. But, uh, but he stole third base in a game. That's Don't yeah. expect that. Taking a lot of pitches. I uh, saw a lot of pitches, I should say. Um, you know, it's uh, it helps. Drew a couple walks over the weekend. Tigers drew nine walks in the three games. Mm-hmm. It's not a ton, but it's but it seems like three a game is okay. It's, it feels like it's better than last year. I have to double check it, but um, you'll take it. All right, right now they're they're still feeling each other, they're feeling things out on the field, and you you, you had Colt Keith at second base who you know has his you know, bloop type hit, not a bloop hit, but a, a, a ground dribbler. ball that turns into a dribbler. Thank you. That turns into a base hit and that's his only hit. But, but he has also seen a bunch of pitches. He has walked a couple of times and he's made every play he needs to make in the field, including a really nice one uh, last night in the uh, late in the game in the eighth or ninth inning with the, the scoop to throw it over to first base, the scoop it to first base. Yeah. Never left the glove. He, well, he didn't use it. He scooped it with the glove, threw it with the glove, but Parker Meadows, <clears throat> a triple and a catch on the wall in yeah. Saturday's game. I mean, here's the thing about a lot of what they did in the offseason. Carson Kelly's not exciting, except when used in the right place, he comes through with a couple of big hits. And throws guys out. Yeah. And should have thrown a second guy. Dude, yeah, the McKinstry guy. double play on Saturday, for people who missed it, Alex Lang walks the bases loaded with one out in a one-run game late and I can't remember, was it Will Vest? Will Vest came on, right? And got the ground ball to McKintry, who took his time, <laughs> fielded the ball. He was playing third, fielded the ball, ran to the bag, already transferred the ball to his bare hand. So the second he touched the bag, he could let it fly, let a seed go across the infield in the dirt that Torque scooped. I mean, Vest was fired up, McKintry was stoked. Torque kind of posed after he scooped it out of the... I mean, it was everything about... Defense helped them win games this weekend. Yeah. And it wasn't a, it wasn't perfection by any stretch of the no, imagination. They made, their, they made several errors over the weekend. But the defense helped them win that game and helped them win yesterday. And um, if you're not an elite team and the Tigers are not an elite roster, how do you compete? This weekend was a prime example of how a team that isn't an elite roster can compete because they didn't hit the cover off the ball at all. They scored three and a half runs a game. A whole bunch of guys went one for the weekend, guys that we got to count for count on. And it, but they still won three games. And again, we don't need to disclaimer. Everybody is fully aware who they were playing against. But that's the thing about it is this division that's what makes this team in this division dangerous is the, well, the Royals and the Gribe aren't expected to be great either, better than the White Sox, but they're not expected to be great. You don't apologize for getting the wins. You can't get off to a hot start unless you beat this team. So, good mission accomplished. Get the first series out of the way. Oh, my God, you swept it. You really just win the series is great, but sweeping it's even better. Now you go to New York, take on the Mets, take care of business. We'll see what Reese Olsen's got to offer tonight. 
Uh, and then we got uh, uh, Casey Mize on tomorrow night. Yep. It's going to be, I mean, you go to, if you go to New York and just get a win, and that's a low bar, but if they get a win and come home with a winning record, it's been a, it's been a minute since we were excited about the actual baseball team and, and a quick start. They haven't gotten off to quick starts. When the AJ Hinch era, over three seasons, they're 24 games under in the months of March and April. 24, by the time we get to May, the last three years, they average being eight games under 500. I mean, you have an eight-game movement, any positive or negative, any month. That's that's a lot. Yeah. And they have been a average of eight games under at the end of the first month of the season. That's incredible over three seasons. So please forgive us if we start leg humping a three and zero start. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. Hey, champ and jump, get your votes in. We'll have ours today. At 1035, it's Carson Anderson here on a Monday. Uh, lots to get to. Red Wings, interesting place for the Red Wings. Uh, we've got I've, got, I've got an Easter Sunday disaster. Oh, no. A disaster. Sorry to hear that. It's okay, but you're going to laugh. Oh, um, of course it will. Yep. We'll get to all that coming up. Carson Anderson, 97 won the ticket. Well, something is no joke right now is what you want your lawn to look like all summer long. You got to take care of it right now. And the first step is the most important step that's call. Natural Way Lawn and Tree Service, where you get green and stay green with Natural Way. Give them a call today at 888-GET-GREEN, and for a limited time, you purchase that full lawn program, you'll get free grub control. But you got to mention my name, Gator, in the station 97 won the ticket. You wait, and you see crabgrass. Frankly, it's too late to fix it. You've got to get it taken care of right now. Everyone hates to see crabgrass in the summer, and that first application is the most important because uh, you got to take care of it. You want to Prevent a problem. You don't want to have to fix a problem. Schedule early. Give them a call right now at 888-GET-GREEN. Natural Way is great. They use fewer chemicals, environmentally sound practices. They've got a ton of people working for them that know exactly what they're doing. In fact, each lawn is assigned its own specialist, certified applicators and arborists. They custom tailor a solution specifically for your yard and your home. They offer the 100% satisfaction guarantee. It's a company I've used for almost a dozen years now. Give them a call today. Triple eight, get green, or go to naturalwaylawn.com.
Doug Carr, Scott Anderson, 97 won a ticket. Tiger fans, man, uh, look, this is fresh. <laughs> this is fresh and different than we've seen in the past. A 3-0 and start, all one-run games, manager pulling all the right strings, but not everything went well, but they still found a way to win. Uh, the starting pitching, two out of the three games, pretty damn good. The bullpen, all three games, with really one exception, one arm that struggled, pretty damn good. Timely hitting was a part of it. Good defense. Timely, good defense. A part of it. Now, what didn't go right is they averaged three and a half runs a game, just over three and a half runs a game. Spencer Torkelson, three of 13. Baez, two of 13. Riley Green, one of 12. Colt Keith, one of 11. Parker Meadows, one of 10. Jake Rogers, one for seven. I mean, that's a good portion of your lineup not producing. One would believe it's only going to get better. I, You know, you worry a little bit about kind of a rough spring from Torque and then into the regular season, um, you know, whether or not there's something something wrong. A lot of pop-ups, it seems to me, from Torque. Um, well, but, I was swinging and missing yesterday. There was, yeah, uh, it, there's three strikeouts. There's some issues here. Um, and, I, I, you know, I'm not <laughs> – Sway, so there's no victory laps over three and zero start. There's no panic either. However, these things need to be better. You're not going to do much if if guys don't start producing at the plate a little bit. No, but I mean, he's hitting. It's three games. He's hitting two thirty one. That's you know a hundred points better than what he did in the spring, or ninety points better than what he did in the spring. So it's all right. Um, get the good good pitching is uh, that's the best the best antidote for anything. Keep getting good, good, great, and not just good, but great. I mean, the two of the three starts were, were great starts, and two of the three bullpen efforts were great bullpen efforts. I can't get over the first game of the season. You know, you had Scuba, which you expected Scuba to be great, and he was six innings of shutout baseball with the bullpen to go three perfect innings, mm-hmm. and and then to finish it up the way they did with Foley throwing 101 miles an hour. That's that's impressive. And then what they did yesterday was impressive. Well, look uh, the. The the bullpen, 12 and two-thirds, four hits, batting average against of 105, and a walks and hits per innings pitch of .67. It's a good start. <laughs> oh, it's, what it, it's a good start. You go to, you, you talk about the uh, um, the totals in the first three years under A.J. Hinch in, in April and how bad they've been. Last year, they started off, they were 10 and 17 after the game they played April 30th. 10 and 17, seven games below 500. They finished the rest of the season playing above 500 baseball. So we know this team is capable of playing well because they did it from May through, you know, all the way up to October uh, of playing slightly better than average. But in this division, if you had gotten off to a better start, you would have had a chance. Does it feel a little bit like, is it, I mean, maybe to a lesser extent, but the 2022 Lions that got off to the terrible start, finished the season strong. I mean, sample sizes are clearly different, but... I guess there was some there was some there was some indication at the end of the 2022 season that the Lions might have some a chance to improve in 2023 and they did. Is that perhaps kind of happened here with the Tigers a little bit? Well, I would caution a little bit there because I think we all expected this Lions team to take off uh, in 2023. I mean, people were chesty about it with with 12, 13, 14 win predictions, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I think we just expect the Tigers to compete for the division. And by no means compete for a wild card spot, right? Yeah. I think it feels like the expectation. So it's a little bit different. Well, bottom line here is it's encouraging on a week that we have. This week gets capped off by the annual celebration of opening day. And uh, it'd be cool if it's more than just the parties, the story. Like, feels like the last few years it's been 80% party, 20% baseball. What opening day is about. Can we get that to 50-50 where yeah. people are excited about the baseball as well? It's more than just about the party. It's, it's half party, half baseball. Like, we'll care about the outcome of the game. How about that? <laughs> I think that, that might be a play. Be nice to care about the game. That's all I'm saying. Uh, how about Gina Rochella? That, the play he made behind the bag at third when we talk about the defense helping him. Takes that backhander into foul territory and then just lets – one of those throws go that you're watching it fly across the infield and you're like, there's no, is that online? Is that possibly online? And it was to torque and, and to get an out. It was, 
This is why I was a little surprised at the first lineup of the season that didn't have Gio Urshela in the lineup. Yep. Because he hits lefties, they're facing a lefty, and more importantly, he's the best defensive third baseman they have. And you saw it full display in that play. But, hey, 3 0 start, nothing to complain about at this point. Uh, I'm not going to complain if guys have, through three games, don't have a bunch of hits or haven't hit a home run yet. I don't care just yet. You know, right now it's navigate what you can do. And, uh, you know, when the White Sox scored some runs on on Saturday, the Tigers were up to the task. They came back and they scored their runs. They didn't give up. They played from behind, tied things up, and then won it in extra innings. All right, uh, Champ and Chump, we do it every Monday. We'll have our Champ and Chump nominations today at 1035. But here's what we got coming in so far. From an unnamed texter, Champ Jake Bates, 64-yard field goal twice. Chump, the women's tournament with the mismatched three-point lines in Portland. Sorry, did he, he hit two 64-yard field so goals? So they called timeout. He banged oh. through the first one. And this is the kicker for the Michigan Panthers, who I came from, I believe, Arkansas and was just a kickoff guy. They're using him as their field goal kicker. You don't need extra points in that league. You go for it every time. And he had a 64-yarder. Um, timeout was called, first kick. But they he went, followed he through with the kick, anyway. and it was good. And then did it when it counted, good again. That's impressive. Yep. Uh, and as far as the women's three-point mess match lines, if you come didn't on. see this. Uh, I mean, come on. There was basically one three-point line. One, one side arc. was done ro- properly. The other side was not. <laughs> I mean, the eyeball test tells you that one is way off. Well, it's one of those things you wouldn't even look for. Like, you wouldn't even think to pay attention to, but somebody noticed, and eventually they pulled out the measuring tape and were like, yeah, this isn't right. But they had an opportunity to delay the game by an hour so that they could get get it taped off and get it done correctly. Both teams decided against that. They figured, hey, we both have to play on the same court, same amount of time. Weird decision, if you ask me. I thought it was a weird decision, too. But, you know, applaud them for doing it and moving things along so there isn't a delay, I guess. Um, And in the end, it may have hurt them, but uh, the game was finished. Uh, Champ Michigan Hockey, Chump, the Red Wings. That's from Eddie in a Garage. Uh, another one here. Champ Jake Bates, get ready to learn forward down the field, buddy. <laughs> Chump, the Red Wings for being part of a group of teams limping around for a wild card spot. Yeah. Well, it's sad because they have played better hockey lately, but they've lost the games to better teams. So... Pardon me for being actually encouraged by playing Florida tougher this time than they did a month ago. And I'm not planning parade routes <laughs> just yet over that fact. But I was like, okay, these guys are hanging in there with one of the better teams in hockey. And it's time at least they eat the point out of it. And thankfully, Philly's collapsing here. Well, you can appreciate this, Doug. I was doing some laundry on Saturday. I folded some clothes in my room, and I had the TV on. And uh, and then I had my back to the TV, and I heard Ken Daniels say something. Oh, this isn't good. Larkin's hurt. And yep. I'm like, no. I, I'm like, it just started. Yep. 28 <laughs> seconds into the game, he takes a uh, puck off the side of the knee and went down like he was shot. Tried to get up, could not get up. They helped him up to his feet, and then he's, they skate him off the ice. He tries coming back, what, several shifts later. Doesn't really work out well. He limps back to the, and I'm thinking that he's done. He's done. And then he comes back, plays the second, third period, scores a goal in the third period to tie it up and force overtime, which was great, which is just another example of why Dylan Dylan Larkin is the captain of this team, mm-hmm. why he deserves it, and why people that complain about Dylan Larkin should shut the hell up. He's a He's a really good player. He's the heart and soul of the team, and he showed you why. It would be nice if the flu were to leave Detroit for good (laughs) because it feels like every other – well, not every other. It's every game there's another player that's out with uh, the flu. Oh, this this guy's sick. Oh, he's under the weather. He's under the weather. Then you got guys that are starting to feel sick that are trying to tough it out that that probably shouldn't. Then you have guys that are sick, so they're out. Then you have guys that are recovering from being sick, but they're going to play and they're going to tough it out, and they probably shouldn't. So the, the the lineup isn't the healthiest right now, but hopefully this thing is running its course and it's and it's through the system. More of your champion jump votes plus ours. We've got 10 texts that we're going to ask for today at 1040, so be ready on the keyboard for that. It's Carson Anderson, 97, won the ticket.
Yeah, Tiger excitement. Detroit wakes up on a Monday morning with a 3-0 and undefeated baseball team winning exciting an exciting brand of baseball. And um, now competition gets a little bit stiffer, although the Mets are no great team. In fact, they're kind of expected to be about what the Tigers are. The Tigers over under in Vegas, 80 and a half. The Mets, 82 and a half. That's where J.D. Martinez went. Yeah, and if the Tigers have a kind of season where they're struggling to produce offense, it's going to lead to a lot of second guessing as to why they didn't do more. They've done, they did enough this weekend to beat that team, which is, which is cool. All right. Got it. But, um, but the, at the end of the day, uh, it was great to see. Honestly, fun to see. David Warren says the champ is AJ Hinch for all the moves. He has the magic chump. The Red Wings offense, poor, pitiful, pukey. Oh. Uh, champ Jason Benetti, a flawless addition to the Detroit sports broadcast team. Chump Jeff Petrie, how many reasons do you need? I find Benetti to be wildly entertaining. Wildly entertaining. And uh, a welcome addition for me. And he seems to have a chemistry already with Craig Monroe. Champ Michigan hockey, chump rice on the Chiefs, another NFL player wanted by police. That's from Steven at work. Mm. Have you seen the video of the crash? I have not. Yeah. It's uh <laughs> it's just mind boggling to me that that people take these kinds of chances when they have so much to lose. And if people haven't seen it, drag racing on a Dallas freeway and cause an accident, six cars. One injury, but we'll be, see what else comes out of this. They'd be speeding on a freeway. Drag races from a complete stop. So it was, yeah, he, he was weaving in and out of traffic. Speeding, kind he, of stupid he, yeah, stuff. he was racing with another somebody else who was driving. Dumb. Yeah. Uh, my champ is a Michigan hockey team. Third year in a row, the Frozen Four. Chump is a Michigan State hockey team. Only number one seed not to make it. Well, I don't love this format. Um, and Michigan, this is. Uh, you know, a team playing up to its potential at the right time. Spartans had a great season. Uh, what's interesting is they both have young coaches, right? And the, the lineups get plucked now. You know, when you have a young team, unfortunately, that lineups do get plucked by the pros. It feels like more than they used to. But Adam Nightingale's just 44. Brandon Narado's just 39. The two coaches of two schools, respectively. This feels a little old school Michigan, Michigan State hockey. I, I just, I find that the NCAA's tournament format I, they should be at campus sites first of all um but secondly the place that they chose 3,000 seat arena I don't know I'm, I'm venting a little bit but that's 2,500 wasn't even 3,000 and that we had Michigan State Michigan and Western Michigan all in the same region I thought Western looked good on Friday well, they did they did Thursday look good but I'm Friday. saying why would you have why would you have yeah. three Michigan schools in the same region you know what would you didn't want to screw us by putting in Michigan Tech is that it and have all four of them in the same region, it uh, it was it was unfortunate. But look, Michigan, it was a great game. Yeah. Through two periods, it was it was a great game. I mean, back and forth and nail biting. You get to the third period and it's ready set puke and um and then Michigan uh, they made the plays. Twelve it's seconds. Dylan, Dylan Duke. Yep. That that goalie scored to put him up. Just used pure speed to get around the outside, cut across and. And then, you know, able to slip it past the goaltender. And then the next goal. If you was, haven't seen it. Jesus. <laughs> I mean, I, I said this. I was walking in the building and somebody was talking to me about it, uh, about the game. He's like, what happened? I'm like, well, here's what happened. <laughs> and I said it was maybe the greatest pass I've ever seen made in a hockey game. And I don't think that's hyperbole. Frank Nazar went between his legs to play the puck behind him between two Spartan defenders. He had a small window to get the puck through. And he, the only way he can make that pass is if he does what he did because he had no way of just setting a forehanded pass because the angle wasn't there. Mm -hmm. He had to put it between his legs to kind of put the stick that far behind him to, to send it over. It was absolutely incredible. It was something else. If you haven't seen it, Google search Frank Nazar pass, and it was kind of led to the kill shot. There's Michigan beat Michigan State to advance to the Frozen Four, and I think this is the – of the three Michigan teams have gone in a row, this is probably the third in terms of how I'd rank them. Mm -hmm. But in college hockey, anything can happen in one and done. So they got a shot. It's a loaded uh, uh, Boston's Frozen Four, the two Boston, Boston, Boston teams. BC is elite. Boston College, it's BC, BU, and then it feels like everybody else. Why didn't those teams 
playing this oh, because they're both number one seeds. Is that, yeah, that's why. Uh, the Tigers won three games against the worst team in the worst division in baseball. Ownership is still not committed to winning, so who cares? They got no, they've got no pats. They did nothing with Miggy's money, so whatever. All right, have fun. <laughs> Don't hurt anybody out there, okay? Yeah. You have a good time. Have a good day, sir. <laughs> Go get yourself a sandwich. Have have fun. The the we'll see you next year. The fact is, yeah, yeah, maybe maybe yeah, circle not. circle back in a year. Yeah. The fact is that the division, yeah, is bad. If you're the best team in the bad division, I don't care. No. No, the, the the Tigers have 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 messed around and been one of the bad teams right. in a bad division. Was the uh, NFC North was that a good division this year? Wasn't particularly great. I don't care. Yeah. Get Whatever you got to do. Get get in the dance, man. Get in the dance. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get to our champion jump nominations. My champ of the weekend is the aforementioned AJ Hinch. Seems like he pulled all the right strings this weekend. Happy for our guy and happy to have. A 3-0 baseball team after the first weekend of the season. A.J. Hinch, my champ. I went with Zach Eady, center for Purdue. He put Purdue on his massive shoulders again. 40 points, 16 boards, and a huge win over Tennessee yesterday. Gets the Boilers to the Final Four for the first time since 1980. Is that a Joe Barry Carroll team back yep. in 1980? It's been that long since you've been able to boiler up in the Final Four. Uh, my jump of the weekend is all the people worked up about the pizza celebration in the Tiger dugout. I mean, seriously, who the F cares? It's not hurting anybody. Oh, people have said because they think it's a sellout thing? Yeah. Why, why do people care? I don't know. It's fun. I don't believe. Do you actually believe that the mandate came down from on high? No. <laughs> I think it's funny. I think it's 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 fun. And enjoy it. If, if the, they enjoy it, who, who cares? Yeah, the players apparently it was Torque's idea. No, it couldn't have been. I, I honestly, there's so much more important things to worry about. Yeah, I, I, if I'm gonna bitch, I am gonna bitch about the not spending Maggie's money. I wasn't blown away by this off season, but I'm gonna give this team in this season a chance. But to be mad about that, and it felt like in social media, people were upset. My God, who cares? Anyway, your chump. Uh, whoever was responsible for taping off the three point line in the women's tournament, you had one job. <laughs> And he totally screwed it up. I'm not sure the team's made the right decision to play through, but um, they did. And they say that the uh, the line will be ready to go today. Well. Oh, a day later. Thanks. I, it, strange. I didn't see that, that they said it would take an hour to, to basically reset the line. If that's all it took, I don't know why you wouldn't delay the game. I don't know. The coaches, I guess, agreed. Mm -hmm. I can't even imagine. You're playing to catch. In a in a championship level competition anywhere, if the field or court or ice is mix mismarked and they can correct it, would they correct it in every other sport? It, one, it seems one to me think. they would. Yeah, you would have to think. I mean, it's it's so strange when you looked at both of them and you saw that the the painted area in between the the top of the key and the three-point line. I mean, one is clearly shorter than the other. It's like, really? How do you miss that? How do, how do you Seems do that? so odd. Hey, guys, listen. The one on the, on the left, we're going to put that line at 22 feet. The one on the right, we're going to put at 21 and a half-ish. Like, how do you... How do you measure that out no and, and not know that you're doing it incorrectly? This is what happens when you eyeball stuff. You ever go home and like try to hang a picture or whatever? And what? just, you're just eyeballing it. You're like, then you step back. And go, oh my god, I'm off, way off. Yeah. <laughs> did, did someone just not forget measuring? Forget a, <laughs> if you forget if, tape. If you were to pull off one of the framed pieces of art or whatever, or a, a photo that I have on my wall, if you pull it off the wall. There's a 50% chance you will see another hole in the wall lower. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> then, thank God the picture is covering yes. up the first try. Without question. <laughs> Multiple holes back there. <laughs> this might be, might be 60%. I know. It's gonna, that total is going to climb by the end of the show. I had a... 
I had a towel rack in my old house. Oh, you know. That I was that I put up behind. All the towels <laughs> slant to one side or what? <laughs> I was putting it up on the uh My the, question is what's a towel rack? Right. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, that's exactly. It was in that house. And I put it on the back of the uh of the bathroom door. And my first effort, I'm like, here we go. I got it lined up perfectly, boom. And I go to hang a towel on it and the rack immediately falls off. I'm like, what happened? I didn't have the these anchor screws in there or whatever the hell. I ended up redoing. I had like three sets of holes on either side, and you can't hide that other than with a towel. Don't and use Doug's, the towels; it's right. decorative. <laughs> Doug's just throwing towels indiscriminately on the ground. Yeah. Wet towels That's why on the floors. That. Yeah. <sighs> hanging pictures or hanging anything on the wall is not my forte. Well, apparently somebody was in charge of the three-point line in the women's tournament, and yeah. If they had asked me, Gator, do me a favor. Can you uh, just, you know, pace off the 22 feet, whatever the hell the distance yeah. is? Uh, no, can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> can't, I can't do it, man. You got to get somebody else on the job. All right, two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. Let's do the 10 text thing right now. What did you like most about the Tiger weekend? Beautiful out. Where is it? First 10 texts at 248-539-9797. We'll read on the air. What did you like most about the Tiger 3-0 and start this weekend? A lot of positive came out of it. We all know there's some stuff that needs to get cleaned up. But what was your favorite part? Please sign your text so we know who to give credit to. Send the text over and put your name on it. And uh, we'll read the first 10 that we get. Coming up next here on Carson Anderson, 97 won the ticket. Well, with spring being here, you can be sure that the Armada of red, white, and blue trucks, they are on their way. You don't want to get caught with a flooded basement or scorching hot house this year. Beat the weather and call Birmingham Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling today. Frank's the owner. He's been doing this uh, for a long time, but he's got this deal that's been going on for a little bit as well. This spring, they're giving all customers and a free tankless water heater that's included with the purchase of a full furnace and air conditioning package. So whether you got a flood in your basement or a clogged drain or maybe your AC unit just won't turn on, call Birmingham Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling today, or you can schedule an appointment online at BirminghamPlumbingCo.com. That's BirminghamPlumbingCo.com. Birmingham Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling, your Metro Detroit boiler experts.
Doug Carr, Scott Anderson, 97. Want to take it open lines, 248-539-9797. Feedback coming in to the Carson Anderson inbox. We asked for 10 texts. What did you like most about the Tigers? 3-0 weekend. 3-0 weekend. And the start to the season, a team that's been horrific at the beginning of the year, the last three seasons. Well, they've put together um, – Hey, they got a break from the scheduler. They got the worst team in the division. They get to follow it up with the Mets in Oakland. So take advantage of this, and maybe we can carry some actual baseball interest into this season, and they can stick around in this division. Lots to prove still, but encouraging nonetheless. Aaron in Garden City writes in, the bullpen was outstanding. It's going to be a strength again this year. 12 and two-thirds, four hits, batting average against of 105, walks and hits per inning pitch, .67. It was incredible work. And outside of Alex Lang, who was wild, and to start off the inability to throw a strike, um, but Will Vest and Zach McKinstry got him out of it. Sorry. <laughs> Having issues with my phone. Will Vest and uh, Zach McKinstry got him out of it with the ground ball to third. Everybody in the bullpen, uh, bullpen got the job done. They did. And I, I was... Wildly impressed with newcomer Shelby Miller. Mm-hmm. Um, he comes in, does a nice job, and that's money well spent. Uh, y- you saw what happened yesterday with Flaherty. He was good. He was. That's money well spent so far. I mean, it's a long way to go. I'm still games. very we skeptical. It. We got it. It's three games. But newcomers to the team getting a job done. Mark Canna coming to this team, getting a job done. Gio Urshela coming to this team, getting a, get a job done with, with the bat and also with the glove. I mean, it's it's encouraging to see to start a season. Mm-hmm. To get off to a 3-0 start is extraordinarily important for a team that has not gotten off to good starts. Now, three games is not a, a, a start of the season make. You know, we're talking about 30 games into the month, and let's see it. Yep. Uh, Jason Benet was amazing. That's from Josh in Dearborn Heights. I'm very fired up. Uh, Jacob in Westland says, going 3-0, that's a huge start. Get the momentum rolling. I mean, look, they're a young team. They're an impressionable team. And this is a hungry fan base. I'm telling you, man, that the opening days have been 80% party, 20% baseball. Hell, they might have been 90% party, 10% baseball. If this Friday it's it's 50% party, 50% baseball, it makes the 50% of the party even better. <laughs> it's just the party carries over into the stadium. You want to be in the stadium. You want the party to continue in the stadium, and you don't need to leave early because the baseball, perhaps, dare we say, might be worth watching. What does that mythological creature look like, half party, half baseball? Uh, that's a great question. But if anybody's mastered it, it's the Detroit fan yeah, base. Yeah, we, we do enjoy opening day. That's mm-hmm. for sure. I mean, you have a, a beer mug for a mitt. Is that, is that how that works? Maybe. Maybe. One of those, uh, actually, it's one of those plastic hats with, yeah, the, with two the two beers the two beer in it and, and the, the straws. St- yeah, yeah, sure. that's what. That's exactly that's what, what it we looks do like. in Detroit. <laughs> we party down. We enjoy it. Ted and Al Park says the pitching, other than Maeda, it's a rough go, rough go. But I mean, look, Maeda and Flaherty were trending in the wrong direction in their career. The Tigers saw something, decided to sign them. It doesn't mean they're going to be awful here. There might be, I mean, what is, how do you build the case for hope about Maeda and Flaherty being better in Detroit? I build it around Chris Fetter. I build it around the Tiger saying, okay, here's what we do. Here's what our guy is good at, meaning Fetter. And these guys fit our mold. They can work with what we're going to ask them to do. That's where I'd build the case around. What that is, I have no effing clue. <laughs> And do I think that this is, do I think Maeda and Flaherty are going to pay off? Honestly, I don't. But there is a question as to why, you know, why they signed them and what did they see? Because their careers weren't trending in the right direction. Uh, no, but they both had had a track record of being a good pitcher. For Flaherty, it's not that long ago that he was, that he was good, but you know, the last couple of seasons, it has, it has not bode well. It did not bode well for him, but his strikeout rate is, is great. And it was fantastic in the spring and carried over yesterday. We had seven strikeouts in six innings. Mm-hmm. Um, so you'll, you'll take that. And he didn't walk anybody, which is another huge plus for this team. They didn't walk anybody in the first game. I don't think did they walk anybody at all in the game. Well, yeah, they did yesterday. Cause, uh, uh, we're, we're, no, didn't they want, didn't, maybe they didn't walk anybody. Yesterday. The bullpen. Yeah. 
They didn't have a lot of, I think it was only, was it four walks? I think it was four walks the whole weekend. And three of them came from Lang. I was going to say. Am I wrong? Uh, I don't think you're wrong in that. Yeah, they uh, they had one walk yesterday. Chafin walked a batter. Okay. So they've, they've pitched awfully well to this point. If you have four walks in. Is that what it is? It's four walks? In 28 innings of work. Is, is that what this team has done to this point? I mean, you'll take it. Uh, right now, they have five walks. Okay. In, yeah, in the 20, whatever it is, or 20 uh, of work. From uh, DPD Officer T in a scout card, the Tigers showed grit. Uh oh. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Can they steal it? Can they commandeer the term grit? They change up. Can they go like salty instead? They're salty. Yeah, maybe. What'd you like most about the Tiger weekend? Kevin and Trenton writes in the bullpen. Yep. Uh, Foley's 101 with movement. Nasty. Josh the Cable Guy. That was nasty. Yep. It sure was. I mean, how the back end of the bullpen settles down, I don't think A.J. Hinch is going to have hard and fast rules and defined roles. I think it's going to be a game in, game out, leverage and... Matchup situation, but Foley looked great. He did look great, and they've got options back there. However, they want to, you know, divvy up those innings, and it'll kind of work itself out. But right now, it looks like Foley's the the the, uh, the closer in there. Um, um, it's only the one start, or the one appearance for Alex Lang, but it's discouraging to see three walks in a third of an inning. Yeah, but that's kind of been a thing with him. So, but it didn't used to be. No, uh, Chris and K-Pack says. What I like most, Javi Baez hasn't lost us a game yet. That's a plus. I mean, this he, could he be... He won you a game. Yeah, you could say he won the first game. Helped to win you that game anyway. Yeah, his his, his inability to lay off pitches out of the strike zone is so frustrating. And I, I think any pitcher that gives him anything to hit also has to be frustrated. Like, what the hell am I thinking? Like, how like, am I putting Why am I not just throwing a slider outside yeah. every time? Uh, Jerry in Lake Orion says, thing I like most, the dominating pitching, and we're going to need it. It's quite possible. Somebody got a little chesty on the morning show. I don't know. I heard a call driving in. Guy called up and said, you know, this is better. This starting staff is better than, like, the 2012, 2013 staff. And Costa was like, wait, 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 wait. Slow down. <laughs> Slow down. Better than staffs with Verlander and, and Scherzer. Scherzer. And, and I'm like, God bless this guy. He is fired up. This is a this is a bold ass prediction that we'd probably say cross the line. <laughs> uh Donna Monroe says the best part of the Tigers three wins over the weekend, it took my mind off the Red Wings. Yeah, look. I mean, is it asking too much to have a competitive baseball team for a month and a hockey team that makes the playoffs? That's the ask. That's our low bar. That's the hurdle we'd like to clear. That was such a bummer on Saturday. To get to to, to tie to go to overtime, to have a four and three in overtime. Yep. And they never get the stoppage back to get it to three on three. I'd rather want play three on three I, than, I four agree 100%. than four on four. Do you hear what they said? And that's why they switched from four and four to three, three on, on three. three. Yeah, it's three on three is you're four gonna, and four, you're playing defense. <laughs> yeah. And three on three, it's all offense. And I'm, you know, you. I mean, you can still lose the game, but you can, you're more likely to score. And and then to get to the shootout situation, you're like, oh, no. Mm-hmm. I just had a bad feeling about it. No, I hear you. We'll get to the Red Wings coming up a little bit later on. Champ and Jump every Monday. Get your votes in for Champ and Jump at a weekend. 248-539-9797. Hey, a reminder, if you don't know yet, and you haven't done it yet, get the Odyssey app for your mobile device. Download it today, A-U-D-A-C-Y. Then you can listen to the show anywhere in the United States. And there's going to come a time when you're out of town and you're going to want to know what's being said in Detroit. Like right now, Tiger fans probably tuning in from all over. That's right. And so you're going to wish you had the Odyssey app. Get it today. It's free. And then you have access to our station from anywhere in the United States. How do you spell it? A-U-D-A-C-Y, Scott. Oh, thank you. I'm terrible with spelling. I get it right almost every time, though, with Odyssey. So download that. You can also stream to our website, 971theticket.com, where we'll post the champ and chump. For tomorrow's show, also stream with video, twitch.tv and youtube.com. When you go to either of those pages, search up 971 The Ticket, and bam, there we are. And if you were watching earlier, you saw me spill water all over my face taking a drink out of my water bottle. So Happens, man. Yes, it does. 
Uh, all right. So the, the Lions, hmm, they're in a little bit of a bind. <laughs> I don't think they saw this coming. We'll get to that today at 11.02. It's Carson Anderson on a Monday. Champ and Chump, get those votes in. 97 won the ticket. Brought to you by Hamilton Chevrolet. After another weekend of activity, the Red Wings playoff status, uh, yeah, still very similar. They sit two points behind the second wildcard spot, which Philly is currently within. Detroit has lost four straight games, but they did earn a point in two of the last three. David Perron seems to think they're actually playing better than the results would indicate. Yeah, you just need some wins. Also, it's a new day. They finished their five-game road trip in Tampa. It's a 7 o'clock game scheduled to be on WWJ. Philly hosts the Islanders as well. Both of those teams are in the postseason race in the East. As for the first-place Tigers, Olsen, Mize, and Skubo, they're up next in line to pitch this week. They've got three in New York against the Mets with some pretty iffy weather predicted in the Big Apple. There is an open day on Thursday just in case. Tonight is slated to be a 7 o'clock game right here on 97-1. Only a couple of days 
days for the Lions to make a call on tight end Brock Wright, who was given a three-year, $12 million offer sheet by San Francisco as a restricted free agent. Detroit can choose to match it for their guy, who's been with the team since 2021 and has over 1,000 snaps with the team in the last two seasons. Also, it'll be the Pistons versus Grizzlies tonight downtown, the first of only two remaining home games left on the season. They need three more wins to avoid the worst year in franchise history tonight, a 7 o'clock start with the call on Alt 98.7 FM. From the Corwell Health Sports Desk, I'm Chris Villar. For more, go to 97.1 The Ticket and odyssey.com. Doug Carr, Scott Anderson, 97 won the ticket. You heard there in the update what we want to get into next. And that is the Brock Wright decision. Um, <laughs> don't know if I saw this one coming necessarily. Uh, a restricted free agent. The way this works, you have a player that's a restricted free agent. He was an undrafted signee by the Detroit Lions. And you can offer that player what's called a tender, which is a set amount. Uh, depending on where that player and how that player was acquired. And in Brock Rice's case, it was $2.95 million, a one-year contract. But because he is a, a free agent, a restricted free agent, he can go out and seek any other contract offer or take the Lions offer as it was. Well, he did get a contract offer, and it comes from San Francisco. And the 49ers offered him what is – being called a three-year, $12 million deal, but I guess it's only got $6 million in guarantees. And now Detroit has the option, because he's a restricted free agent, he has the option of matching, they have the option of matching that offer and keeping Brock Wright. Uh, I guess they can give him more, which I don't know that they would, uh, or they can let him go to San Francisco. Because he was... A undrafted free agent, they'll get no compensation back, so they won't get a draft pick for him, the way I understand this. So Brock Wright is an interesting asset to this team. I think he is a classic example of the type of player that we turn into a bit of a hero here. The role player that does his job, does his job well, doesn't screw up, and helps you win. I think most, almost every sports town is, they're they're the same. We're we're a lot of us are the same. After football losses, we question offensive play calling. (laughs) And after a team, you know, lets us down, we want to fire the coach. I mean, we're we're no no different than anywhere else. The one thing I think we do that is different, I think this city elevates the role player into star status. I don't mean what they get paid. I mean the way we look at them. We we love our role players. We love the guys that do dirty work. I think it fits with our community. And I think we elevate those people to a higher place. We hold them in higher regard than other sports towns. With that said, I don't know that that should impact your approach towards said player. But Gator, I know this is one of your favorites. Yeah, I'm a Brock Wright fan. I think mm-hmm. he, he plays a, a role on this team. I think he fills it very, very well. And I I was happy that they had re-signed him. And then I saw the story over the weekend that San Francisco had given well, him a better They didn't re-sign off. him. They yeah, offered right. him they, the other, gave him the tender. Exactly, the tender. When then San Francisco comes in, they want to they want to grab him. I think that's, um that first of all, it's a sign. Mm-hmm. When a team that got to the Super Bowl wants your player, I think you, you look at that as okay. We we it's confirmation. You've got a good player here that that does what they're supposed to do. This isn't a guy who's going to break the bank, but it's a guy that I think you need to have on your team to win games, to win championships. You need players like Brock Wright. So I'm hopeful that they go ahead and re-sign him. I think he's a capable backup tight end, and I think that their tight end room is is pretty solid right now. If you have him, if you have Mitchell, um. And uh, and also uh, Zilstra all backing up the starter. So it's to me, it's it may be a no brainer because I don't think the money is that disparate between what the Lions are are offering him and what he's been offered by San Francisco. Particularly if it only ends up being guaranteed six million for two, do it. Yeah, the question is, and what we don't know, and I think the undercurrent of a lot of their off season 
tells me that the Lions are paying very close attention, very close attention to their 2025 payroll. Mm -hmm. Not this year, but next year. Because that's when Amon Ra, Goff, and others might have massive raises where they're having to war chest money. So they offered Brock Wright one year. If this is two years guaranteed, they might not be stoked about that. So that might be the hang-up. Um, but, I, I mean, it, it, this this could change things a little bit in terms of, you know, what their offseason priorities are because they will they will need another tight end and and probably – a blocking tight end. Although Brock Wright, I feel like Brock Wright, Wright has this strange resume of huge catches. Yeah. Uh, the Jets game a couple years ago, he had a big one this year. We talked, it was the same play. It was a fourth down play. And was it the Sunday night game against the Broncos? I think it was a fourth down Sunday night catch against the Broncos. It was the exact same play. Um, so he has been a valued role player for this team if they didn't they let josh reynolds walk Mm -hmm. now the hard numbers on josh reynolds contract they got reported two years 14 million the hard numbers are two years nine million that's what he's guaranteed so that's four and a half are they going to pay incentives and kick it up to 14 that might be easily reached that's not what brock wright is guaranteed but it's getting close if they left reynolds walk would they be as likely to let Brock Wright walk, and I think they probably would. Well, I again, what's the difference between what the Lions have tendered him and what San Francisco is offering? You know, if it's like a one million dollars a season, then pay him the money. I think I think he makes sense, and I and I think actually letting Reynolds go well, lets you know that maybe they're, they're more committed to. I will contest that it's more than just the one million dollars difference because it's it's one million if it's one million dollars this year. But it's like four million dollars next year, because I they they didn't offer him a two year contract. They offered him a one year contract. So the difference appear, apparently would be the money tagged onto next year's tag, and next year's. Well, contract. you can front load it. You can, if you got the money to do so. Then you start talking about paying Brock Wright more than you were going to pay Josh Reynolds. Not necessarily, because if Reynolds was Reynolds had what is it nine million guaranteed, all you have to offer Wright is six million guaranteed. So it's less. But I'm sorry, if you front load it, you'd be paying him more than you were willing to pay Josh Reynolds this year, which seems, uh, well, that the, does if, not seem like a good use of your funds. If you have the money to do, well, I guess you have to ask yourself which which makes more sense. I mean, if you feel like you're going to go out in the draft and, and draft the wide receiver that's going to step in and compete right away, I mean, you're not doing that with a tight end position. The tight end position, the the... The upside of Brock Wright is that he's been here. He knows the system. He's got the trust of the quarterback, and he can block. He's a yep. big body who can block, and and think you need that. The upside of Josh Reynolds was certainly that he has the working rapport with with Jared Goff. But at this point in time, you got to think you're looking at other receivers too. Kang, what do you make of this decision? I think the Lions. They obviously wanted him back. The question is, at what cost? They wouldn't have tendered him if they didn't want him back. And I think they, they essentially said, we don't know what we want to pay this guy. It's clearly not at all cost because they would have offered him a long-term contract, a three-year deal, right? Yep. What they did was they let the market decide what Brock Wright is worth. And now the market's come back. And the line's got to have to assess, is this what we want? I think you're right, Doug, where I don't think it's just, oh, an extra $1 million. It's the long-term commitment. How much long-term do we want to commit to Brock Wright? I personally don't think they're going to bring him back. I have no problem with that. I like Brock Wright. He did everything like you guys said. He did his job. He did it well. He only had 13 catches, but they seem to be yep, relatively big, big, big catches. Yeah. because Probably because other teams weren't expecting it. Let's be honest. He's not a catching tight end, but he didn't drop the ball when, when called upon. You go out and you get another blocking tight end that can catch you 13 balls a year. You, you, honestly, maybe that's James Mitchell. Maybe it's Zilstra. Maybe that's a, a guy you draft. Maybe it's a free agent that's out there. Maybe I, it's, I don't feel comfortable in this conversation. I'm sorry, Gator. I know you think about Brock right in the shower, but uh, that's it's not true. time to move on. Maybe, you know, I know you're, you're the team in the shower. Look, they, they went out and got Zach Ertz late, and you love that. I mean, there's who's the Zach Ertz this year? You know and what I'm saying? Didn't even play. Exactly. So my point is, though, you go out and get another Brock, right? You move on. I mean, good times. Hey, 
But this is like maybe Jamal Williams, Josh Reynolds. You did good for us. We're moving on. Lions fans, do you want them to bring back Brock Wright at a higher price than they had offered that may get into next year? Is this a critical piece? Do you think of him as a critical piece of this organization? 248-539-9797. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. We'll get to your phone calls and feedback. Also, Gator, I think I know who the next Brock Wright is. I got a guy. If they let him walk, who they should get. We'll get to that today at eleven twenty here on Carson Anderson ninety seven one the ticket. Doug Carr, Scott Anderson, 97 won a ticket. I was looking uh, earlier today at the best blocking tight ends yeah. available in this 
draft. <laughs> and it's kind of amazing, really. Number one is listed as Devin Culp, tight end Washington. Saw him. Number two is Theo Johnson, Penn State. Saw him. Number three is A.J. Barner, Michigan. Saw him. Number four is Brevin Span Ford, Minnesota. Saw him. Number five is Tip Riemann, Illinois. Saw him. <laughs> Seriously, the best blocking tight ends are all Big Ten. With the, well, well they're Big Ten. Big Ten yes. Them. Brevin Span Ford is interesting to me. If yeah. they decide, because he can be had later in the draft, and his numbers went down throughout his career as far as his offensive production, but he's six feet seven inches tall. Brock Wright was kind of that way, not a big numbers guy out of Notre Dame, but great size. And and so Spanford could be the next the next Brock Wright, six seven, two six. How big's Barner? Barner's not quite that big. Uh but give me one moment, please. I thought he was more of a I don't know. He caught the ball, I thought a fair amount. Yeah, Barner Barner's pretty good. Um Probably more productive than Brevin Spanfield. I'll have to look it up. I'll find it at some point here. But uh, anyway, there are guys like this that you can get for not much draft capital. These are mid to late round guys. Now, asking a rookie to go in and block the way Brock Wright did is a big ask. So you probably have to sign a veteran too. Uh, But blocking tight ends don't exactly break the bank on the market. Uh, AJ Barner, 6'6". I didn't think it was that tall. It's the next one. Oh, here we go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> is he taller than Lisa Leslie? Six six two fifty. <laughs> so he's not quite as big as Brevin Spanford, but smaller than the draft. You would you would definitely sign him though. Yeah, yeah, I would. I think he's important to the team. Um, I understand that the concerns about the next season, the twenty twenty five season, because of all the money you're going to have to tie up with other players. Um. But I guess I, I trust the capologists to know if they can make it happen or not, or to work their magic to figure it out on a, on a two-year deal to keep Brock right for the next couple of years. 248-539-9797. Let's get to your phone calls. Justin, you're on 97. What a ticket. Hi, Justin. Hey, guys. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. Um, I, so I had two questions. Um, one is, and, and you kind of were just talking about it with the drafts, but don't you think we can get a Brock Wright somewhere else not that i mean i i mean i like the guy but if he's that important i, I don't think a, a backup tight end is that important i think we can probably find him somewhere else i don't think we need to be pinching pennies uh, backup him. tight end um, becomes extraordinarily important when your starting tight end gets hurt and then he yeah, starts no, to look and around and, and i guess i I'd, I'd say this uh justin i'd feel a lot better about just discarding it and, and saying look we can find another guy if the guys the Lions had on the roster weren't guys that have already been hurt, you know, like Mitchell hasn't played a ton. Zilstra missed most of the season, you know, the whole season, actually. So that's the concern that I have with that. And I know that Brock, you know, with Brock Wright, what you're getting. Yeah, no, I like, I understand that. And especially because, you know, we run so many two and three tight end sets. Like yeah, it, he's a backup tight end is almost a starting, you know, position for the Lions. Yep, but you're right. Um, I just, I don't know. I like I said, I like him. I wouldn't be opposed if they, you know, resigned or whatever. But if if Doug says they have a, uh, you know, a plan for the money, then you know, I understand that's, that. And the second thing is, uh, um, what about Jared Goff? D- three months ago, that's my other question. Three months ago, didn't we all assume that um, Jared Goff would probably have an extension by now? So I wonder, does that have anything to do with any of this? I don't think it has anything to do with any of this. I, I think that the negotiations with both Goff and St. Brown, a little curious as to you know, when this is going to get done for, for both of those guys, but it, does it make sense? Is there a financial benefit to waiting for a certain date to, to get it officially signed? You know, like what happened with the yeah. release of Cam Sutton effective June, June 1st, or I don't know how what the dates are on the calendar in the NFL to, to really make it I, I wouldn't describe myself as being full on antsy about those contract situations, but I'm antsy adjacent. Like I'm getting close. <laughs> um, but antsy doesn't imply panic or concern or worry. That's just a little bit of a little uncomfortable with the lack of news. But I, I also thought it sounded like in those quotes from Brad Holmes last week at the NFL meetings that there was a commitment to get these contracts done. And don't you guys feel like every move the lines do with contracts 
they're thinking about the extensions with St. Brown yep. and golf. Like every move they make, they 100%. know what they have to have put aside for possible future extensions. So Brock Wright's part of that. You know, whether they brought back Josh Reynolds or whoever, they're always thinking about the other contracts too. And I asked you guys too, is it curious that they only they only tendered Brock Wright? They didn't offer him an outright contract. They could have done that. Yep. No, I hear you. And 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 look, there he's a valuable player, but this falls back into the classic don't fall in love with your own guys. The crazy thing about Brock Wright, and I think this is a telling stat about his use. He had 14 targets last year and 13 catches. They dialed up Brock Wright at strategic moments in time, and it always worked. <laughs> well, I bet you those weren't all dialed up for him as target one, by the way. Probably not. I so mean, That's 93% of the time works all the time. Yeah. <laughs> and here's another thing to keep in mind, too. If you don't have to pay Brock Wright and you go a cheaper route and you just elevate you know, Zilstra or James Mitchell and you sign, and draft a tight end, are you involved in maybe a Quandre Diggs or a player or Justin Simmons or someone who out there? You're C.J. Gardner Johnson from last year, right? Where a guy's available. Yeah, yeah, I could. Uh, and, and, and you I'm have some money left up, over. Right. Yeah, and you're Stephon Gilmore, yeah. whatever the mm-hmm. case is. Sure. I'd, I'd, let's get it done then. <laughs> I've even if you're going to be, you be, we be okay with one of those additions yes. if they let Brock Wright? Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, to an extent. <laughs> There'd be a hole in my heart. Oh, God. <laughs> No. One thought's better for the team. Your commitment. I'm not worried about the offense. I'm worried about the defense. Your commitment to this guy is fantastic. That's awesome. <laughs> it really is. Like, Stephon Gilmore or, or Brock Wright? Gilmore. All right. I'm just saying, if that money were to help get Stephon Gilmore here and you just fill in Brock Wright's rules, you know, yeah, another well, player. Let's, let's make it happen already. I, I, seriously. I mean, they Dan Campbell basically said that they, they still have room for a, to, to get a, a safety. That they want to add a safety. Well, there's a handful of good safeties available in free agency. Go sign one. 248 539 I'm, I'm not yelling at Dan Campbell. <laughs> or Brad Holmes. Yelling towards Brad Holmes. <laughs> in his general direction. Yeah, I just want him to hear what I have to say. But not directly at him. Not at Dan Campbell, though. Not, I'm not going to upset him. Uh, let's go to Gary. You're next on 97 One to take it. What's up, Gary? Hey, just uh, thinking if we spend the money on Brock Wright uh, that we would have spent on Josh Ron, I just don't think that's a, a good fit. I don't think that's where we need to put the money. We have a lot of needs, and you look at 2025, the money we're going to have to spend then, I just don't think we need to be spending on a guy that's got 13 targets. Well, 14. <laughs> Not that it's particularly <laughs> important. Uh, I hear you. I, I think I think what's make what would make them uncomfortable is any commitment in 2025 to a player that's essentially never going to be the number one tight end here, barring injury. Uh, you Absolutely. love it, but they do love depth. My God, do they love depth? They love depth. Uh, but maybe this is too much money for even depth at that position. So. Uh, I have to see how it plays itself out, but I'm. But we're talking about the backup tight end. We are. <laughs> you know, that's how interested we are in the Lions debating the merits of how important is Brock Wright? Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. Text or call. We're getting the text same and calls. Yeah. Uh, don't be a sucker for the quick turnaround. Let him go. San Francisco's coach is weak, and his players don't respect him. He got us this time. Ignore the distant thunder. That's quite. A, there's a lot in that text. San Francisco's coach is weak and his players don't respect him? Mm. Ignore the distant thunder? I like the ignore the distant thunder part. I kind of like it all. Uh, Matt in Ann Arbor writes in, the Lions should match the Niners' offer. He is a young, worthwhile asset at a crucial position for the right price. This one should be a no-brainer to match the offer and keep him on the team for the future. I guess, I think if they had plans to pay Brock Wright in 2025, they probably would have offered it to him. Next text, let Brock walk, draft the tight end. Whether or not they bring back Brock will tell me a lot about what they think of Mitchell. If they move on, it tells me they like him more than fans seem to. As a receiving tight end, 
I have been waiting for Mitchell to blossom. And I've talked about it. And I've compared his two healthy seasons at Vatek as a big play tight end whose numbers were comparable to what Brock Bowers did in one season. But still, <laughs> he had big play capability. We haven't seen it just yet, but I like Mitchell. Yeah, stay healthy. Stay healthy, and he's uh, he can be quite productive. 248-539-9797. Coming up in the noon hour, we had a bit of an Easter disaster. I'll explain uh, more of your Brock Wright calls and feedback. Hey, what'd you like most about the Tigers weekend? We got a Red Wing team to delve into as they pile up votes for Chump. Huh. And I don't hate where they are right now. I really don't. But they got work to do. They got to get, got to pick it up. And I think they're capable of it. Let's go, don't it? It's Carson Anderson, 97 won the ticket.
Tigers in action tonight, 3-0 and start, and a young pitcher with a ton of promise who's looked filthy at times. Takes to the hill for the Tigers tonight, and Reese Olsen, him and his rosy cheeks, see if he can get the job done in the Big Apple against the New York Metropolitans. Let's go Tigers, 3-0. and In desperate need of that fast start to generate fan interest, 3-0 and qualifies. Yeah, and we got the Red Wings tonight as well. Mm-hmm. Taking on Tampa. Yep. And the trifecta of the professional teams. The Pistons take on the Grizzlies tonight at LCA. And, Doug, I don't know if you saw this. The Pistons won their last game. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you saw this. The Pistons are favored tonight by three and a half points. Yes, I saw it, Gator. What are you thinking? Every time they get a win, I think, man, they're coming dangerously close to winning three in a row. The big game for me, too. Only two more to go. Only two more to go. Now, they haven't won three in a row in either of the last two seasons. <laughs> but for some damn reason, I made a bet with you and Kang that they would this year. I did it in the midst of the losing streak. And here we sit. Well, you can't win three in a row until you win two in a row. Yep. And it all starts with one. And we can finagle the numbers however we want. They're close, people. Yeah. They're close. And then they play uh, at Atlanta. Okay, I can Wednesday. see what's coming out here. It's, it, I'm, I'm, I see what you're up to. Are you and Kang trying to back out of the bet? <laughs> <laughs> uh, absolutely not. No? I'm just merely pointing out that, you know, the Pistons did beat the Wizards quite handily. In fact... See how many points the Wizards scored? Uh, not many. 87 yeah. in an NBA game these days. That's just pathetic. Uh, Cade Cunningham was a star. But um, the Grizzlies, that's next up tonight. That could be that yeah. could be a, a strong W. And then again, taking on the Hawks. Dude, I know. I know, I know, I know. And if they win tonight, you know, you're taking on a team that – the Hawks are tenth in the conference right now. They're game and a half behind the Bulls for nine. Now, to be clear, Cade Cunningham is questionable for tonight. It means he could may or may not play. That's yeah, all. yeah, yeah. All right, back to your phone calls. Two four eight. They still have Metu. I know they do. Unleash the Metu. Uh Chris, you're on ninety seven. Want to take it? What's up, Chris? Hey guys, how's it going? Okay. Uh I was just calling in about Brock Wright. I, I would definitely go with a proven commodity. Um, he's not just a backup. He's a number two tight end in a team that uses a high percentage of two tight end sets. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's also a special teamer, and with the new kickoff rules, that's going to be uh, a little more emphasized, and they've shown that they're willing to pay special team guys. So I think he's a good fit, and, uh, yeah, I'd go with that. So what's interesting is if they don't let him go, if they don't re-sign him, that tells me it's easy for us. It's easy, and I, I do the same thing, Chris. It's easy for us to say, yeah, I want to keep him. But what is that tech, What is that tangibly going to cost them? Like, is it going to cost yeah. them a player next year, which is what I really think this is all about. It's do they want to make a two-year commitment to a number two tight end? I don't disagree, but it's also you got to match the deal given, and it's a three-year deal. So even if you have them two years and cut them, some of that money is going to get spread. So you're not paying the full amount for the first two years. So I think it's I think it's a doable contract. But yeah, obviously we'll see what they do. Um, but I think he fits. And if you're trying to win a Super Bowl, you don't want to be counting on a whole bunch of rookies. You know, you want some proven commodities. You got to fill some holes. This is true. See where he's going. He's already talking Super Bowl, Doug. This I, year, yeah, I don't blame him. They yeah. should be. He should. That should be part of the thought process. Yes. <laughs> do I have a better chance of winning the big game with Brock Wright? Or with or other guy, you know, undrafted free agent tight end or seventh round pick, so and so. Well, if you believe in Holmes and Campbell, and if they do, you know, decide to let Brock Wright go, go. James Mitchell is a guy, right? That he's been under their wing since they drafted him, and has he progressed? Has he developed enough like other guys on this team? So it's not just bringing in some rookie and because I think I do think bringing in a rookie asking him to do what Brock Wright did is kind of a lot but you have guys that have been here specifically James Mitchell is he ready or not I mean that's a guy they drafted and Brock Wright wasn't even drafted yeah but Mitchell Mitchell's been a health issue 
That's that's the question mark with him. Because if he's healthy, I think he can play in this league. And I think he'll be just fine. 248-539-9797. David is next on 97 One the Ticket. Hi, David. Hello, Doug and Gator. Hey, Hi, David. David. Let Brock Wright walk. Do not uh, sign this guy. He's a backup tight end. You got James Mitchell and you got the other guy, Ziegler. You you don't go chasing after this guy, a backup. That's crazy. If Brad Holmes uh, signed him, that's ridiculous. Brad Holmes, you need, this is what you need to do, Brad Holmes. Draft coming up, you short on cornerbacks. Take a corner in the first round and in the, in the third round. So, David, just a quick question, I, and I certainly appreciate your phone call and your opinion. The – the team that offered Brock Wright the contract is the team that won the NFC. Like, like these are th- these are two of the best, if not one and two in the NFC, that are haggling over a backup tight end. Why do you think that is? It's no reason. San Francisco doing that just because they competed with the Lions in the championship game. Don't Lions, Brad, don't, don't fall for the okie doke. It's a backup. You you you, you can get a you can draft into another tight end in the in the fifth or sixth round or something. But like I said, you got James Mitchell and you got Ziegler, two other Zil- backups. Zilstra, 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 Zilstra. Yeah, well, this is this is ridiculous. Don't pay this guy all that money to be a second so, screen. Oh, oh, How much money do you think they're offering him? What did you say? What was it's, what, it? Was a uh, six? Was it a twelve million dollar? Uh, no, it's gar- It's a guaranteed six million dollar deal f- from San Francisco over two years total. So six million is guaranteed for the two years. No, don't offer that, man. Oh, Let million. them walk. Okay. You got you, you got your rookie James Mitchell. Uh, he's not a rookie. Uh, he's been with the team two years. Come on. David, thank that's you for that's fo- how it should be. Okay, no, we got we you're on the record, David. Thank you for calling. You will. All right, see. You. He's still waiting for an email back, isn't he? Probably. Yeah. I think my favorite of that call, you got the rookie that's been on the team for two years, James yep. Mitchell. But we know what he meant. And and look, I I just keep thinking the hang up has to be the if if the Lions pass, if they do, it must be we're war chesting for 2025's roster. This is a two-year commitment to a player that we can't afford it costing us a more valuable player that cuts into what we're offering Amon Ra, or cuts into what we're offering Goff. Not a lot, but then you start going, okay, what other role player does it cost you that's going to be need to resign in 2025? Well, and at this point, if you are going to sign a Stephon Gilmore or a Quandre Diggs or maybe even Simmons for that matter – they're all likely one-year deals mm-hmm. and have no effect on 2025. 248-539-9797. Phone calls, feedback, Carson Anderson. Hey, the uh, the Final Four is set in college basketball. A Purdue Boilermakers minus the endorsement of Doug Karsh. You didn't have in the Final Four? Are advancing to the Final Four. It's the only team I got right that's in the Final Four. Is it a direct correlation? Oh, so you're the Purdue guy now? <laughs> I never, I never changing, loved Purdue. I just not, I just not overt about it like you are. Changing of the guard. It's now Boilermaker Gator on this program. Look, man. That's all I got left. The Boilermakers? Yeah. yeah. I mean, do you want them to win it all? Yes. My dad went to Purdue, so yeah. yeah. yeah I've always liked Purdue. Yeah, I think I want them to win it all, too. Kang, you want him to win it all? Oh, you do, why'd you do that, Doug? They were doing fine without you. Well, you didn't pick him. I didn't pick him to win it all. Uh, do I want Purdue out of this Final Four? Yes. Yeah, they are my rooting team at this point. Since you, you had all at of, Illinois. You, you guys know that. And, he he oh, was Illinois. I know. Good God, dude, they got screwed in the bracket. I mean, UConn is a they're a beast. But I mean that. What did they have? Twenty points at halftime or something? Well, yeah. In the second half, that was half, like worse. <laughs> I was I was at a restaurant on Saturday night with some friends, and I, I looked up. And it was the second half it started, and, and, and Illinois it was losing like twenty nine twenty three, I think something like that. I looked back up, 
and they're down by 16. I look back up and they're down by 25. I look back up and they're down by 31. What? Momentum. Yeah. <laughs> 30 to nothing. <laughs> they, they, they stopped scoring. <laughs> 30 to nothing. And that was, by the way, one that of hurts. the highest scoring teams in the country. I think I they scored 100 points the night before or the, the, the previous game. So there's somebody in college basketball I'm just welling up a irrational dislike for. We will get to that today at 1148. It's Carson Anderson, 97-1, the ticket. Dingers, blasts, moonshots, whatever you call them, everyone loves home runs. And with FanDuel's Dinger Tuesdays, you can love them even more. That's right. Dinger Tuesdays are back for another season on America's number one sports book. Just bet on a player to homer, and FanDuel will give you $5 in bonus bets for every home run hit during the game. As if you need another reason to love the long ball, visit FanDuel.com slash Doug to get in on Dinger Tuesday action. That's FanDuel.com slash Doug. FanDuel is the official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Must be 21 or older and present in Michigan. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Maximum bonus is 25 bucks a game. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problems? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Doug Carr, Scott Anderson, I send one to ticket open lines, 248-539-9797. All right, so March Madness, It it look, I didn't get a chance to get down there, and it was going to be a busy sports weekend. Um, 
a lot to take in at home. But it sounds like Detroit did a pretty good job, and it looked good on TV. So congratulations to all those involved. And if if, if that's not true and anybody thinks that Detroit dropped the ball at any point, but I was just reading some social media, and it just – it sounds like it, it went well, um, which is cool. Hopefully we can stay in the rotation for hosting events like this. But, you know, you just can't guard Zach Eady. Is what it comes, guarding Zach Eady is like trying to guard a water tower. You can't move him off the block, and you run into him and get called for a foul. So are we convinced that doesn't work in the NBA? <sighs> I mean, the, the NBA sends the message all the time that we don't value that kind of game anymore. Unless, but unless you're a giant, like it's one thing to have Luca Garza, mm-hmm. who was whatever six ten, six eleven, but could could shoot. He got drafted, but clearly was outmatched. He wasn't quick enough and and didn't shoot well enough. But Zach Eadie's a monster inside. I mean, this is a guy that you can just keep feeding the beast, and I'm, I mean, certainly he's going to get done at the college level. But last night's game was insane. He had more than half the points for Purdue. Mm hmm. They just kept going to him, kept going to him, kept going to him, and he kept delivering. Yeah, and and every mock draft I've seen him, he's been a second rounder. And so, again, those mock drafts don't mean that's what's going to happen, but it does it does tell you how the NBA values his style of game. And, you know, it's why Hunter Dickinson's still playing college basketball is because he's getting NIL money and he'll he'll go at some point in the draft. But, but Hunter at least shoots from the outside. He does. But Edie is so big that I just, I mean, maybe I wouldn't, I'm certainly not going to spend a, a lottery pick on Zach Edie, but I'd consider moving back into the first to get him if you thought you had. I, I don't know. I just, he's an interesting ex- experiment because at some point, I think the league will go back to looking at somebody who's a post player because you'll have enough guys. Everybody else shoots, right? Mm-hmm. So why not have a guy who's just a post presence? He's so big. He's so impossible to guard. Do you see what he did after the game when they cut down the nets? He didn't use the ladder. He just kind of walked up and <laughs> snipped. I mean, the kids, he's unguardable. And the truth is, look, Purdue has been the punching bag for several years because of their last lack of success. Matt Painter's a good coach, but he has struggled in March. And there is such a sense of relief I, I wouldn't be surprised if if they go to the final four and flop because they've they've checked this box and there's a little bit of all right we did that that was such a goal and it was so big to get over that hump and they did it and good for them um, now they have to guard against the letdown of having accomplished something that isn't necessarily, you know, it's not the finish line. The, the college basketball is so weird because of the time off between the quarterfinals and the semifinals. There really is banner raising for going to the final four. Getting to the semifinals in that sport feels more important than any other sport. And it's um, it's the name, it's the stage, it's that Saturday night, it's everybody's watching that makes it such a big deal. And Purdue did it. Purdue is finally, finally dead. De- and I guess Robbie Hummel was doing the Westwood One broadcast and was reduced to tears at the end of the game as a Purdue guy because they have taken so much heat that they finally cleared that hurdle. Yeah, I mean, the Gene Cady teams, which were great teams, yep. they reached the Elite Eight twice in the Sweet 16, like um, three or four other seasons, in addition to the Elite Eight, obviously, uh, but never got past the Elite Eight. I mean, this is the first team for Purdue to get to the Final Four since that 1980 team. And the next year, they ended up going to the NIT. Yep. Now, because yeah. so Barry Carroll goes to the NBA. I said it's irrational, but I'm starting to hate UConn. <laughs> Too damn successful. I mean, they're they're Too every much? game's a blowout, and I don't find them compelling in any way. They're great. Got it. Much respect. They just I just bored by UConn. I want them to lose. They don't. I don't. I don't know. I just don't. It's irrational. I watch him play and I'm bored by him. It's okay. Is it? I, I want him to. Yeah, I totally want him to lose. I have different reasons that I won't go into, but I, I desperately want them to lose. They don't seem very humbled either. Like the coach Hurley was talking yeah, about no, them I, versus I, I everybody, like and it's yeah. like Shut you guys up. are the best team, man. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what? 
You're you're winning every game by 15 <laughs> Nobody plus. thought we'd be here. Yeah, it's us versus everybody. No, I mean, I mean yeah. number one seed. I know, right? <laughs> In the tournament. <laughs> And it's really been it's it's been sneakily the best program in college basketball. I know in the last quarter century. Yep. Okay. I mean, you always your your mind will always go to like Duke, Kentucky, yep. North Carolina, and then somebody just says, "Don't forget UConn." And, this, and you're like, "What?" This oh bl- yeah, bland white toast program over there winning all these games. And I like white toast. Fair enough. Um, Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. Let's get back to your open line calls. We go to Scott. You're next on ninety seven. One a ticket. Hi, Scott. How are you guys this afternoon? I say pay that tight end the extra million dollars. <laughs> uh, people, this is in every single sport, it seems to me. But people don't put enough value on somebody that's been in the system who you're already happy with, paying him a little over and above to keep him around. I don't look at him as a backup. I mean, if you go different different formations he's he he's the guy i mean he's not a starter but he's not the backup and if laporta gets hurt this is a cheap way of of replacing laporta so i don't understand the whole you know just draft somebody then you're taking a gamble or even if you bring in a backup from another city that person still has to get used to a different locker room different system living in a different city all that has value to it so to me it would be absolutely ridiculous, especially to let him go to the 49ers, who is your direct competition. It took, to me, it's just an easy – it'd be one thing if it was another two, three, four million dollars. It's not. It's, it's, it's like a million bucks over two years. Well, let the guy have uh, the money, it, keep him around. You're already happy with him. Scott, I think – and I don't know if you heard our conversation on this earlier. I, I'm assuming here that they have money earmarked next year – because they didn't offer Brock Wright more than one year. They offered him the, the, the minimum tender for a one-year deal. But if they if they match this offer, they'll have to pay him next year, too. And next year is where Goff, Amon-Ra, Aline McNeil, and others are going to get these bumps. And this might be money they have budgeted for other things next year. This year, I don't think it's an issue. I think it's about next year. And right, we don't know, we don't know who that year, would cost you do have to... If you do have to move him, though, to do the other things, I think he still holds his value. Like I said, I don't think it's that expensive of a contract to where you couldn't move him or at least move him to a team that's not the 49ers. Well, it doesn't seem like it. The one thing that I think is critical here, are what are those incentives that take that contract up to a $12 million three-year commitment? Like where where do they get to the point where they're spending eight more million over 25 and 26 that they weren't expecting to spend and are those going to be easy to hit incentives and will you be obligated to pay them? Which is all very important. These are numbers that we don't have available to us, but could be playing a role, right? True. Yeah. Very true. 248 539 phone calls, feedback. Uh, by the way, just a public service announcement. Today is stupid. <laughs> Now, maybe it's not as stupid for you as it could be for us. But I'm checking every Pierre Lebrun out there to make sure that they're the actual Pierre Lebrun. Not going to look at tweets from Adam Shifter. Yes. I'm very well aware that that how the double and triple check everything. Somebody tagged us on a rumor today. (laughs) Not true. Not true. Not falling for the banana tailpipe trick. Not falling for the Jerry Jacobs signed a three-year, $12 million guaranteed contract with the Lions. Not falling for it. Not up in here. Not up in here. Have we fallen for it in the past? Yes. We are veterans. Not on April Fool's Day, though, have we? I think I did. I think I did two years ago. Some in, I think it was a tiger injury or something. Oh. But today's stupid. It can be stupid for you, too. It comes with no consequences. Well, (laughs) it comes with fewer consequences than it does when we screw it up. It's April Fool's Day. It's April Fool's Day. Be leery. And when you're in the information reporting business, (laughs) uh, today sucks. Today really does suck. Not a fan. No.
We should maybe just not report any breaking news out of uh, abundance of caution. It's not likely. No. Uh, All right, coming up next hour, let's get into the Red Wings a little bit, back to a great Tiger start. Everything you could ask for them to do, well, not everything, but they won the three games. They got the Mets tonight. We'll get into what we like the most about the Tigers opening weekend. And I had a bit of a uh, bit of a disaster on Easter. We will get to that today at 1220. Champ and Chump, get your votes in. We'll tell you what ours were at 1202 here on Carson Anderson on 97 won the ticket.
Doug Carr, Scott Anderson, 97 won a ticket. All right, 248-539-9797. We got a bunch of champ and chump votes to get caught up on. It's a Monday, champ and chump of the weekend. Uh, my champ of the weekend was A.J. Hinch. Pulled all the right strings for the Tigers this weekend. Great use of the bullpen. Clutch pinch hits from guys like Andy Abanez and Carson Kelly. Great, uh, great start. Great start, long way to go, bad opponent, whatever. Uh, three one one wins. Manager had a good weekend. I give him my champ of the weekend. I went with Zach Eady from Purdue. Big man put uh, the entire team on his uh, massive shoulders. Forty points, sixteen rebounds, and the win over Tennessee gets the Boilermakers to the Final Four for the first time since nineteen eighty. Great job from Zach Eady, who has been just unbelievable all season long. My jump of the weekend is all those people that have worked up and went nuts over the Tigers pizza celebration in the dugout. I I mean, seriously, we have more important things to worry about. It looked like the guys were having fun with it. Even if the, if it did come down on, on, on high saying, let's do this. It has zero impact on my enjoyment of the game or the outcomes of the game, (laughs) but whatever. I mean, it, it just feel like there was way too much angst out there in social media about this. If if you knew that it came on high, I can understand why people would be upset. I don't think there's any way that's possible. I don't think there's any way that's possible. It's just a funny thing. Yep. It's, it's a celebration. I get over it. Uh, for me, the chump is whoever was responsible for taping off the three-point line in the women's tournament game yesterday. Uh, they screwed it up. You had one job. Measure out the proper distance on both ends and get it done. They didn't do that. They They caught it before the game started and made the decision to continue playing uh, even though they could have waited an hour and had them uh, re-tape the, uh, the line, but that was their decision, and uh, it's just ridiculous it even got to that. There's just, I mean, there's no respect. There's no respect for the women's game, seemingly. You know, they had the, the issue the last year with the, uh, or a couple years ago when they had the, the tournament was moved around and they had um, horrible conditions for the women compared to what the yeah, men were getting. Yeah. It's just, I, I don't get well, it. With when when there's all this publicity about the women's tournament, with the the and particularly what's going on with to, is it tonight with LSU and uh, Iowa? Yep. I mean, you're you got the spotlight, and unfortunately, the spotlight right now is about how nobody cared about the three point line. Well, and the, look, they could have got it worked out. It would have taken an hour. There was some angst about whether or not the networks wanted to move their make that window available to show the women's game. I was at a college hockey Frozen Four years ago when they were between periods. Might have even been between the early game and the late game. And they were drilling the hole for the the little um the the thing that you put the peg for the peg goal. For the yeah. Uh and they hit a pipe and it flooded and it took forever to fix it. But the game was still televised. They still moved it. Now those were kind of unplayable conditions compared to this. You could compl- you could play it, but it's not like college hockey gets this huge number. And ESPN moved that around. You got fifty five affiliates. Throw it somewhere else and get it right, and start the game when you've got the right dimensions on the court. This isn't baseball, where you're dealing with different dimensions in different parks. Three point lines, a three point line. It's the equivalent of moving the pitching rubber or making the distance from first to second base shorter. It's not messing with the outfield wall. Is this right? It's so weird. No, I don't think it's right. (laughs) Suffice it to say, a lot of votes for Chump of the Weekend for the Portland Regional of the Women's Tournament. Uh, Feedback coming in. Nate writes in Champ Michigan Hockey for dispatching the Spartans and getting to the third consecutive Frozen Four. Chump Eisenman, I I hold him fully responsible for this free fall. From the failed additions, lack of movement at the deadline, and his words, quote, this team isn't ready to compete and win, which have led to our collapse. So those words don't bother me because I can't imagine being a professional athlete and then that making me want to give up. In fact, I think of it as insulting that somebody would believe that. Eisenman's team is not getting it done right here, right now. But I got a theory on them, which probably won't be popular. We'll get to that coming up. Uh, Champ, the Tigers for starting out the season with three straight. Chump, Doug for taking Houston and making my bracket garbage. Thanks, Purdue. Okay, so I took Houston. Does that mean that person took Houston because I took Houston? Oh, that's a mistake. Look, I've been on the Purdue bandwagon forever. Up until this year. 
stop listening <laughs> to what I'm telling you to do in March Madness. You're not telling anybody what to do in March Madness. Oh, God, no. No, you're telling you're just relaying what you did, period. Yep. I will take the vote, though, for Chump of the Weekend. Uh, Champ the Tigers, Chump Denny Hamlin. Champ the Tigers, nice 3 0 start. Chump NCAA refs. The foul differential between Purdue and any team they play is unbelievable. Edie had 22 free throws yesterday. This has become a joke. Well, he had 22 free throws because he was hacked constantly because they thought maybe that's the best way to stop. He's so hard to officiate because he does things that other players would do that wouldn't be fouls. Like he just pivots and his elbow might hit somebody in the face or he might knock somebody down because he's a water tower. And I I don't know how you officiate him. I get the frustration though. I mean, there was plenty of games this year where Purdue shot like 30 free throws and their opponent shot six. And it's basically all because of Edie. Anthony and mail truck champ tigers catching. Jake Rogers mashed and Carson Kelly was hitting and both called good games. Chump, Javi. He didn't really hurt us, but every at bat I was wondering how far, how far out he would swing. Um I mean, do you he showed think, some restraint? Yeah. Do you think in his mind he thinks everything's okay? No. I, I, you can't feel that way if, I mean, you have to acknowledge to yourself that you're working on a problem, Mm -hmm. but I mean, you talked about it last week, his strikeout percentage has actually decreased. Yep. So even though he's listing to one side and swinging at it, the reality is sometimes he gets a piece of it and he just gets himself out. A lot of times he swings and misses, um, and he'll get himself out with another pitch, but he it's tough to watch when when somebody's got a good slider and they know how to use it against him. Yep. But I I think I've never thought that anybody is just tanking it. He's trying, and maybe this is uh, this is not going to last much longer. But he did help you win the first game. See what happens tonight if he's in the lineup or not. Um, imagine he would be. There's a lot of baseball to play. There's a lot to be played. There's a little indication, though, that he's going to pull out of this, right? I mean, there just isn't. How? how it, it looks much the same. But the, somebody called earlier and said, I just hope he doesn't hurt us. It doesn't help that Ryan Kreidler went 0 for his first six down at Toledo. Now, Kreidler is the next available option. He's not the only option. Uh, he seems to be next in line. Uh, Leonard, the guy they got for the Dodgers is two for seven, but he's not considered a front line defensive shortstop. I mean, maybe it's something they'd address at the trade deadline if they're in contention. I mean, they could, they certainly could. Um, it hurts that they got the shortstop position wrong when there were all those free agent shortstops that one year yep. that, that hurts. It also hurts that, you know, somebody that they, put a lot of stock in in the uh, system years ago the Christian Santana who was the the kid that they had signed as like a 16 year old that that he hasn't really developed into being the guy they thought that he would I mean so they they're still trying to find a shortstop in the system but they they've got a bunch of guys that are at the lower levels well what's good is being off to a good start might prompt movement here okay i don't have a ton of faith that Javi Baez is going to is going to turn this thing around, but I understand why he's still being paraded out there, and it's it, it's all about the financial investment they have, and quite frankly, there isn't an obvious next best option. The thing is, you have to remember is that the money is dedicated already. He will be paid by the Tigers organization unless somebody takes him up on a trade and they eat a bunch of the salary, but he is owed this ninety six million dollars, and they are going to pay it. If Kreider could show anything, he might force a move. And if this team can stay competitive for months here, they might force a move. One good weekend at Chicago doesn't mean that they're going to stay competitive. But looking at the schedule, they have a chance to be more competitive in the first month of the season than they've been any of the last three years where they've been remarkably an average of eight games under in the first month. And if you think about any month, if you have movement eight games better or eight games worse, that's a lot of movement. They've been bad, like 
downright horrible the first month of the season, the last three years. Let's go. Three and it's almost like, you know, the Tigers, you can't win it the first month, but they definitely lost it the first month. Yep. And so they don't want to be battling behind the eight ball already, especially when you're, you know, maybe think people think you're a 500 team at best. And they seem to have gotten better as the season goes along. So don't start off poorly, like like you said, Doug. But the Javi Bias thing, I think people, it's really hard for people to. Well, we talked about this before. They got to get over his contract in a sense because he's just not going to be that yeah. player that you signed to that deal. He isn't. Uh, and because he's not the only one, like Riley Green didn't start off, he hasn't started off that well, right? Parker Meadows, he's the same. But you just got to hope really good defensively and and contribute to a win every now and then, like he did the very first game of the year. He helped you win that game. Yep. And and I mean, people, I guess, don't have to get over it. I know. It's just, <laughs> he's it's not, like you. This will be a repetitive bitch all season long. But if the team is winning and he's not, and he's occasionally helping them win, can you deal with that? I think in a lot of people's minds, the answer is already no. 248 539 All right, coming up today at 1220, we had a bit of a Easter disaster. <laughs> in spite of all the time and effort we put in, failed miserably. I'm sorry. We'll get to that today at 1220. It's Carson Anderson, 97-1, the ticket. Hey, I know we made it through the final 16 and final eight weekend, but Twin Peaks is going to keep the party going, and you're not going to miss what's going on at Auburn Hills tomorrow. The first in-store photo shoot for the Miss Twin Peaks pageant. The best Twin Peaks girls will be strutting the red carpet in bikinis and lingerie as they prepare to submit to be Miss Auburn Hills. From 5 to 9, the girls will be glammed up and strutting their stuff, and they'll still be happy hour to take advantage of their awesome deals like $5 queso and chips, $2 tacos and domestic drafts, or grab a frozen summer shandy, their beer of the month. In-house, DJ as well, along with the Twin Peaks girls, awesome food, beverage specials, wall-to-wall TVs to catch Detroit in action against New York in baseball. Why wait to the weekend to start the party again? Check it out at Twin Peaks. To find the Auburn Hills location, go to TwinPeaksRestaurant.com. And to be aware of all their specials, again, TwinPeaksRestaurant.com. Food's great. Beer's ice cold. Atmosphere is awesome. Twin Peaks eats, drinks. Scenic views.
some Red Wing and Tiger discussion coming up. Good weekend for the the Tigers for sure. The Red Wings, well, they got a point out of the Florida trip. Um, and they got Tampa tonight. And it, hey, man, Philly's collapse has made this thing feel like all right. Well, maybe the uh, maybe the Red Wings aren't aren't dead yet, in spite of their inability to string together wins and start to look like that team that got hot for a while there. But Gator had a bit of a disaster uh, over the Easter Sunday. I mean, it wasn't disastrous, but it was one of those things that was was just. I'll go ahead and call it very frustrating. So for those that decide that they are going to attend the Easter mass and those that regularly attend mass, you are are fully aware that Easter brings out the crowd like Christmas. And so knowing that we were going to be there, all five of us were going, my wife and myself and the, and the three kids. My mom goes. Um, my dad typically does not. Uh, but it was like, okay, does mom need a ride? And uh, then dad said he'll go. I'm like, whoa, okay. Wow. Dad doesn't. Special occasion. Frito doesn't go to, to mass very much, but Frito decided to go to this one. So we had to find seven seats together. So they were driving from their house. We were driving from our house. Picked the kids up. And there was the 8.30 mass let out a little bit late, and there was already a line for the 10 a.m. mass to get in. So we parked. First, I pulled up, and I said, do you want to get out and get in line? Yeah. I asked my, my wife this. She says no. Oh. So I go park the car, and by the time we get back, the church has opened up. The line is moving quickly. We're kind of in the back, but it's moving at a rapid pace. So we get in, and we look to the right where – the bulk of the congregation sits and then we eye the stairs to the balcony and it looks like it's going to be hard to find seven together on the main level. Let's go up to the balcony. We get up to the balcony. It's almost wide open. Oh, there you go. Yes. All right. So there's the pews to the one side that can hold about five people. And then right across is another pew where I send my wife and two kids to hold the five. I sit down to hold the two. Okay, we're about 15 minutes before mass is supposed to start. So I text my parents, we're upstairs in the balcony, got seven seats. My mom and wife start to text. Uh-oh. My mom says, we're down on the main level. We have seven seats. Oh, no. So we've got seven upstairs and seven downstairs. And we're fending, man. You know, because yeah, there's yeah, a lot I, of people no, coming sorry, in. I, I, my family's coming Yeah, I'm here. holding these seats, holding these seats, holding these seats. A lot of fending going on. It's church. Everyone's polite. No one's turning into caring yet. No, there's, no, there's no, no issues. My wife gets up and walks down to the top of the, the first row of the balcony, seeks out and finds my parents, my mom and dad, split out with five seats in between. You. So sure. they've got the seven seats, and my yeah. mom's got a cell phone sitting on That's one and a pair of gloves. Yeah, she's That's how you do it. She staked her claim. And so we're in the balcony, and I, and I say, she comes back and she says, they've got seven seats down there. Let's go. And I said, are you sure? She says, yes. I said, okay. And I mean, the moment we stood up, here they come. Are these seats taken? Are you, right. are you? And I'm like, nope, you can have them now. We turn and head to the stairs. We get to the top of the stairs, look down at the bottom of the stairs, and there's mom and dad on their way up the stairs. Oh, uh, no. We went from having 14 seats to none. Just like that. I turn. First of all, my oldest son turns at me and starts to snicker. <laughs> and he says all he sees from dad is nostril breathing. I turn, sprint back. They're not all gone. There's two seats left. Oh, that's not enough. We get up to the top. It's crowded. Now we're the ones looking for seats. There are the two seats, which we quickly grab. My dad assesses the situation. Going home. I'm out. Yep. I love it. One of my kids turns to me 
and says, wait, did Papa just dip? <laughs> dip. I mean, uh, yep. Papa just dipped. Is that what the kids call bailing today? Yes. I, lo- I love it. Do you love this? I, I, it makes Yes, it brings a smile to my face because I could see that happening. I, I remember the day distinctly when we used to go to uh, Christmas Eve service all the time. Did it every year. And I, it got to be a point where, you know, it just became a hassle and I just didn't want to do it anymore when I was an adult, but still went because family did. And then it was that one day, I went to my parents for Christmas Eve and expecting to have to go to church. And my mom's like, all right, well, let's go. And my dad goes, I don't want to. And he put his foot down. He's like, I'm not doing it. Been doing it for 30 years. I don't want to do it. I'm like, you're awesome. <laughs> you're so great. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, and my mom goes, well, he may not be going, but you're going. I'm like, wow. but my, he's not going. <laughs> so I had to go, and that was the last year that I went. So I took my mother to Christmas Eve mass, and then, or not mass, but service, and then we, that was about it. But when when Hugh put the foot down, it was a special day. And I feel like your dad just did, he's done it. He's yeah. already said he's not, and then this year he's like, oh, fine, I'll go. And what it tells me, is it, this is the exact reason why he made that decision years ago to say no more to the Easter Mass because it is a zoo. It was a zoo. The church, and he doesn't want to deal with it. Why do I have to deal with this? Okay. We went to the ladder service and went like it's already, you know, it's already a line around the door. So now I'm standing at the top of the balcony in the last row. And we've got these two seats. Who gets the two seats? The two people that didn't communicate, my wife and my mom. They get the two seats. Is the way it should be? I gave up the seat. My mom's 80 years old. She deserves it. Absolutely. My wife. Can't believe you made her walk up the stairs. (laughs) I didn't make her do anything. So now I'm standing in the back row with the kids for the entirety of the mass. The kids can't stop laughing. I can't believe Papa dipped. I can't believe Papa dipped. Did he just go to the car? <sighs> or did he actually fully leave? And you, had to, you had to take your mom home. <laughs> Papa implied that he went to the bar. <laughs> yes. Wow. It's early. That's a service I can attend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we laugh about it. We hope to have learned a lesson. But we stood the entire mass. Grenora and my wife, they sat. They sat. So at one point. How long was the mass? We get to the peace be with. Right? Uh Mass is, it's usually an hour, but on Easter, the communion takes a lot longer. Everything. And look, the the priest, he gets up there and the message, his message of the day was nobody's perfect. And I'm like, yep, that is correct. So. Amen. We get to the peace be with, which the record is 17, by the way, in our household. The most time, most hands. (laughs) And peace be with 17, top that. <laughs> and, it, and it usually happens on Christmas or Easter. And I'm I'm now mobile, so I'm so thinking about the record. So I understand this correctly, because I'm not the most spiritual of, of yep. people you'll find. That's where you turn around and you say, peace be with yep. you, also with you. Yep. Shake hands with somebody. Yeah, you shake the hands with the people around you. Christmas and Easter, it's packed, and the peace be with can take a while. And so, you know, I, I, I was like, I'm going for the record, because I'm mobile today. I'm getting some fun out of this. I didn't get very far. Because one of the guys that ended up at our seats kind of saw the whole thing play out and turned to me and said, hey, what just happened there? Did we take your seats? And I said, no, 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 no. You didn't take our seats. Um, we vacated was, our seats. And then the peace be was to wrap it up. I had no shot at the record. So I go back to sit down or to stand. No shot at the record. <laughs> I go back to stand and... Um, Near the end of mass, when there was like the announcements going on, I walked up and I explained to him what happened, and he just started to giggle because it's funny. Yeah, do you get credit for the peace be with if you make eye contact with somebody and kind of do the finger gun like, "Hey man, peace be with you." Or you give the peace sign. Yeah. That's that was a big thing during COVID. Um, 
but no, I don't think I don't. It doesn't. You can't. Right now, no, because no, you could. It'd be easy to top seventeen that way. Yeah, but. you can nod your way down an aisle, entire aisle. Yep, like, that's right. So this thing fires up like right away. The first one's done. The second crew loads in, and like, how much time is there between the two different services? You no, know, there's eight thirty and ten, typically an hour, but it runs long because of it being Easter. So it was. It was. I think the eight thirty mass ran about ten minutes over. Now there's ten and noon, so we had an hour between, and ours let out. I got a text from my dad saying. Let me know when it's a five minute warning. So, <laughs> <laughs> was there a lot of Purdue fans? Is that why they're taking over the churches this weekend? Or? No, could they could have been. They wanted to get yeah, get their early. No, and it's any Catholics, right? They come out for Christmas and Easter. Mm. So, okay. do Cause... you think there one day with guys will there be like an app where you got to lock down your seats beforehand or something? I mean, the church has got to go with the times. So. <laughs> it's a good idea. <laughs> I like it. We used to have to get to the church so early. Because just it was the same situation, uh, just earlier and earlier, where it came to the point where we have to get there like an hour and a half early mm-hmm. to get any seat, dude. Uh, and then we're like, what do we do for an hour and a half? You know, we end up playing like hangman. Yeah, <laughs> like is this appropriate in a church? Sure it is. Hangman. Well, it's a spelling game. It's hey, if you you, you sat through the mass, you get credit for it. You, you got should. credit. Yeah, better get credit. You got for credit. It. I was here. All right, uh, let's get back to the Tigers. What did we like most over the weekend? There's a lot to like. We'll get to that today at 1235. Champ and Chump, get your votes in. Carson Anderson, 97 won the ticket.
one thing to add to the story is when I gave Papa the five-minute warning post-Easter Mass, and I was going to walk my mom to the designated meeting point, mm-hmm. uh, the, my wife and kids went and got our car. And my son was driving, the oldest, and my wife thought he was going the wrong direction to pick me up. And my son said, <clears throat> look, lady, you're two for 14. I'll handle this. Wow. <laughs> Meaning she turned 14 saved seats at church into two, just like that. Right, it's one for seven. Yeah. Well. It helps. But yes, it's the same thing. Yes. That is funny. Yes, it is. Uh, we laugh about it now. In the moment, there was a degree of frustration. Nostril breathing. Okay, so... Not frustrating. The Tigers weekend. 3 and 0 Tiger fans. 3 and 0 the first time in franchise history that the Tiger team has opened with three consecutive one-run victories first team since Arizona to do it in 2012 all that courtesy of Elias Sports. Um let's go through these games over the weekend. Maeda not great on Saturday, but a lot was pretty damn good. Parker Meadows who isn't off to a great start at the plate. He has one hit, but it was a triple, scored a run on the first, made that great catch on the wall. In that game on Saturday, I'm not sure if it would have got over, but it was still a fine running catch, as our guy Dan, uh, Double D Dan Dickerson says. Mark Canna had a home run. He had a huge RBI um, as well. Alex Lang comes into the game. It was 6-6. He walks the bases loaded. And here comes maybe the best part of the weekend. There's one out. Will Vest comes in, inherits one out, bases loaded, and coaxes a ground ball to third. And McKinstry behind third who's not considered their best defensive third baseman, fields it, takes two steps, maybe three steps, transfers the ball from glove to throwing hand before he gets to the bag, touches the bag, and let's say throw an absolute seed across the infield go in the dirt. Great scoop by Torque to get a 5-3 double play, end the threat, keep the game tied at six. This is an example of timely Great defense helping you win. They're not perfect by any stretch of the imagination defensively over the weekend, but that was an awesome play. Then in a lot of ways saved the game, a game they eventually won in extra innings. What a moment that was. It was. And and there were there were moments all weekend long that you had you had you thinking, maybe just maybe this team is uh better than we thought they were gonna be. Um is this a, a better than average baseball team? Can they be better than five hundred? I think I think they can. Well, and People are going to want to poo-poo the, the, the start of the season because it's Chicago, and Chicago is not very good. But like we said earlier, you can't get off to a good start in the season unless you get off to a good start. <laughs> so you have to beat this team, all right? You're, we're not thumping our chest about it. Um, the pitching that you got in game one and game three, the starting pitching was awfully good, and it's a really good sign if, if you know Jack Flaherty did what he did in the spring and the last couple uh, starts in the spring he was really good. That was that was Sunday's game we'll get to that in a minute but also on Saturday Shelby Miller two great innings and how about the use of Carson Kelly who comes up with that single up the middle in the 10th to give the Tigers a 7-6 lead. Carson Kelly's one of those signings that I'm sure excited a scintilla of a percentage of our audience but he helped them win that game Saturday with a huge pinch hit moment which is good use by A.J. Hinch. All the bullpen calls he made, I mean, the one that didn't work, Vest got him out of that mess. Vest got him out of that mess. So all good on Saturday. And then on Sunday, you mentioned Flaherty. I'm skeptical, okay? Very skeptical. Reason to be. But I'm also, this is one I would be ecstatic to be wrong about. I mean, I'm I'm not so desperate to be right about something that, that I would be mad if, if Flaherty is actually good. Long way to go to proving that, but he was good on Sunday. Yeah, he was very good on Sunday, and somehow the mid-90s fastball can be overpowering. Well, it is if you can locate it, and if, if it's got movement, which looks like it's he's got right now, and it's it's a good start. It's one start, but it's one in the plus column. And as long as you have more of those than not, you're gonna be you're gonna be fine. They they didn't throw a ton of money at at either of these uh, free agent starters with Maeda being the other one, but they threw enough that makes you say oh, they, gotta, they, gotta, they gotta get something out of it. Particularly when you send Matt Manning down out of spring training. Yep. 
And Matt Manning goes out and pitches, I think, five and a third and gave up a run at Toledo in his first start. He looked very good. So I go back to something Bobby Scales said yesterday. I was driving in the car heading home and uh, or getting to my brother's house uh, for Easter, and, and I heard Bobby Scales say on the broadcast because they were talking about Matt Manning getting sent down. He says, you can get bitter or you can get better. I'm like, that's a good way to put it. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it's not the first time people have heard that, but it's the first time that I remember hearing it. Bobby Scales knows from his career. Yes, and Matt Manning's going to try to make the most of it. Uh, Ryan Kreidler is going to have to try to do the same thing, and he didn't get off to a great start in the minors so far, but it's you know six at bat. It's a big deal. But this team needs to hit on the guys that they're bringing in to the fold, right? This is a big thing. This is big for everybody. It's big for Scott Harris. It's big for the Tigers. It's big for A.J. Hinch, you know, because I assume that A.J. Hinch and Scott Harris are talking about players they're going to bring to the fold. So when you bring in a Maeda and a Jack Flaherty and you bring in Shelby Miller and you go and bring back Andrew Chafin, who takes a year off from the Tigers, but you're going to bring him back, you better get it right. And so far, most of those guys have gotten right. When you bring in Mark Canna and you're going to rely on Carson Kelly to be the other catcher, uh, Gio Urshela, these are moves that you want to pay off. And and so far, they've paid off, albeit in a very, you know, measured way. It's the Chicago White Sox. Let's see how they do the rest of the week. But these are the games where you have to take advantage of. And last year, the Tigers, once they got out of the first month of the season, were a better than 500 baseball team. And they were a team that owned their own division. Good start here, owning the division with a 3-0 start. Well, and then the, the the calls in the bullpen yesterday. Chafin gave up the bomb and a walk, but, I mean, you don't expect perfection. But then for the second time, he put in somebody to throw. the A.J. Hinch put in somebody to take on the eighth inning in, in Holton, and he kept them out there for the ninth. So that's twice in the first three games that he didn't follow the script. This is my eighth inning guy. This is my ninth inning guy. He pitched Chafin to the extra batter into the ninth on opening day, and he pitched Tyler Holton into the ninth for an extra batter in game three. And, um, yeah, exactly. It, it worked. They both worked, worked to perfection. The bullpen usage has been great. Now, other things that worked out, Gio Urshela, who was known for his glove, made a great play behind third base yesterday. Um, that was huge. Kerry Carpenter and Jake Rogers hit solo homers. Andy Abanez with a pinch hit. In the, in the top of the ninth inning, it comes through with an RBI. That's a always stay ready so you don't have to get ready kind of moment. And awesome. But the bullpen, 12 and two-thirds, four hits, 105 batting average against, .67 walks and hits per innings pitch. Yeah, and the, the pitching staff as a whole, their ERA is is off to a great start. It's below well below three, and the whip is well below one. Those are great numbers to have. I think it's a 29 to eight. I'm sorry, 29 to 5 strikeout to, to walk ratio. That's huge. They're not giving the extra, the, they're not giving the free pass away. And that's important. Now, there's some stuff that has to get better. There's a series with the Mets and there's opening day all coming up. We'll get to some of that today at 1247. Red Wing Talk at 105. It's Carson Anderson, 97 won the ticket. Sports calendars loaded, and FanDuel is making it even more exciting to get in on the action because right now new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. Any winning $5 bet. So let's make that $5 deposit and find a heavy favorite, bet them on the money line, bam, we get 200 bucks to use on the tourney, MLB, NBA, NHL, and so much more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Doug and make your first bet a big win. That's FanDuel.com slash Doug. FanDuel is America's number one sportsbook. Must be 21 or older and present in Michigan. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problems? Call 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help.
Doug Carr, Scott Anderson, 97 won the ticket. All right, here's some stuff that perhaps is encouraging. Tigers in New York to take on the Mets. The Mets are kind of an NL version of the Tigers. Uh, last year, Detroit won 78 games, have an over-under this year of 80 and a half, so two and a half games more. The Mets last year won 75 games. They have an over-under of 82 and a half. They're expected to be improved, but they're kind of like Detroit. Kind of considered a bit of a middle-of-the-pack team. The encouraging thing is Tigers over-under total. You look at both the Gribe and the Royals, who are behind Detroit in the American League Central, along with the White Sox. They're expected to win fewer games than the Tigers. So can they feast enough on these teams that they will play more than anybody else and then hold their own against Minnesota? Like that that Minnesota series, which is coming up in a couple of weeks, where they'll play seven games against Minnesota in a 10-game stretch. The other series, I think, is against Texas. Like that's the real barometer. Like that's the one where you go, okay, how serious are these guys? How much does it matter that they're going to be hanging around in this thing? Well, it might matter a lot. Um, so that's just something to pay attention to is that, you know, for the skeptics or the people that, that don't want to get themselves excited that are taking a, um, a wait and see approach, you don't have to go wait and see if they have success there. That'll be, that'll be a, a, a true sign. Now I'm not going to downplay sweeping the white Sox because they didn't do enough of this kind of stuff last year Last year, or early in the year, they were a disaster. And the the eight games under, averaging eight games under the first three years under A.J. Hinch, yeah, yeah, winning the first three matters. And if they can go to New York, and they got Reese Olsen pitching tonight, one of the more exciting young pitchers, pitchers they have in this organization, his stuff looks absolutely filthy. So he'll parade out there with his rosy red cheeks and mow down the Mets tonight. We'll see how effective he is. But, Gator, when we get to Friday... It won't be 90% party, 10% baseball. It might be 50% party, 50% baseball. <laughs> it might be an even split. Mm-hmm. It's supposed to be nice on Friday weather-wise, so that 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 will help. But uh, the way the team is playing will help more than anything else. And they got up to the great start in Chicago. Pick it up. Continue on here against the Mets. And I think we're all going to be very excited about this uh, if, if that happens. Well, as it stands right now, there's reason to be stoked in the early going here because, hell, why not? Um, I mean, so what? what Are are we worried they're going to let us down? Well, that's par for the course. Lean into this, people. Now, what needs to get better? Torque went 3 for 13 on the weekend. Bias, 2 for 13. Riley Green, 1 for 12. Colt Keith, 1 for 11. Parker Meadows, 1 for 10. Jake Rogers, 1 for 7. Not ideal. Scored 3.67 runs a game, which honestly, when you read those stats off, you kind of wonder how they even scored that much. Um, But the 11 runs was good for three wins. Starting pitching was really good. Bullpen was good. And it felt like outside of Joey Wentz, everybody that could play played, except for Reese Olsen and Casey Mize will be the next two starters. And it felt like outside of Wentz, who didn't play, and Maeda, who struggled, and, and Lang, who struggled, A.J. Hinch was able to get a lot out of this roster. 1 to 24, I won't say 25 because Wentz wasn't selected. I guess it was more like 1 to 20, 21. Um, but the bullpen and the guys he brought off the bench got it done. That they did. That they did. And something else I liked uh, over the weekend, I was watching you know, intently with Colt Keith with every at-bat that he had. He doesn't look like he's outmatched. Now, he's not off to a great start, but it's not like he's swinging and missing at everything. It looks like he's up there in the batter's box with a plan, wants to see some pitches, willing to take. He's got a good eye at the plate, but when he's made contact, it's been, you know, soft contact at this point, but it's going to change. But as long as he keeps the right approach, we're going to be okay with it. it. It doesn't feel like this is somebody who doesn't belong at this level. Also, let me ask you this. Sure. Was it weird for you watching Flaherty pitch yesterday wearing the single digit number yep. as a pitcher? Shelby Miller, too. <laughs> I don't get it. So, I don't think it was ever a rule in baseball. I don't think it's a rule either. It's just it's just but weird nobody did it, it so infrequently. And Blake Snell did it last year, and the other thing looks terrible are the tiny little letters on the back of the jerseys. The jersey looks awful. They it, they they totally messed this up. 
I'm, I'm, I'm a Jersey guy. I like jerseys. I would buy a jersey. I'm not buying this jersey. It's terrible. This seriously looks like the gas station knockoff jersey <laughs> or one that you realize it's, you bought a jersey and it's getting shipped from China. And yeah, that was way too cheap. I should have known better. Got to pay for quality. It's what ruined the weekend for me. I'm not ruined it, but if I had to say one thing that bothered me, it wasn't the celebration for the home runs. It wasn't the you know the offense not quite being there or the pitching you know, Maeda or anything. It was the freaking jerseys, man. And that's not a Tiger issue. That's an MLB issue. They look they look rinky dink. They're tiny little letters and tiny numbers. Why? I don't know. The quality looks worse. It's really odd. Really odd. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. Mondays mean champ and chump. Get your votes in. Tiger fans, what did you like most that you saw this weekend? What did you like most out of what you saw this weekend? Let's get back to your open line calls. Marcus is in oh, Ann Arbor, and he's next. Hi, Marcus. Hey, Mark. Or uh, hey, uh, Tug, sorry, guy. Been a long day. Just got off of lunch, uh, so sorry if I'm late to the show. It's all right. uh, thanks for having me on. Sure. Um, so it's, so it's not Tigers delayed. It's actually a little bit about the Frozen Four last night that I want to touch up, uh, touch up on with Michigan's uh, game against Michigan State. And I know there's a whole lot of talk about who the better team was in that matchup and if the better team lost and the better team won. I, I don't see it like that. I Honestly, all season long, Michigan State was outstanding. I think they have one of the best seasons in college hockey they've had since probably the Ron Mason era. Honestly, you've got to go back that far to the prominence that I mean, they Conley had. Conley did win a national championship in there. <laughs> Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, they, absolutely. So, I mean, he, I mean, in 2007 with Connolly, I mean, obviously he had his falling out in the later years. But what I saw last night in that game was I didn't see a better team lose. I saw a hungrier team win. And I think in that third period, Michigan knew that the odds of going to overtime and a pull out of victory were probably pretty slim because if you go back to the last overtime matchup versus Michigan State, they lost in the, uh, in the Big Ten championship in the tournament. So when you have that kind of mentality, you think to yourself, I don't want to risk putting myself in a position where I'm going to die by sudden death. I'm going to win the third period, and I'm going to put this game away right now. And that's what Michigan did. I thought overall they skated faster in the third period. I thought Michigan State didn't have a four-check presence at all. That first and second period, State, State dictated the pace. I mean, they went two for three on the power play. They did everything right on special teams. They shut Michigan's power play down 0-5. to impressive. Shut the number one in pre- special teams – unit in college hockey to an 0 and 5 is insane. Usually you win. Usually you win those games. But what it really showed was how resilient and how many weapons Michigan had on their side and uh, by being able to outscore your opponent at even strength in that third period 4 to 1. I know one of those last well, goals was a power play goal, but I mean it well, really the, I, I think in- it, it showed and there's when I watched when I watched Michigan State play hockey this year in in the tournament specifically it seemed like a lot of their goals came by way of shots from the point that would, or, or shots from the defense that would just find their way through because they did a great job of screening the goaltender. Uh, and if a rebound came out, they were there to, to, to bang it home. What I saw from Michigan, they're like set plays or guys making individual individual efforts that just made a difference. It was a Dylan Dukes. Is that his name? Dylan Duke had a, a, an the, amazing goal. The and, first goal was incredible. I mean, it's just speed shot out of a cannon, just blows right past these guys, past the Spartans and cuts in front of the net and did it in a way where he's able to to maintain maintain control and, and then scored. Gator, I mean, you sent me a text. Google search Frank Nazar pass, N-A-Z-A-R pass. It's worth it. Best pass I've ever seen. Yeah, it, it was incredible. And so I got a belief here, Gator, specifically with college sports. If two teams play each other and it's extraordinarily close, and then they're playing a rematch. I think the team that lost the first game has a bit of a psychological edge. Not because they think they're going to win, because they think they're going to lose. And if you're a, if you're an athlete, I feel like that team that lost the close game is plays with more desperation. I mean, because let's face it, Michigan and Michigan State have played some very good hockey games against one another this year. State got the better of Michigan for the five games. There was two kind of blowouts mixed in, but the last one came, Big Ten title game, it Mun, you know, a week ago Saturday, Spartans won in overtime. I think the team that loses that one is got a little bit of an edge because 
they lost because they know they did what they did wasn't good enough. And and I think they play with a little bit more desperation. Yeah, I mean, Michigan won. Congratulations to them. They're back in the uh, Frozen Four for the 28th time, which is unbelievable. The the thing that bummed me out, I, I said, being a Spartan, I don't want to lose to Michigan. But to have both teams in the same region, it bothered me. Yeah. Because it, it seems like we'd go out of our way to make sure that doesn't happen in the NCAA tournament, right? That you wouldn't have the two best teams in the Big Ten in the same region. They don't want to do that. Why would they do that in hockey? I think the entire postseason in college hockey needs to be redone, including getting it off the same schedule as March Madness. My guess is that they probably want players to be eligible to go to the NHL. Like, guys, when they lose, they go straight to NHL teams, and some of them start playing right away. Yeah. So there's probably some want to keep that in play, but I think for the betterment of the game, there's a lot that could change about college hockey. But and do you need to have a conference uh, tournament? No. If you got rid of a conference tournament and added best of three series for a few rounds of the, t- I mean, it- and the conference tournament is so dumb because the first round is best of three, mm-hmm. and then and the- once you get past the best of three, now it's Sutton, now it's you know elimination. But I've been saying this for years. And not enough people care. Yeah. <laughs> Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. Speaking of hockey, Red Wings. Hmm. What to make of that loss at Florida? We'll get to that today at one hundred five. And the Lions have a decision to make. We will talk about at one twenty here on Carson Anderson ninety seven one the ticket. Jake Wallman is back in the lineup for the Red Wings after missing the last six games with a lower body injury. Olimata will sit out this game as the team takes on Tampa Bay in Florida. Tampa sitting comfortably in the first wildcard spot with 89 points. 
Uh, the Wings are sitting two points out, trailing the Flyers now. You can hear the game on WWJ beginning at 645. The Tigers start their second series of the year against the Mets on the road tonight. Reese Olsen set to make his first start for Detroit after a strong spring won him an unguaranteed rotation spot this year. The Mets are off to their worst start in the last 10 seasons, having lost their first three games to the Brewers. Here's our shortstop Francisco Lindor on the Rocky beginning. Temperature expected to be right around 50 degrees, not bad by first pitch in New York. That's set for 710. You can hear it right here on 97.1. Pistons also set to face the injury hobbled Grizzlies tonight. Kate Cunningham is questionable with his left knee still bothering him. Marcus Sasser is being hampered by an illness. He's questionable as well. Mark Champion's call can be heard on Alt 98.7 beginning at 635. At the Corwell Health Update Desk, I'm Jeremy Otto. For more, go to 97.1 The Ticket or odyssey.com. Jeremy, before you get out of here. Yes. Technically, were you an intern for Dan Dickerson or the Tigers? I was an intern for the Tigers, yes. I was their broadcast intern in 18. Okay. Uh, that's where I first heard about you. Yeah. And you you spent a lot of time with Dan, right? I did, yes. How, how happy are you for him, knowing what a great guy he is, to have yeah. a, maybe a, a less than boring baseball team? Oh, my year. goodness. I mean, it, it's got to be, you know, as a play-by-play guy myself, I know you, this, you know this as well. I mean... It's going to be refreshing to know that the rotation is going to be strong as long as they still stay healthy. And, you know, the, just so many of these guys who've been waiting on for so long are, are up and in there. So it's fun. How it happy is. are he's having his own bobblehead day? <laughs> you know, I haven't talked to him much about that, but I, I got to make their, make it down there for that. That's that's pretty cool, isn't it? April 27th. You know, you've made it when you have your own bobblehead. Without question. <laughs> Without Does question. it speak? I don't remember. I don't, I don't think it speaks. I I did see it. They brought one out to us last week to, to see, but I... Didn't have a chance to hold it in my hand no. to see what, what it does. That's yeah. uh, that's draft weekend. Oh, is that right? Same that's draft week. Yeah, the twenty seventh of April. Okay, yeah, draft sure. is what twenty. Busy week. Oh, could be fun. All right, all right, guys. Yep. yep. Have a good show. Happy, Thank you. happy as hell for Dan and for us. <laughs> Just to have one weekend, man. I know it's one weekend. We're all aware. We don't need the disclaimers. But be north of boring, and maybe carry this thing a little bit. Uh, a little bit into this season. Let's go. 248-539-9797. Phone calls, feedback, Carson Anderson. All right, Red Wings. Um, we haven't really talked about it. They got a point out of Florida yesterday. Red Wings are at Tampa tonight. Um, Philly caved, and and that's helping. They've got six points out of a possible 18 in their last nine games. And the Red Wings are now two points behind Philly for the last wild card spot. But the Red Wings actually have a game in hand on the Flyers. So I don't want to call it a virtual tie, but it can be if the Red Wings start taking care of business. I had this thought that I thought would be unpopular. I went to hockey guy Kenny and just ran it past him. I like the way they played against Florida. Better than what I've seen. And while a loss in a shootout is not optimal, they did grab a point. Points are valuable. And I want to... I'm wondering, can you turn it around in a loss? Can you play better? It's so much better than the 4 nothing loss to Carolina. It's so much better than the disappointing loss at Washington. If, if they can maintain the effort they showed Saturday for some of these opponents coming up, I kind of I kind of hope that Saturday, even though it wasn't the greatest result, could the beginning of it be a beginning of a turnaround? Jake Wallman returns his first game since uh, St. Patrick's Day, so it's been a couple weeks. So that's good to get him back in the lineup. That should help them out. Um, I, I think you know the loss on Saturday just one of these guys shake off. You know, a couple bad goals, not Lions' fault. You know, one goes off the skate blade of, uh, or what was the name of the stick of uh, Mo Sider, and just got to deal with it, right? Mm -hmm. Keep your head down, keep focused, let's go. Because they have played better. They played better, and it, it, there's not much to show for it uh, record-wise. Um, but I think that has to be – I think they have to be reminded of the fact you have played better. You're playing against great teams, and you've played better. All right? 
You, you got eight games left to make something happen. And there's 16 points left on the season. Can you can you get double digits in those point totals? I mean, you're going to need. I mean, it. you just got to get you got to be better than, than Philadelphia. One more than Philly, yeah. and and you know it's kind of shaping up that that might be the race when this is all said and done. It's kind of been a rotating cast of of who you're going head to head against. It feels like there's only a couple teams you're you're even looking at in the standings now. Philadelphia, Washington, and the Islanders. You got the Islanders chasing you. Mm-hmm. You're chasing Philadelphia, and Philadelphia is just falling behind Washington. So I mean, Washington's not way the heck out there. But one of those two teams is in, because one of those two teams ends up being the third team and the, the third place in the division. So it's, it's really between Philadelphia, well, whichever team doesn't, and then the Islanders. It's not like Tampa isn't playing for something here. They're a few points behind the Maple Leafs right now, and they're trying to get into that third spot. Um, but they're playing really good hockey. But but I, I if we were doing a show in Tampa and I'm hosting it from a lightning, I'm doing a lightning pregame show, I'm talking about, hey, you need your best effort because we're playing tonight. We, the lightning, <laughs> <laughs> uh, are, playing, are playing a desperate, desperate hockey team that needs these points. And so don't think because they're behind you in the standings that this is that this is a gimme because it's not. Detroit will find out a little bit more about their character, their want to, whatever they've got, whatever they've got right here, right now. Well, they got to match it because every team, it feels like every team in the conference is going to still feel like they got a shot except for Columbus um, and maybe Ottawa. But Penguins have 75 points. The Devils have 76. The Islanders who are behind the wings have 77. Buffalo's got 75. You know, there's, it's it's kind of close to a log jam there with 8, 9, 10 games left, depending on, on which team you're looking at. Mm-hmm. So you, you have to take advantage of this. There's, there's not many games left in the season. You've got to win. And to get one over Tampa would be big. Tampa's 8-1-1 one, and one in their last 10 games. You know, they, yep. they put a lot of distance between themselves and the Wings. It wasn't that long ago the Wings were ahead of them. And now it's 89 points to 80 points. So the other thing about Saturday's game was you're playing a team that could be a first-round opponent, a team of that ilk. Remember a month ago when the Red Wings got smoked by them at home 4 to nothing? Yeah. It was the beginning of the unraveling. And that's when Larkin got hurt. If that was a regular – like that was a playoff game – They'd go to regular old overtime, sudden death. It wasn't uh, no three on three, no shootout. I thought the Red Wings skated well with Florida, and there isn't always this element of ah, uh, even if you get like there was a just get in, and then that became a little bit well, even if you just get in, you're going to get smoked. I mean, eventually they lost the game in a format that won't be used in the postseason. That was a tie hockey game with one of the best teams in the conference. So. I know that's a we are we are kind of predispositioned, Gator and I, to think about how it can work out. I don't know, man. This doesn't feel like a stretch to me. This doesn't feel like a stretch to me. That this team very well I they played better. It's too early to say it's the turning of the corner, but if they have a good week here, I'm gonna I'm gonna circle back to that Florida game. Well, the games they have the rest of the way. Tampa tonight. Tampa's playing good hockey, right? Then they play. Then they go Friday. They return home finally uh, for the first of three three home games. But they're home against the Rangers, one of the class teams in the uh, in the conference. Mm-hmm. Then it's Buffalo, Washington, Pittsburgh, Toronto, and then back to back against Montreal. So Toronto's a, a a decent hockey team. New York, really good hockey team. Tampa's playing well. And, I mean, technically, Washington's playing. Obviously, they're playing better than the White Wings are, but that's a huge game when you look at that one at LCA on Tuesday, October 9th. Next Tuesday, it's a massive game against a team that's uh, that you're kind of chasing here. So they've got winnable games to finish up the season here in the last eight. They're not all set up that way, but it's like six of the eight. feel pretty confident they're going to have a chance, a real chance. 248-539-9797. Phone calls, feedback, Carson Anderson, Red Wing fans. The floor is yours if you want to talk about your team, what they're up against, stretch run. They just haven't played the same for weeks now. But I don't think it's impossible that they can't that they can pull out of the swoon. I really don't. 
and I'm not going all April Fools on you, I wouldn't be shocked well, if, if they start to play better in these in these final eight games. This isn't they've been so bad that's not who they are. I'm excited to see Wallman come back. I like what I've seen from Edvinson. He's not trying to do too much. You know, he he makes if he makes a mistake, he doesn't dwell on it. He makes up for it and doesn't compound the problem at all by, you know, letting the guy who ju- who he just turned a puck over to beat him the next time. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. The Lions have an interesting decision to make. We will get to that today at one twenty. And can events over the weekend impact the Lions draft? That at one thirty one here on ninety seven one. The ticket.
What won't he click on? I sent Gator an email. Yeah, I, I'm not buying it. I'm not, not buying, buying what? It. It's it's the, the, titled "Cute Puppies." The title is is "Cute Puppies," and then it's a link to you love dogs. Some, I I do love dogs. I love most animals. Um, I sent it to you too, Doug. I just I just know better. I know better than than to click on something. Forward like cute puppies. All right, I will click on it. What do we got here? Da, 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 da. All right, it's video. It's not an injury. No, it's not an injury. <laughs> Gator, you Gator, want? It's funny. Yeah, Come it's on. funny. Will right. you click on it? Ha ha ha! Oh, sweet. So, what are you? What are you watching? Let me hit pause on this so I can imagine you discovering these rattlesnakes in your backyard. <laughs> what would you do? Nope. Unpause. Yeah, yeah, unpausing. See, like a high low picking up what appears to be a tool shed. Yeah, a shed. And nope. <laughs> and underneath the oh shed. Oh my god! <laughs> underneath the shed, there's what fifty rattlesnakes. <laughs> Jesus, man! Oh my god! Is this, a, this is nightmare fuel, right? Well, I don't feel good right now. <laughs> Try to sleep tonight. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> You know, Gator's backyard, you've got a structure back there. Yeah. Have you ever looked under it? Mm-hmm. You can't get underneath the structure. So you think. Well, it's a concrete slab. <laughs> Lift it up. Yeah, find pretty, out. Look pretty underneath. hard to get underneath there. Go get a high-low. Get a high-low. Yeah. Cute puppies. Cute <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm not looking at this. Yeah, He's like, it's not an injury. It's puppies. I'm like, it's not puppies. I said, it's probably snakes or spiders or something. Like, I have a different name for snakes than, than you, <laughs> I guess. Whatever. Like, just look at it. <laughs> Jerk. So um, that that's disturbing. That's very disturbing. Yep. Makes you think, like, what's underneath anything? Oh. <laughs> right? well, 100%. Right. <laughs> yeah. But, like, I am not – well, this is – Obviously, indigenous to some, you have to be somewhere warm. Probably or Florida or, or something. Snakes. Yeah, yeah. It's a Florida or, you know, Arizona, Texas, California, something like that, right? Every single household in Australia. Yep. Well, not with a rattlesnake, but yes. With a snake. With snakes. Snakes. Yeah. Watch out for this one, mate. <laughs> God, this is it's crazy. great. Look at the size of that spider. Yeah, well, nothing to do with that. Yep. I was watching an episode of... Uh, Oh, this is going to be rich. Fix it a fabulous. They're out. Uh, the, the, the Dave and Jenny Mars are fixing up some uh, some two hundred year old home in Italy. Italy was the last place I would expect this. But he was like he was picking up this uh, beam that was resting on the ground, and they were going to you know use it for something in the house. Picks it up and he goes, "Hey!" And there was a scorpion. There were uh, several scorpions that were there. Like what? Did not know scorpions were living in uh, in Italy. Ah, uh, yes, the highly disturbing scorpion. Oh, you wouldn't be freaked out if you saw a scorpion. Oh no, I would be. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm. I'm. It's said with great sincerity. The highly disturbing scorpion. But, um, yeah, better better scorpion than snake. But okay, uh, lions. Brock Wright. This is kind of out of left field. Um. Didn't expect I'm I'm and I wonder if the Lions expected a restricted free agent who they gave the league mandated tender to, which was a one year two point eight five million. But being a restricted free agent, he could go out and he could uh, he could seek out his own contract and with somebody else, and then the Lions have the right of first refusal. Well, now they got a decision to make because the San Francisco 49ers offered him a three year twelve million dollar deal. Now it sounds like of the it's only six million guaranteed, but it's a commitment for a longer pe- period of time than the Lions offered Brock Wright. So what are we talking about here? Are we talking about a a guy that you just let walk? He's a he's a valuable role player. We all know this. We we in fact we probably know it more than most. In Detroit, I think we elevate the role player quicker and to a higher status than most most towns. But I'm talking about the fans. I'm not talking about the teams. Still, Gator, Brock Wright, 
who had 14 targets last year and 13 catches. He's now, the Lions have five days to match, which I don't know when they offer one out. It was over the weekend at some point. Um, They got a decision to make, whether they want to match this offer with Brock Wright. And you go, okay, what's the difference of a few million? It's not a few million just this year. It's several million next year. And next year is probably where they're eyeing cap challenges more so than this year. Are they willing to make that kind of commitment? It's an interesting question. It, it is. And I, yeah, I think he's a very valuable role player on this team as a backup tight end and someone who's a special teams guy and somebody who comes in and, and the two tight end sets. I think he helps with the run game. Um, and it feels like he comes up with a couple of monster plays every each each year he's been with the Wings. Or with the Wings. With the, with the Lions. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it was interesting because... I started to think of role players that and we value them very highly, but we don't want to overvalue the role player. San Francisco has got a role player, right? They already have. Oh, use use check, check right? Yep. Kyle use check the fullback, who's you know Pro Bowl fullback every year. And he, uh, I always find him to be interesting, right? He carried the ball last year five times for six yards, right? No touchdowns. He's an unsung hero, but they sing his praises pretty much. In 17 games, he caught 14 passes for a couple of touchdowns. Like, they they already have that guy. They're bringing in another guy who does the exact same thing in Brock Wright. Should we hang on to our Brock Wright? It's really intriguing that I don't know if there's going to be, like, but, the, the I mean, from a football perspective, the two best teams in the NFC are haggling over a blocking primarily blocking tight end right now does that tell you how good this guy actually is or is that is that it does it mean anything more than that i mean these are two good teams that both want brock Wright. huh (laughs) it's not like it's carolina and the bears haggling over him it's detroit and san francisco i think the lions want brock Wright. that's why they tendered him the offer my question is, how much do they really want Brock Wright? Because otherwise, they would have offered him a three-year deal worth maybe $10 million and he would have took it, right? Instead, they, they put the tendered offer out there and let the market decide what Brock Wright is worth. The market said, which was the Niners, said three years, $12 million. Um, Now, it's the question is, like I said, I go back to the lines. How much is he worth to you? Personally, I like Brock Wright. I don't think there's a, you, I don't think you can find a Lions fan that doesn't like Brock Wright. Right. He blocks well. He catches the ball almost every time it's thrown to him, even though it's what fourteen targets, thirteen catches. Right. But he catches it right, so he doesn't mess up. He does his job. He does it well. Goes home. But he's a backup blocking tight end. So for this price, I personally would move on and save that money for maybe a Quandre Diggs or whoever. And I think everything they do contractually right now is, um, like he says, intentional. St. Brown's got a contract extension coming up. Jared Goff has a contract extension coming up. Uh, Ali McNeil has a contract extension coming up. Taylor Decker's on his last year's deal. So I feel like maybe it's the fact that they just want to commit much more long-term to him than just this upcoming year. I find it interesting that they haven't committed anything to those guys either. Like, they're still unsigned. You know, I mean, what well, obviously they're, they're contractually obligated for this upcoming season. They're but signed they wanted, but not extended. Yeah, they haven't been extended yet. Um, Brock Wright in the three seasons with the Lions. Played in 41 games, has 43 receptions on 55 targets yeah. throughout his career. I mean, he's been the guy in seven touchdowns. So every six times the guy the guy catches the ball, it's for a touchdown. He had some big catches. He had a fourth down conversion. I thought it was the Denver game. But he had a 29-yarder against Tampa. Um, he had that, a 36-yarder his first year with the Lions, a 51-yarder in 2022. That was the Jets touchdown, right? Yeah, and then this past year, his largest play was a 25-yard game. Is that the – do you have a big one against the Chargers? I mean, there was one in the postseason, which was more. But, um, yeah, I mean, it just feels like he's this, this kind of under-the-radar guy that gets broken out at strategic times. They go to him. Well, that's the thing. You're number one without question is Sam Laporta, and it's like not even close, right? No, like not, not even close. So it's not like they split time or it's even 70-30 as far as you know receiving targets and things like that. It's Sam Laporta. At this point, I think you trust your developmental with with James Mitchell, maybe Zilstra. You go grab a, maybe a veteran. You definitely go draft one, I think, for depth on, uh, on the tight, in the tight end room. But 
Yeah, I think you just got to move on. I think if the Niners want him that bad, take him. Well, um, they've got a decision to make, and <laughs> uh, it tells you a lot about their cap situation. I think next year, if they decide they don't want to match this off, two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. All right, events over the weekend could impact the draft and might impact the Lions. We will get to that today at one thirty one here on Carson Anderson, ninety seven one. Champ and Chump, last half hour to get your votes in for Champ and Chump of the Weekend. Who should be singled out for having the best weekend? Who should be called out for having a weekend that stinks? Some Brock Wright feedback coming in as well. Tyler at work says, Brock Wright is essentially a part of the offensive line, which is this team's strength. 
If Mitchell is the future, so be it. I trust Holmes. Brock isn't asked to be a big play guy, yet he's an unspoken part of big plays. People saying draft the tight end again are being ridiculous. There's a reason San Fran wants him. Rich says, Wright is a better blocker for our awesome running game. Really want to disrupt that part of our offense? Sign him. Uh, Brock Wright has shown that he can make big plays every now and again, can run block, and it just seems like a Dan Campbell kind of guy. We have the money this year. We have the money next year and the year after. Pay him. That's from Luke and Clarkston. I'm not sure that the money next year and the year after isn't spoken for, for more important players. And, it, and you go, okay, what would Brock Wright's $4 million or $5 million matter? Well, it might cost you, I mean, I don't know what other player to think of. I can go back and look. But this might come down, would you rather have Brock Wright or Fatou Malafamu? Would you rather have Brock Wright or Kirby Joseph? Like these, these are be if these going are, to that draft class. Yeah, you start talking about what it could cost you down the road. I just pull those names out of thin air. I don't know that they'll line up, but but that's a, that's the it's the good and the bad, right? That's that's what's really kind of cool about the what what Brad Holmes has drafted is that you have to start thinking about that. Obviously, you always look at the the first round picks. Oh, it's we got the fifth year. It's great, but everybody outside of that, it's a four year deal. You have to make those decisions earlier. All right, so Monday's main champ and chump. My chump of the weekend was the people that have worked up about the Tigers home run celebration. Yeah. To me, is much ado about nothing. But I considered two other things. One was the people responsible for the court fiasco in the women's tournament, which which is the three-point lines not being equal. One was too close for their regional final, regional semifinals and final in Portland, which was your chump. That was my chump. The other was Rashi Rice, the wide receiver from the Kansas City Chiefs uh in a street race on a freeway in Dallas an accident that was caught on dash cams was a Lamborghini and a Corvette six cars involved in what looks like a very fortunate thing that only one person was hurt I want to start with this this is a guy who one year into his career has 3.5 million guaranteed and a contract that can pay him up to twice that much. I know at one point I was young and I know at one point I made dumb decisions, but I don't know about a $3.5 million risk. And, and quite frankly, your career or maybe even your life when you are speeding on streets speeding on public roads. And I, it's it's dumb. We all know that. An incredibly ridiculous decision. And it might be worse than that when there's talk about what might have been in the car. So I guess we'll see. But Gator, um, really, really bad. Now, the, the, the draft is coming up, and we can talk about how this impacts us because it might. Kansas City might be in the market for a free agent receiver. The, the receiving core was a weakness last year. They did address it in free agency. Um, but at the end of the day here, if, they, if they're thinking wide receiver, the Lions might be thinking wide receiver. That's going to be interesting because they're right behind the Lions. Will they be compelled to move up ahead of the Lions? Could the Lions actually move back a few spots with Kansas City? Well, I guess it's interesting because it depends on what happens here. Um, yep. I don't know if this is going to be something that prevents him from starting the season. May or may not. Uh, but it's a, it's a bad look, nonetheless, for well, Rasheed Rice. Correct me if I'm wrong. He's still wanted. He left the scene, and the police said they're looking for him. If that's the case, this could be a Cam Sutton situation where the team says, all right. Well, I mean, it could be. Cam Sutton, domestic violence charges. It's pretty bad too, but I, you know, I, I don't know. We'll see how it plays itself out. But we always wonder if it impacts us. Yeah. This could impact us. And Cam Sutton finally turned himself in. Yep, uh, which is good. Um, yeah, what did it, I mean? The Lions definitely have to be considering a wide receiver in the draft. Mm -hmm. Would they do it at twenty nine? It's quite possible. And you know that Brad Holmes is in tune to what other teams are going to do. He has maneuvered be in the draft because of thoughts of what other teams would do. That's why he's moved up or moved back, but not moved back too far. 
You know, he wanted to make sure he was going to get Jamison Williams. They moved up to get him. He wanted to make sure they're going to draft Jameer Gibbs, but they couldn't drop back too far. They want to make sure they still had it and didn't want him to slip to some other team, so they went back as far as they felt safe about it. Would they do the same thing with a wide receiver? If he values one that high, he would. Yep. I think I think he would because he's shown the he is absolutely unafraid to move up or move back in the first round of the draft and, and throughout the draft. I'll be more shocked if he doesn't move. I will too. <laughs> Honestly, I, 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 I feel pretty strongly he's going to move out of 29. I don't know if he'll move up or move back. Um, there's some really talented players. I don't know if this is a deep draft. You know, it's like deep, deep in certain dra- positions. It's deep in some positions, but I don't know if it's overall that high-end talent is all that deep. 248-539-9797. Let's get back to your open line calls. We got Sean at Oak Park. You're on 971. Hi, Sean. Hey, afternoon, fellas. What's up? Uh, I don't know if it's really been talked about too much regarding the champ. You guys said a little bit of the champ regarding the Tigers fans. Just weren't expecting them to do well, thinking the fans are old, players are overreacting recently. But as far as the champ goes, I got to give it to Jake Bates of the Michigan Panthers. Hitting a 64-yarder, winning it for the Panthers. I guess the Lions are already looking out, maybe seeing if he could be a future for them because Lions need a kicker. So that's just amazing seeing a 64-yarder in Ford Field with the Panthers. <laughs> <laughs> and did it twice, apparently. Yeah. Yep, it was a good, a good moment for him. I guess he didn't hit one. Did he hit one in college at all? And, and, and then he was just a kickoff guy, right? I've never heard of the guy before that, and the he fact was, that 64 is such a rare thing in the NFL, it's happening in the UFL of all things. The guy's going to get himself a big UFL contract guys, in, sorry. hopefully for the Lions. Yeah, I guess he had, he had been at a couple – was it two different schools he was at, but was behind good kickers? Yeah, he only he never attempted a kick yeah. in, in, college. in college. He was just a kickoff specialist. And guess what, guys? Former soccer player. There you go. It's all the rage. Let's do this. It is. <laughs> Well, they do need a kicker, and he has gotten votes for champ of the weekend. Um, the Lions need a kicker, that is. So now, as far as Kansas City and, and and Rice, we'll see how this thing plays out. I don't know that it's going to lead to anything changing in terms of them changing their draft approach, but it's something to keep an eye on. And one of the positions that I think is deep is wide receiver. I think that there's the upper crust. I think that second tier. Xavier Leggett, Xavier Worthy, Keon Coleman tier is pretty damn good. And you start getting into them, maybe a Roman Wilson. It's the Lions I have a decision to make. And, and, you know, giving that Josh Reynolds is gone. I suspect they'll sign a veteran and that'll be the, the plan a, because I don't think Brad Holmes likes to have needs come draft time. Well, he's he's as much said it. (laughs) He just wants to take BPA every possible pick that they have. Well, they're very chesty about what they've done in free agency to this point, what they've done in the offseason with the trading for the defensive back Carlton Davis as well. I I still think there's room to, to make improvements on this team prior to the draft. There's a bunch of free agent players that are still out there that look like they're destined for the the one year contract which Brad Holmes has done so so often. Yep. Why not? And and that would help fill other needs that are on this team. 248-539-9797. Get your champion chum votes in. Last chance to do so. Gator, Doug. tonight we've got a Tiger game. Yeah. We've got a sizable Red Wing game. Yeah. We've got the Pistons going for two in a row. Come on! They're favored tonight. And we've got LSU, Iowa, Caitlin Clark versus Angel Reese, rematch of last year's national championship in the back and forth. The fighting Mulkies. And Kim Mulkey. (laughs) Polarizing Kim Mulkey. Do you, will you give any time to the Iowa LSU game? I probably will just to kind of, you know, parachute in a a couple times throughout. Mm -hmm. Um, I doubt it's going to hold my interest. Every time, every time I've tried, this is this is the truth uh, that I've oh, tried God. to watch the uh, the women's tournament. Yep, I've been woefully disappointed by terrible basketball. <laughs> really, every time, and I know it's not always like that. And I know people are telling me, "No, it's good basketball," but every time I I drop in, like here's a horribly missed 
<laughs> long range shot. Here's missing a layup or just just bad basketball in general. And and I can't get past it, but I'm gonna still drop in and, and, and check things out. Kang will Iowa L S U get any screen time from you tonight? I'm gonna try to because of my daughter. Yep. And and honestly, I me too. I do want to see, you know, it, there's a lot of hype around this. This is the matchup everyone wanted. We're gonna get it. Uh, unfortunately, she does have a very early bedtime because of school and things like that. But I feel like this is might be the moment where she uses sports to try to stay up later. This might be the first time where if she says, oh. if I say, do you want to watch this basketball game or go to bed? And she's going to say, well, anything but go to bed, right? Right? Yep. right, of course. So this may, you know, and she's been talking about basketball more and, you know, playing with the hoop inside the house. So we'll see how this goes. But, yeah, it will definitely be turned on. Kang's about to get manipulated. Oh, Again. About to? <laughs> <laughs> When's the coaching decision coming down? <laughs> yeah, any news on that front? Are you not, still uh, trending to be the Watermelon Sharks head coach? I'm not trending anything. I'm waiting this thing out, and we'll see how where this goes. Mm-hmm. You guys, was it one of our listeners that did the AI thing? Yeah. The water, Watermelon Sharks oh logo. God. And, I mean, honestly, I'm bu- if you choose that, one of those logos, I'm buying some gear. I'm getting a T-shirt. <laughs> you get okay, some merch? Let me just run a hypothetical past you. If you end up against your will being the head coach, will you let the kids vote for the name or are you going to say, we are the watermelon sharks? See, I got to let them vote, but I could. I've got an inside with the player, one of the players, right? I yes, could just, man, if she's been manipulating me, right. I could just throw it out there. Hey, you might want to think about watermelon sharks when we vote for this. I'm Is just she, saying. Did you, did you show her the logos? No, I haven't yet. Oh, you got it. Yeah. Uh, so, AI is incredible. It is. It's somebody says, goes to AI and says, "Come up with a logo for watermelon sharks," and we get this logo of a shark with a giant piece of watermelon in its mouth. There's three logos. They came up with yeah. three of them. They're all great. I think I like the second one best. Is the shark that's made out of watermelon coming out of the piece of watermelon? <laughs> These are so good. It's almost a tragedy if someone doesn't use them in professional sports, right? Like I think this- we need to retweet it so that people can see this. Uh, all right, it's Carson Anderson. Last chance to get those votes in for Champ and Chump of the Weekend. 97 won the ticket. Hey, the last thing you ever need are plumbing issues. If you got them, call my friends at CGC Water Treatment and Plumbing. 855-339-4242. CGC will send out one of their plumbers quickly. And if you're tired of running out of hot water, do what we do. Call CGC and have them install a Navian tankless water heater. No more running out of hot water. And we're reducing our energy consumption. We're saving money. Call CGC Water and get 10% off the new Navian tankless water heater from CGC Water Treatment and Plumbing, your authorized independent Connecticut dealer.
Doug Carr, Scott Anderson, 97 won a ticket. 248-539-9797. It has been tweeted from our account. At Doug and Gator 971. AI created logos for Kang's daughter's soccer team that is yet to be renamed or named again the Watermelon Sharks, but could be. Well, the three logos are very di- different. Yeah. I think the second logo is inappropriate for children. <laughs> a little too menacing? A little too menacing. <laughs> I like the first one the best. <laughs> The third one is like a goofy shark, and I love the goofy shark too. That's kind of great. I would imagine that's what the the the, the young kids will pick. Look, but the first one's amazing. No, look at the second one. <laughs> look at the sharpness of the teeth on a cartoon shark. I know. <laughs> and then go to the third one and look how the car- the teeth are kind of just rounded off. Right, it's like Jabberjaw. It's like he's smiling. Well, the third one, he is smiling. The second one is definitely not smiling. The, second, no. the second one is, I'm going to kill you and your yeah. parents. I would the second like- one is, I used to play for Dan Campbell and I bit some kneecaps. I would like to see the second one on like a black shirt with that logo on the front and, they, and your daughter's team takes the field and the kids from the other team just start to cry. <laughs> <laughs> the first, as I'm looking more at the first one, the more I think that's probably inappropriate too. <laughs> it's got a menacing look on the shark's face. Not as many teeth, but it's very sharp. It's got blood red eyes. <laughs> well, it's got the blood red eye, and it's got like smashed watermelon in the background, like it's blood. Whereas then you get the third logo, which is just a goofy shark. Hey, we're a watermelon shark. That's probably the only one that it could possibly be. Yeah, that's the only one that's appropriate. Come on, boys and girls. The we're going to play some soccer. The first one doesn't even have a soccer ball. No. There's... The other two, at least, <laughs> have a soccer ball they threw in there, it looks like, in a little side note. I swallowed it. I'm just holding up to the camera the first one, which looks like, again, a watermelon in the shark's mouth. The second one, would look, which looks dangerous as can be for those <laughs> I mean, the second one is, I think that was, that was used in the Meg. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that thing looks menacing. Great job, Ben, yeah. zooming in. It's actually, the, here's the, the third one. Scary thing with the second one is that the, it's not a watermelon rind there. It's actually, a, it's a honeydew melon rind. It's the blood that makes it red. <laughs> Oh, so anyway, those of you streaming on Twitch or YouTube, you get a good look at them. But I mean, the, the, all right. The more I watch it, the more I like the third one. <laughs> well, have to be the, the third se- one. I want the second one. The third one's. Great. I mean, look at the second one. It looks like there might be flesh coming out of its mouth. I, there I, is, and then yeah. the seeds are even menacing. The third one, the seeds are like, oh look, I'm harmless bubbles, right. like right. you know, like circles. <laughs> Should have gotten a seedless watermelon. Yeah. Oh. Hilarious. The second one's got warrants out for its arrest. <laughs> right. The second one is wanted in 15 states. The second one's going to be cast in, in a three movie. oceans. Yeah. In three oceans. <laughs> oh, that's so great. The anyway. first one looks like it was from Sharknado. You know, it's like tongue in cheek. The second one's, that's that's no joke. The second mm. one is straight out of Jaws, <laughs> the Meg, whatever. And then the third one's, uh, you know, a 70s cartoon show. I think we should make gear. I want. We should get gear for the third one. Uh, no, the second one, man. You don't have the balls to wear a shirt like that. I don't. <laughs> I mean, the third one is playful. The third one third is definitely great. more appropriate for kids. But all right, uh, Champ and Chump voting's just about closed. Get your Champ and Chump votes in. Get in the last couple of minutes here. We post on our website on. Uh, Tuesday, who the people select as champ and chump of the weekend. My champ of the weekend was A.J. Hinch. Man, it was a good start to the season. And, Gator, the Tigers are back at it tonight. Be good to see Reese Olsen, who showed so much promise here early in his career, kind of solidify his spot. I think he's the most intriguing pitcher. I think he's the guy we know the least about. I know I am, I'm at a point with Casey Mize where anything we get, hey, I'll just uh, I'll be happy. I'll be happy if we get anything out of Casey Mize. Most important staff for Casey Mize this year. Starts. Game started. Can you give us thirty starts? I agree with you. I, I'm I'm hoping that the uh, the bats wake up this week and we start to see some consistency growing there. Uh, nice to get Torkelson, Riley Green get going. Uh, Kerry Carpenter's off to a good start. That's good to know. Had a big home run. Uh, was it yesterday's game? Yeah. Um, they, they all kind of blending together here, but I'm looking forward to see what Reese Olsen what he can do. 
because he was great in the spring. Deserved a chance to make the, this team. Did at the expense of Matt Manning. Mm-hmm. So earn it. You know, he earned it. Now you got to keep it. Well, and the great thing about it, oddly, is the depth. And it feels like they have, for the first time in a long time, options. Tigers team ERA through three games, 2.57, third best in the game. Well, and this is what we were saying before the season began. I mean, obviously, the three games against a bad White Sox team is we take it with a grain of salt. We understand it. But what we thought of this team before the season began was that pitching was going to be that was the best part of the team. Mm-hmm. And both the rotation and the bullpen have a lot to like about it. Uh, okay. Mike Stone has made his way in studio, filling in for Rico today. And uh, you, know, you, you need a chair. Mike doesn't have a chair. We'll get the to chair. Turn a microphone on, too. A chair for, for Mike. It's his first day. <laughs> you looked at Mike earlier today wearing an Eagles sweatshirt and a Red Wings hat, and you said to him what? I said you seem a little confused there with what you're wearing, and Stoney's response was, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> I think I'm accurate. That was your response. Pretty much. I yeah. just put on whatever the hell I feel like putting on. I, I did debate one thing, whether to wear the Eagles or the Seattle Kraken sweatshirt today, but I decided to go multi-sport today. I love the Red Wing hat. That looks yes, old. It is. A lot of my stuff is old. It's like a NASCAR it's hat. Like, it's a vintage... I'm going to say, it's an, is that 90s? Probably, but I'm not sure. It's, I do have a 2002 Stanley Cup champion hat. Do you? Is yeah. that the one with like the cork bills? Remember those? They had the cork looking bills? Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, okay. So, what do you guys got planned coming up next? Well, um, we will mention and talk a little bit about the Tigers and uh, the fact that, you know, as you mentioned, when you beat a minor league baseball team three times in a row, yep. is it something to get excited about? So there's knee-jerk reaction positive. There's knee-jerk reaction negative. True that. Uh, tonight could be, and I know what the points say, tonight could be a make or break at night for the Red Wings. And there are some television choices tonight. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. Mm-hmm. And if you don't have a um, you know, stake in the battle... What are you watching? Mm-hmm. I mean, you got the Wings, Lightning, big game. You got the undefeated Mets, so the undefeated Tigers versus the winless Mets, and you got the women's. And to me, I mean, did, did you goal. did you omit a team? Oh no, I'm getting to them in a second. All right. Then you have the uh, you know, you got LSU versus Iowa, and that's going to be must. That's must see TV. And then you got, you know, even if you want to even go further down the uh, rabbit hole of women's hoops, Gino versus, you know, USC, Watkins versus Paige and Beckers. Beckers, yeah, and she's right. really good. And if you uh, are in the business of getting a lobotomy, you can watch the uh, Pistons take on the Grizzlies. <laughs> They're favored. <laughs> this could be two in a row, Mike. Oh, it's important know. to some of us. That's how, right. how is a 13 win team favored this late in the season? Uh, because Memphis has been playing awful basketball. Oh, that's not that's that, it. Not that the uh, Pistons have been playing top-notch basketball. Well, no, but get to three. That's all I ask. Yeah, and we're also um, – I can't believe my, it's coming down to the end of the season. It's coming to the end of the season. <laughs> yes. Mike is uh, very much down on all college sports right now, and I think he has a legitimate reason to feel that way. Although there was one college sport that I watched a little bit of last night that does not fall under under the umbrella. Because that hockey game last night was really good. Yeah, but the way they do this is dumb. Oh, yes. Which part of it? Where the the, the the venue is? Well, the venue is dumb. Having all the Michigan teams, well, three of the Michigan teams in the same region is dumb. And as as Doug has pointed out, having it decided in a single elimination game instead of having it. Welcome to my last 30 years. But, yes, I've been bitching about this forever. Put them back on campus sites, please. Hey, have a great show. Thank you very much. Stay safe, everyone. Treat each other with respect. 97.1.
Jake Wallman is back in the lineup for the Red Wings after missing the last six games with a lower body injury. Here's the impression of where the team is, according to him. Olimata will sit out the game as the team takes on the Tampa Bay Lightning in Florida. Simon Edvidson sticks with the lineup as well. The Wings are sitting two points out of the last wild card spot, trailing the Flyers here the game on WWJ beginning at 645. Reese Olsen set to make his first start of the season for the Tigers today against the Mets. New York was swept by the Brewers in their opening series while scoring just one run in two out of the three games. Temperature expected to be pretty good at 50 degrees by first pitch at 710. Hear it right here on 97.1 after 7. Former Tiger catcher Eric Haas was DFA'd over the weekend. He cleared waivers and is heading to AAA, however. Kate Cunningham questionable with the left knee still bothering him tonight as the Pistons face the Grizzlies. Marcus Sasser also being hampered by an illness. He's questionable as well. Memphis checking in at... at Checking in at 24 and 50. Mark Champion's call can be heard on Alt 98.7 beginning at 635. Finally, former Pro Bowler Vontae Davis has passed away at the age of 35. Davis last played in the NFL in 2018 as a member of the Bills. At the Coral Health Update Desk, I'm Jeremy Otto. For more, go to 97.1 The Ticket or odyssey.com. All right, good Monday afternoon to everybody. What is this, Rob Dibble, Norm Charlton music? I don't know. I don't even know what the hell that song was about. I'll just move on. <laughs> uh, let's get into it. We How gotta, are you, Michael? I'm just stellar. Stellar. I'm just always, every day I walk in this building, overwhelmed with the level of professionalism that we have around us. So let, let's just move it forward. The Godfather with us today, Rico on vacation. We have Stoney's Red Hot overreactions to the first series of the year for the Tigers. We got to talk a little college sports because I got questions and mm-hmm. I think we got problems. But we're going to start out with the Red Wings. You're wearing a Red Wing hat, yes, which is an odd pairing with an Eagles sweatshirt, but yes. it's you. It's who you are. Exactly. I um, I've reached a point with the Red Wings and tonight's game against Tampa Bay, and I want to know if I'm fair or unfair. Okay, mm-hmm. it's as simple as that. Win or f yourself. That's just where it's at. I, you know what I don't want to do? Find more excuses for this team. <laughs> I don't want to hear about, well, there's seven other chances or games in hand or, well, they played okay Saturday. They didn't win. They have lost four games in a row. Again. Lose tonight, it's five. I don't want to hear that the Flyers are tripping over their garden hose every night or that Washington plays four more playoff teams. Win or... Or F off to the sun. Is that an unfair standard where I go, fellas, earn your way in? That that would be a reasonable expectation. But if for some reason the stars align and we have a few more games down the stretch that they you know could still get in if they win that particular night, I'm not going to turn my back on them. But it would be nice to them to win a game in a place where they usually don't play very well. But, but yeah, I, that would I be I nice. Want, what I want is this. Don't be the t- well. Don't be the best of the bad. Earn your way. Yeah, that would be nice. Can for the first time in five weeks, can you put a solid week of hockey together? Two weeks of hockey together. I know. Look, look. The most important thing is winning. There's no doubt about it. But as Kenny Cott, our you know hockey uh, guru, will test, except for the Carolina game, the, the three or four games they've played pretty well, but they and didn't to use win. Your words, Mike. Win. I know. I don't want to hear it. I, I, but look, I'm looking at the game from watching the games. It's not that they came out and pl- you know played like crap from the get go. That like Lalone actually, the team actually had a pulse, which was a it's a step forward than what they had been showing. Uh, but yeah, they, they, they it would be great for them to win. But they're not going to like forfeit their chances if they lose. Kenny and I, we we said what they had three games. 
at Florida, at Tampa, and home to the Rangers on Friday night. Reasonable expectations we'd be somewhat satisfied is three points. They got one. Win one more, wow. and they're fine. Well, but my point is if they don't win tonight, I mean, enough. Come on, man. It's like, tough. It's a tough watch. I get all that. And, you know, when some of your star players, uh, to break it, are not doing much, like missing breakaways and, okay, I don't, you know, hitting the post does not, does, you don't score goals by hitting the post in overtime. And that power play, when they had a four on three in overtime, was a freaking disgrace. Where Florida's got three guys lined up at the blue line, you think the wings could like just chip it and go. You have extra an extra guy. It's overtime, and they could muster maybe one shot. That was awful. I want to hear from the people on this. Is it is it unfair, or have you reached the same point where it's like you know what, fellas, go out, beat Tampa tonight, or just kindly see yourselves out. I mean, I, I the I mean, I, I mean, just, it would be good for your mental health, uh, all our mental health. I I get all that, Jesus. But I can't give, I can't just give okay. up on them. And, and Mike, you're not wrong if you don't give up. You're not wrong for saying mathematically, you know. I just it, listen. I just feel. Tell me if this sounds familiar, Mike. I just feel like we lack standards. I feel I like understand. we lack standards in this town. Like the idea that the head coach of the team. 10 days ago, goes, well, you know, uh, no one believed in us at the start of the year, and if you told me, as you have said, goalposts move. Correct. The seven game, you know, this massive losing streak that followed the good vibes of post-Valentine's Day. So they've never gotten it back on the rails. No, they So haven't. all I'm asking for is start playing well, yes. night overnight, and if that means you didn't get in, it's a different conversation. But at a certain point, you don't get a trying no, award. No. When? No. Exactly. I feel like the way they're playing right now, you don't deserve to be. So if you trip over your garden hose and find your way in, that's fine. Right. It won't feel the same to me. And I don't want to hear, like I said, about guys hitting the post and the, the, the ridiculous goal that went offside. Or, I mean, I, puck luck, tough. You have to overcome that stuff and take it to the opponent. Tonight's tough. Tampa's still really, really good. Uh, are they the cup team that they were? No, but they can. They're a tough. Hey, there's your boy. They're right toughing there. out. I know you're all excited. They were showing some JJ highlights. Stoney's got a big take about JJ for later too. It's hot takes only by Stoney today. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. Go ahead, hockey elite. Yeah. Pull the ripcord. Let's get involved. Wings lightning tonight. I don't. I just. I'm tired. Go win. Go play well. Right. Earn your way in. Right. Stop it's, trying to look for ways to, like, fall into the playoffs. Because you look at their last 10 games, they're 3-5-2. and two. I mean, that, that that's disgraceful. <laughs> it is. Tampa, what are they in their last 10? 8-1-1. One, and one. Washington, 6-3-1. and one. The only other team that's as bad as the uh, Red Wings in their last 10, actually there's two the others. Islanders, the two, Islanders seven are 2-7-1. Two, and, and, and the Flyers are suddenly now in the wild card hunt. Three, five They're 3-5-2. Three, yeah. Or 3-5, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Oh, I so, saw it this morning. Yeah, so yeah, it's going to be, the Red Wings are going to have to beat out Philly is what it's going to have to come down to. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. Well, it starts tonight. Go ahead, you got Tampa. You're going to rise up and play? Because if the Wings lose tonight, you can just wake me up when the right. season's over. I've had enough. I can't keep watching it. That's the thing. The Wings can't, they should be, of course, worried about the other teams because of the race. But they got to worry about themselves. Oh, yeah. They, they have to win games. Yes. They themselves. Yeah, about the, the fans can play all the you know games with the standings that we want, okay? The players have to say, enough is enough. Let's just go out, you know, or as, you know, people like uh, what, what Harbaugh said. And who was the other person who just said it recently? I'm going to die trying. That's Izzo. Izzo, yeah. Okay. So that's what they got to do. They got to just play their asses off. But the big thing, David, it's what you said. Like, I don't I don't want to watch the standings. I don't need to. If you win games, you get in. It would take something outer space-wise that if you went out and put a really strong six, seven games together, that you wouldn't get in. Yeah. You know, you tip your cap at the end of the day if the other team was able to go 6-0-1 in that stretch or something. It's not going to happen. These teams aren't that good. The Wings have done nothing in the last month to deserve a playoff spot. Right. In fact, they are very fortunate they're even this close, yeah. if we're being honest about it. Right. The Islanders so, imploded, too, and the Flyers are imploding. Right. So with that, 
I just want to know, is tonight the last stop for people? And look, if you want to sell me they could lose tonight but win Friday, how would you feel? Play whatever games you want. Right. What I'm tired of is tuning in and watching them lose. And and by the way, the one time they escaped from the fire. They were very fortunate. They did not deserve to win that game against Columbus. No. At all. So I, I just get tired of wasting. Look, guys, it's part of the topic a little later on of what, where we're at with college sports. Tired of watching stuff that's not entertaining. I want to be entertained. Correct. That's what these things are. They are entertainment products. Wings got to win some games to be entertained. Go to Tampa. Show you're a playoff team. Otherwise, the hell are we talking about? Okay. Well, let me let's differentiate between entertaining and, and winning. Sure. Okay. So if they're entertaining tonight and, and lose, you will still be pissed off. Problematic. Right? It's yes. got to be both. Okay. Right. But I mean, Mike, when all seemingly all they've done since the blessed Friday of February 28th, where we were like, "Wow, this is real." Car flags right. up. They all they've done is lose. Yes. Exactly. Now, I, if you want to hand out a participation trophy out there and tell me how good their Fenwick is over the last three games versus the no, previous ten, I don't 10, want to hear Fenwick, Corsi, or well, anything. call a different show. Yeah, two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. We're the gonna puck get in to the net. Uh, that's it. We're gonna get to the people. We got Stoney's hot te- hot overreactions from the opening weekend of Tiger baseball. Holy hell, are the White Sox bad? But we'll get to mm-hmm. it because the Tigers won. And all yes. we can ask is winning. Right. But exactly. we have some overreactions. Stoney claims you have Mariano Rivera in the bullpen. Uh, we're, <laughs> we're also going to do some college <laughs> sports stuff as well. Uh, and we got mock drafts. We got a lot to do on a Monday, 97 1. If your garage floor has exposed concrete with stains and cracks or a bad epoxy job, you can fix the whole damn thing in one day. With a Comer and Cross premium garage floor, transform the entire area. They'll take your stuff out. They'll fix your concrete like new, and in 24 hours, you are driving on a gleaming new Comer and Cross garage floor. Comer and Cross, the gold standard. Guaranteed, your garage floor won't chip, crack, or yellow like an epoxy or paint job. And guaranteed, no tire lift or epoxy fumes. They're the best in the game. For your free quote, call Comer and Cross right now at 248-266-4443. That's 248-266-4443 or go to Comer and Cross Garage.com.
All right, let's get to the people. Wings, biggest game, you know, and this marks the last stop for me. Win the night or just wake me up with the results at the end of the year. I'm done. Every time I tune in, they, they, they can't win a game. And I don't want to hear about backing in. You know what? At one point, you were nine points up on New Jersey. And obviously, Jersey hasn't played great hockey. I think they're five and five in their last 10. The Which point is I'm, incredible because the, they're a good team. Right. The point I'm making is you got to win games at some point to garner attention. Otherwise, what? What? I don't want to watch the rest of the funeral. Unplug Nona at this point. Either win tonight or just come on. Let's go to Caitlin, 97.1. Caitlin, how you doing? Good. How are you guys? Excellent. What's on your mind? So I'm here with my son right now. We have Tiger season tickets. We have Lion season tickets. And we have something called sports FOMO. So I don't, to your point, I don't want to be tempted to spend the crap ton of money that it's going to cost on parking and tickets and food and alcohol and all that stuff to go watch them lose if they back into the playoffs. It's a waste of money just to watch them lose. Like, play good, make us want to spend the money, but I know my husband, he's going to buy the tickets regardless, and then they're going to play crap hockey. Well, if, if fun. Caitlin, if they get in just for the environment alone, whether they'd win or lose, uh, I think is worth it. And even if they're playing well going in, They'll, they'll be the eighth seed. They're going to play the same team anyway. So I just wanted to get in. It is. But today it's a lot. Right. I, true. But, you know, today it's a lot of money to spend on for not for what, you know, Blendy's saying is not a good product. No, so for, and Caitlin, point, that's. Makes sense. It's I, like to back in, you're backing in. I'm you with her product. in this sense. I'm, I'm with Caitlin in this sense because, look, these teams want to charge what I think is just a ridiculous amount of money. And let's say in Caitlin's spot, you're taking your kids, you, you know, it's going to be a family night out, whatever oh, it is. It's minimum 400. For then the it is incumbent upon fans. And it's part of my issue in this town. Fans have to raise the bar on what they demand. Caitlin's right. A month ago, we were talking about, I don't think teams want to see this team in the first round. They were playing fast, high flying hockey, and then showing the ability on nights where it all didn't work. We can win those games too. Stoney, I, I just, no, I don't want to see it, a garbage can on fire. No, but they're not going to, they're going to have to look, they're not in the playoffs now, so they're going to have to win some games. I know. And it's not going to just be backing in. Do you think they actually get this done? No. Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Well, okay. I'm always doom and gloom. I always think the no, worst. No, you're not. You're Stony. You're well, awfully positive. No, not really. Okay. Let's go to Brett. You forget where I grew up. I know. Brett, how are you, buddy? Hey guys, how you doing, Mike? How you All doing, right, Tony? Good. What's going? Uh, am hey, I crazy, yeah. or is tonight the last stop? You know, actually, in the first three minutes of the show, as soon as you said that, I called up right away because I instantly was like, "Oh my God!" I was telling my dad this yesterday. I called him. I said, "If we lose tonight, you know, tonight um, we're done because we got the Rangers coming up next too." So basically, in the last two months, after we had our seven-game losing streak, all it's been has been scoreboard watching with the Caps and mm -hmm. the Islanders and now the Flyers, and it's anxiety-driven now. Like, to watch this team fall so far, Lalone's got to go. If we lose tonight, I want Lalone's head. Like, just get him out of there. And if he continues to stay there, just like, and I told you this a couple months ago when I was talking about the Lions, uh, and I brought up my grievances, my other main grievance. If Lalone stays here, then we are just in the same boat as we are with the fact that Troy Weaver is still employed in the city of Detroit. <laughs> I, I don't, th I don't I think he will be, but that's okay. I, you know, I think he's gone at the end of the year. And if they, comp if, if then the wings completely go down the toilet, I think Lalone might be gone as well. But I, and we discussed this off the air. I think, and I could be wrong. I think if you're going to look for a blame for this, I think it's more Iserman than Lalone. Oh, and I'm not a Steve bot whatsoever. Uh, this is on Iserman. I think Lalone should have been gone, honestly, after that comment he made, you know, a few weeks ago. about No it. one really expected us to be here. You know, that type of mentality is not a coach. It's why I'd he be a terrible owner. Brett, I swear to God, I would have walked downstairs in my pajamas and fired his ass. I'd be an awful owner. A fair drop. I, oh, Dan Campbell. <laughs> who, I don't know who the coach of the Lions would be right now. No, one in six. Yeah, when they were staring, like we, right. so, you know what we talked about back then. I said, Rico, no coach has ever kept their job being three and twenty-one after two years. Right. I go, he's got to get this turned around the next three, four weeks, right. or we're having that conversation. Yes. Now, what did they do? They turned it around. They turned it around. Right. But we were getting close.
Sony, I know. 313 and one into one and six, and we just traded our all pro tight end, and you're going, Yeah, you got to win a few games. Yes. And then they just, yeah, they just turned. Right. This thing, I don't know, man. Hockey's a different animal. It is. Coaches and, get fired left and right. I know, and that's why I think it's going to happen at the end of the season. To do it now, like to me, would be absurd. Now, what do you what do you want to say about Troy Weaver there? I, you dropped. No, a, I you just dropped I, a little dime on everybody. No, I just think there. it's pretty obvious he has to go. You've been hanging out with Teflon Tom again? No, <laughs> Teflon Tom Wilson. <laughs> You've been having a few warm cookies before first tip. What's going on here? Oh, no, nothing. I just, right. just, you know, my gut. Stoney's having a little bad Larry yeah. in the concourse at the old palace. He's Taking back. Taking me back here, man. Stoney's yes. back. Yeah. Oh, four final. Stoney was operating a little members only oh. lounge. In- interviewing Kid Rock after the championship <laughs> game. Hey, man, I'm just trying to get laid. Okay, thanks, kid. All right, back back to you. Let's go to Ben, 97-1. Benny, what's going on, bud? Mikey, I feel the same way with you, man. If they lose tonight, I'm over this team. I've been watching them for a month straight, only get eight points. I think we sat at 72 points, I want to say, give or take, when during the first week of March, and now we're only at 80. It's like they're playing like they're afraid to lose. I don't – there's just – this team doesn't even look the same. Well, I mean, they, do, they don't look everyone, like a playoff team because they don't think they're tough enough. And this is something – that's been going on the whole season, even when things were good. I remember I talked a little alone in the morning. I said, you know, this team's playing good, but they just seem so easy to play against. And they are. They're not greasy, grimy, whatever. You know what Eisenman should do and his, you know, his, his cohort, uh, Mr. Chris Draper? They need to find their own grind line. They oh, really God. do. And oh. I'm, not talking about, I'm not talking about gooning or anything like that. Just guys who can be, a, be forwards who can be tough. Who's a tough forward they have on this team? Uh, well, Rasmussen, maybe, my, and he's my my comment is you know about Lalonde is you know with Wallman coming back tonight. How do you keep Petrie in the lineup? I mean, I don't look at plus minus much as a stat anymore, but you could watch the games. You've seen it the other night. Petrie's just making mental errors. I don't. You're scratching Ole Mata, who really is a solid defenseman for us, and you're playing Petrie. I, I just that. It has me. I, I think my head that has a I lot. I really don't understand what's going I on. I think that has to do with left, left shot, right shot thing. That's why Petrie's in. I know. Yeah, that, but, that's uh, the reason. And look, and ben, and, and, ben, but Ben, here's my problem. You know, no disrespect to any of the people we're talking about, but if if you're talking about Oli Mata versus Petrie on one leg, yeah, uh, it's your five it's of your, a rebuild. Right, you're the third oldest right. team in the league. It's your Where? sixth. It's your sixth defenseman. Yes. Right. Like I that that that's not. You know, I'm with Stony Ben. If you want to talk about somebody, we can begin to talk about Dubrinkit a little bit. We brought yes. him in to oh, help lead Dave, this team. Hey, he's been. I mean. I was I've been having this conversation with a couple of my buddies for you know the past the since this month it's like where where's he been you know Nowhere. when he had that puck uh, it was last game and I think it was in overtime yeah when he they hit the post the puck on his feet well no they passed him the puck it hit his skates and he falls right on his ass he's like come on well oh, and he like, missed a breakaway our- early in the game and he and he hits the post. I think he's turning into a front runner. I've said that before. And- no, it's not good. No, listen, but we've also said, hold on. Now, in fairness, we also said he can't be your best player. No. Dubrink, it's a complimentary piece capable of being right. a consistent 30-goal right. scorer. You need the guy. Right. See, we're five years into this. They still don't have the guy. Correct. Now, yeah. Dickin might be the spiritual leader, right? He's right. their version of David. But he's not he's the not, guy. He's not a superstar. Well, you, you know what? You need Here's one. the problem I have, okay? Fine. Bleep hole, fringe hockey take. When you gave me Iserman, you promised me special. We're in year five of a rebuild. We have no one close to being a superstar. No, you're right. No one. No. I mean, Sider's a really good defenseman. Larkin's a really good player. Kane has played really well. That's it. That's it. They're, Alex Lyon has been their goalie. What about Trey Augustine? Him and Sebastian Costa, they're going to be the goaltenders of the future. But the future... Yeah, is I, three years away. I feel like Red Wing fans are turning into me with MSU hoops. <laughs> They're just kind of done with like if they lose tonight, I have had it. See, I wanted to ask Ben. So, so what happens if they lose tonight, but they beat the Rangers? Yeah, but and you that, can't play that I, way. I, I know because here's here's the answer. So what's going to happen? They'll win, they'll win tonight, then lose the Rangers, and the points are still the same. I'll answer for Ben. Okay, Th- then it's the team earning their way back to you. 
Okay. But like if they lose tonight, they will have factually lost five games in a row. Right. I can't take you serious as a playoff drive when you are driving yourself off a cliff. Right. And especially if they get like blown out and don't play well tonight and come out, you know, yeah. playing scared and all that. No, that's unacceptable. Let's go to Allen ninety seven one. Allen, how you doing, buddy? Hey, guys, I really enjoy the show. I'm actually visually impaired, so radio is basically my only way of listening to sports talk. So thanks for that. Thank you. Um, I also wanted to say, look, with the Red Wings, it's simple. they got to prove to me that they can do something. We look at what they've done, you know, these past months, and obviously by Valentine's Day we were talking different conversation than we are having mm-hmm. now. I, if we don't beat Tampa Bay, I agree with you, Mike. It's wake me up when you actually do something productive. I thought we could beat Florida. No, we lose in, I think it was a shootout, right? Yeah. We lose in a shootout to the Panthers. And then I see uh, on the Detroit Free Press, we got it. Well, the Red Wings get a point in Florida. I'm like, I don't care if they get a point in Florida. We still lost. Nothing was accomplished. So I, I think that Iserman, look, Iserman, I wonder, I almost wonder if he's the guy to kind of kickstart a rebuild. But I almost wonder if he's the guy that's, that he's not the guy to get us over the finish line. He's the guy to get some prospects in. But he's not the guy to take no, up. No, I, I think he thinks, okay, that he is not the guy just to be satisfied with making the playoffs. He's trying to build a championship team that takes a lot longer in his mind. That's the difference. Yeah, well, he's clearly executing that part of it yes. when only two of his draft picks play. Right. Year five. I mean, yeah. It gets hard to defend. Right. Right. Because, by the way, like, no offense, but, oh, I mean, what, what is Casper going to come up here and be Austin Matthews? No. You know, is Bergeron going to come up and be of Jenny Malkin? Like, no. Well, uh, no offense to anybody involved in the Iser plan. Where are the superstars? No, there are none. At least you got, you know. And I blame you. You started the show in a negative tone, mister. <laughs> Typical Philadelphia you know, you know radio. How, you know how I'll make you feel better? I'll show you the picture of me on SportsWorks last night. Done. You would love my outfit. Did you wear the Easter jacket yes! again? Oh, I know this. <laughs> yes. You look like a Cadbury. You look like a Cadbury egg up there. Yes, yeah, absolutely. I got you. All right, crazy weather. One day it's beautiful, like today, and then tomorrow it'll hail. Power outages, major stress on your furnace or AC. You need Mastercraft heating, cooling, plumbing, and electrical. They got you covered twenty four seven. Locally owned over 40 years, they back their work with a five-year warranty. Mastercraft is your one-stop shop for heating, AC, plumbing, and electrical. Plenty of generators in stock and on sale. And if Mastercraft can't get to you same day, they'll take 25% off that next day visit. Just go to mastercraftheating.com.
All right, we got some tournament stuff to get to. We will. Uh, if you want to rap about the wings, please do. It, it, it tonight, it's all or nothing tonight for me. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm not. I'm just telling you where I'm at. If they lose tonight, it's five in a row. And yes, they earned a point in Florida. And well, they could win the next three. And would it change it? I'll worry about that that down the line. I'm officially done bothering with them if they lose tonight. You, you cannot talk to me about a playoff drive and in the next breath. Lose five in a row. And I no. don't I don't want a scoreboard watch anymore. And I don't care about the Caps. I don't care about the Flyers. I don't want to do any of it anymore. I need you at some point to play well consistently. You know what? You didn't play poorly this week, and even though you lost. Fine. Correct. Back it up with a win tonight. Yes. Let's get some juice for Friday night when the Rangers come. Oh, it'll be a great day. Okay. Opening day. And then, right. and then the Rangers are in town. It'll be, it'll be wonderful. Speaking of opening day. Yes. I know you're excited. Uh, the Detroit Tigers are three and zero. Granted, don't want to insult anybody, but they basically played the uh, <laughs> the Birmingham Barons without Michael with Michael Jordan. The White Sox is just freaking blow. I mean, the the pitcher uh, Friday go live to White Sox state of affairs. Yes, yes, exactly. Uh, the They're highlight honor games. the highlight for the White Sox was that they did a really classy thing and did a whole. A little tribute to uh, Jason Benetti on the scoreboard. That mm-hmm. was really nice. Yes. Uh, so the Tigers win, you know, three one-run games. They actually showed some offense in on game Saturday. two. Yes. Game one, they win one one nothing. One nothing, three two, and seven six. Yes, noted, exactly. Noted, noted. Uh, what, what are your overreactions? My overreactions are that um, their bullpen is elite. Overreactions. Uh, on the negative side... Uh, it's my good ob- thing he said overreaction. Yes, my, well, that's what he said. So we do the knee jerk reactions. Uh, also, my overreaction uh, this time on the negative side is that uh, I wish Kenta Mayada uh, was back in Minnesota. He was throwing like 87, 88 mile an hour meatballs, and then it was pointed out that oh, that's what he does in April. Oh, <laughs> great! So you know what? Don't pitch him in April. Well, uh, and I was talking about the uh, and look. Scooble obviously pitched terrific. Jack Flaherty looked really good, like, you know, when Ryan Zimmerman made his first few starts for the Tigers, and then he went down the you-know-what. Jordan Zimmerman. Ah, that's right, right. You're right. I'm sorry. My bad. Who ended up pitching like Ryan Zimmerman. <laughs> yeah, towards the end, right, right. He was great for five or six games. Remember that one year where Shane Green was, like, unbelievable at the beginning, and then he went down? I'll give you – get you want my overreaction? Yeah. Jason Benetti was your biggest acquisition. Oh, he was terrific. I'm not moved by anything they did. While I didn't make fun of Maeda, no. uh, the Flaherty thing, he just hasn't been good in years. Fine. Do you think you can fix every pitcher like you did Lorenzen? Your business. But the Canna stuff or the Urshela stuff, here's the deal. The biggest acquisition you made has been Eddie. Because I can watch a game if I'm not listening on 97 won the ticket. Shout out to Dan Dickerson. Yes. Uh, I can watch a game and not want to hurl a brick at my television. Well, so, major upgrade. It's it's peaceful listening is what it is. It's professional. That's what that's well. I'm not going to go there, but it's it's baseball. Baseball is not this intensity that 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 Matt Shepard provided. I think Matt was really good at Michigan and Michigan basketball. Tiger baseball. I think it was a little too intense for it for my liking. But it's a good guy. Uh, no. Uh, by the way, overreaction. Mark Connor is a pretty good signing. There's, there's your, uh, get there's out. your, you can, you there's can your overreaction. Get for, out. The exit's games, right there. For three games. That's we all got we're exits about. on each on each side of the aisle uh, and on both wings. Get out. Come on, AJ Hinch. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kid Rock. I could actually send you the actual Kid Rock. I can, I'll do that, Roberto. You, you could just play that drop again. I'd be satisfied. <laughs> Perfect. Carson. I'll take that. Can I have that on the board, please, at some point? Carson Kelly's looks like a decent player. Oh, no, look, I said here, these are overreaction. Uh, and, and Torkelson still can't hit with guys in scoring position early in the season. The biggest takeaway I had, I thought A.J. Hinch had a really good weekend. Yes. You're, you're paid to get the late-inning stuff right, get your matchups right. Oh, the Abanias for Parker yeah, Meadows was that, a really good move. Listen, that's fine. I will just say, A, we talked about this. White Sox, Mets, right. A's. Pirates, these are some of the worst teams in baseball. I know the Pirates are off to a little hot start. Good yes. for them. They're still the Pirates. The point is, win your games. Yes. I don't care how you win them. Right. Win them. Right. But 
if if you want my takeaway, uh, this offense is going to be a problem. Yeah. The, the, the White Sox, if it weren't for the A's, would be the worst team in baseball. So there was nothing really that surprised us. The offense no, pitching's was, didn't be look fine. great. The, and the pitching was pretty damn good. And you'll end up, I think you'll end up liking Maeda. Be patient with it. Yeah, okay. Well, like Craft. I said, I got Here's the word I'd use for both. Maeda. Crafty. There are going to be plenty of days. Frank Tanana. <laughs> the late years. The yes. Japanese version of Frank Tanana. Fine. Yeah. I think there will be plenty of afternoons. You're not going to be worried about how hard he's throwing, and mm-hmm. you're going to go, wow, he gave me six and a third. Hey, he gave me five and two thirds. I, I think he's an innings eater. I, I, I didn't mind signing. It was more offensively speaking, wow, are there a lot of at-bats. Yes. Where I just go, oh, boy. Now, what's the the uh, the, the grand sum of number? Like, they've been able to, in their budget, so to speak, like sign Jordan Montgomery and instead of both Flaherty and and Maeda. Yeah, but, and then but you, Montgomery's got plenty of red flags, Okay, too. okay. I'm, 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 listen, I'm just asking. I was okay. There really wasn't a budget. Yeah. They didn't spend any money. Right. But on the same amount of money is what I'm saying. Oh, sure. If you yeah. wanted to play that game, yes. but I'm not I don't think they should have been in that business. No. You know, the Blake Snell business or the Montgomery business. I was fine signing a couple arms because the reality is your young arms are gonna be the front of this rotation. Yes. We're fine there. Yeah, they look pretty good in Toledo over the weekend. It was the bats. Yes. It's the bats. I know. And we'll, we'll hopefully, you know, like Kerry Carpenter, he he had a pretty good Weekend. Sure. As long as there's not a lefty on the mound, he'll play. Yes. Uh, and here's an overreaction, maybe the negative way. It's just three games, but it was the White Sox. Colt Keek looked a little overmatched at the plate. Oh, no. The overreactions for Mike stuff. Yes. They're just overreactions. He's calling Colt Keith a bust. No, it's, this isn't like I the know, Otani I, thing after the first hit bat. I said his, the honeymoon is over, yeah. and Evan just keeps bringing that back just game give, after game after game. You have to let it breathe. Generally, the way this works with prospects, I'm not going to, unless it is insanely bad, you give him 100 at bats yes. to even form right. any kind of opinion. Let right. me see you over the course of 20 right. games. Well, that's what I said. These are knee jerk overreactions to three games against the Birmingham Barons. The White Sox are going to be incredibly oh my bad. God. And again, you play him 13 times. Right. I can't ask you to go 13 and 0, but as close to 11 and 2 yes. or 10 and 3 as it gets, win your games. And you don't want to see anybody get hurt, but the Tigers got a break because Royce, oh, Royce. Lewis. Busted up his quad over the weekend, and he is arguably Minnesota's best player, would you say? Yes. Yes. No, there'd be no argument. Mm-hmm. But just like Buxton, cannot yeah. stay healthy. I know. You hate to see it. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. David, don't shake your head. Easter's over. Uh, ticket text, please. Stoney's right. Foley is freaking lights out. 100, 101 with insane movement. Great closer. Not an overreaction, they say. Oh, actually, I, actually, I was talking about Shelby Miller, too, as far as the guy I picked up who looked really good. Yeah. He he comped Shelby Miller to Mariano Rivera. <laughs> it was quite oh a pre-show. Gosh. No, it was Goose. <laughs> <laughs> the Tigers beat Troy Athens. Some fans need to calm down already. There's a middle ground. We're doing overreactions. Here's the thing. Right. You'd be bitching if they didn't sweep that series. Right. Win them ugly, that's fine. But I don't have to buy in until I see this offense on a night-in, night-out basis compete. Some of those at-bats against that garbage? Garrett Crochet. My balls. He throws hard. Wow. <laughs> hey, Javi had two hits. <laughs> I'll give you this one. Someone else is sick texting in saying, I do agree with Stoney. Coke Keith is a bust. No. <laughs> well, you can't call him a bust. He looked overmatched in three games. That's you need all. to stop. You really cannot good... say overmatched. No. He played three games. Right, exactly. You know, Colt Keith's gonna he, he's gonna have an extra base hit tonight. Good. I hope so. He made because the Mets made suck. A, made a good play at the. Uh, oh, you the won't field. recognize Sean Manea. Oh. He shaved and got a haircut. Ooh. First time in like four what? years. Remember how he looked like the Geico caveman the yeah. last few years? Manaya, clean shaven, clean cut. God, I wanted the Tigers to sign him. I remember mean, trade for him. Why? When he was, he was the one who was in Oakland, right? Or am I mixing yeah. him? Yeah. yeah, same guy. Yeah. I thought he was pretty good at Then San Diego and, yeah. and now the Mets. Yeah. Mets are bad, too. I know. Uh, again, win You hate the Mets as much as you hate the Jets, by the way? That's tough because it comes down to a. a it's the, two leagues. It's but despising it's, the fan base. Like, Jet fans know they're losers, so right. it's different. Met fans actually think they're winners. 
Met fans like somehow think they're in the that they dine at the same restaurant right. as the New York Yankees, and they don't. Yeah. Well, Jet fans know I'm I'm in fact a born loser. My friend who you met in Vegas yes. was a huge Met fan all his life, and he just got so sick of the Will Ponds that he switched because his son loved Derek Jeter and no. he became a Yankee fan. Yeah. You can't see. No, I don't. I don't. I don't respect that. <laughs> That's outrageous. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. I've always hated the Mets being from Philly. I mean, I hated Tom Seaver, the All American guy, and I hated him. Sacrilegious, I know, but I don't care. Winter can do funny things to your roof. The ice, the snow, the freezing, the thawing. Look at our temperature changes right now, for God's sakes. Bottom line, your shingles can be brittle. They can crack. Major problems. The best advice I can give you, call Victor's Home Solutions today and schedule that appointment for a spring roof inspection. I say today because Victor's appointment calendar will fill up incredibly quickly as the weather warms up. So schedule your appointment for the rush. Get the peace of mind of knowing your roof is ready to handle the spring rain. We're going to get two inches of rain this week. When you call Victor's Home Solutions, you're taking the guesswork out of choosing the right roofing contractor. Uh, it's an important decision. You can you could save money. You go cheaper, but you won't find better. It's Victor's more five-star reviews than any other roofing company in Michigan. They will also, with any work they do for you they will offer that 50-year leak-free guarantee on every roof they install call today 734-773-1100 or book that appointment at victors.com
All right. Let's get a little March Madness Blitz as we uh, wind it down. A lot to discuss, including I cannot stand Zach Eady. David? <laughs> okay. Rico, not the day after Easter, really. David, go ahead. Yeah, let's start with Zach Eady here because there was an interesting dynamic that happened in yesterday's Elite Eight game where Eady, uh, of course, he leads the nation in both free throw attempts and makes. And he wasn't called for a single foul in the first half yesterday. First 31 minutes of the game. Ridiculous last night. Um, Are you uh, in love with Zach Eady or is he, uh, you know, you loathe by him? I loathe him. I hate him. I want him launched out of a space cannon. Listen, I'm sure he's a lovely young man, but he's 7'5". He's taller and bigger than anybody else, and the officials baby him. He, He gets called. And if you touch him on the offensive end, He's at the line. He shot 22 free throws yesterday. And he's allowed to swing his elbows with impunity on the, on the defensive end. He's very difficult to officiate. They, we remember we used to say that about Shaquille O'Neal years ago. Look, he's a great, great college player. He's got nothing in the NBA. Nothing. He's Boban Marjanovic. Yeah. I just, I can't. Look, Stoney, here's the bottom line. Saying it's difficult to officiate, I mean, what kind of cop-out is that? Like, officials, figure it out, guys. Yes. You can't send a guy to the line 22 times. Right, he's good. Look, he's going to get hacked. I get that. But there were some ticky-tack fouls that That's what he, I you know, can't Tennessee tolerate. got called for, and then he had some ticky-tack, you know, as, as eight feet as, as tall, well. 300 pounds, yes. and you breathe on him, and they're sending him to the line. But if he, if he does what he does did yesterday, the next two games, uh, me and the guy I'm partnered with in a fantasy uh Draft pool will win a lot of money. Okay, I, that that is irrelevant to the, the blitz. <laughs> Please. <laughs> that is irrelevant to the blitz. But what is not irrelevant to the blitz is let's talk about the transfer portal. 46.2% of starters in the Sweet 16 teams, they had transferred at least once. So only Duke had a starting five with no transfers. But NC State, who has made the Final Four, all five of their starters – Came yep. from the portal. This is getting ridiculous, guys. Well, even more ridiculous since the portal opened two weeks ago. Eleven hundred Division One players have hit the portal. Say, so, I, I have no problem. You want to transfer once? Yes. Uh, the coach is a jerk. You miss home. You didn't get the PT you were promised. But at what point do these young men, because they're not kids, at what point do they have to live with a level of accountability? It's absolutely ridiculous right. to Tra- watch these games and see dudes playing for three, four schools. Tra- Transfer if you want for the second or third time, but you got to sit out of here. I'm sorry, that's ridiculous. Make them sign contracts, and if they break the contract, they got to sit out. It is hurting my ability to love the game because the there is no there's no continuity. To there, the no, there's no loyalty to anything. You know, if you want to make a transfer and take a payment, do it. But I'm with Stony. There should be a contract, right? Oh, you made a bad decision? Well, here's a preview of life. You got to live with it. And this is not about whether you want to pay kids or not. That nope. They should get all the money they can. Happy to pay them. But maybe they need to make it as part of a CBA. So I mentioned Duke there. They uh, had no transfers in their starting five. That's I want to have a quick conversation with them. Can they continue to be this way? I get John Shire yes. went two rounds further than he did in year one. Go look at the recruiting class next yeah, year. To, yeah, it's, I know. it's, it's arguably the is. best recruiting class I've seen in 15 years. They, they're bringing in like five five-star kids, David, including one who reclassified, and then Cooper Flagg, the kid Stoney's bringing up. People are talking about him as the number one pick in the NBA draft a year in advance. Yes. David, if you're going to recruit at that level, they'll be just fine. Yeah. You can be. But here's where I think you get into trouble. You do need a veteran presence. I don't think you can win with just kids. No. So if Duke has a blend of second and third year guys to go with this new Fab Five they're bringing in, yes. But as Kentucky has shown you, we're a long way from uh, John Wall and Boogie Cousins and, <laughs> yes. and, and super freshmen. Yeah, look, Duke had their they had their veteran leader in Roach, but he's gone after this year, right? right. He's only been there six years, right? <laughs> That's the other thing. These COVID kids got to go. Well, Not enough. Yes. You're not. Oh, did you see Tucker DeVries got another year? His yes, dad I took did. the head coaching yes. job at West Virginia, so now he's going to go get a freebie over there. Can we stop? We got a bunch of Al Bundys running around <laughs> college basketball. His, da- his dad's brother's former Lion Jared DeVries. Oh, just tremendous. Thank you for that. <laughs> That's what I'm here for, to give useless information to you. It's fabulous. <laughs> well, here's some useful information, and I'm trying to figure out how this happened. Uh, there was a three-point line 
situation at the women's Portland Regional where they had already played, I believe, five games or something like that. Yeah, was that host of the Kaz Tech? Because <laughs> I got the same math equations. How do you not get your three point lines right? It's like building a ninety six yard football right. field. I've always seen you know people like Rachel Nichols like, oh, if this had, this would never happen in the men's game. Well, you know what? It's not. That's not the point. The point is somebody, a fan, figure it out. It's nothing to do with men's game, women's game. Yeah, here's an idea: How many men and women walked right by it and didn't notice right. it? Exactly. They played games two days prior. I don't care what gender you are. Figure it out. The two three-point lines aren't the same. You can look at it. It's so simple. Brought to you by Kaz Tech Measurements. Okay, let's get to <laughs> NC State here. And, Stoney, you had a question here, and I love this question. Are the Wolfpack America's Final Four team? Yes. Everyone loves DJ Burns, but it's the team America's yeah, team DJ now. Horn's lovable. They, 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 they have a lot of guys on that team that are – Fun to watch. I mean, they are. I mean, the whole run. I mean, yes, we're going to get sick of the Valvano '83 comparisons. I, I get all that, but it's incredible. The guy was going to get fired before the ACC tournament, and so, now they're they're in the, in the Final Four. What's who's who do you like yeah, more here. than them? I'll you don't like you. Purdue. I'll, you don't like Connecticut. I do. Oh, but you're in the minority. I know that, so I'll get uh, made uh, fun of. I respect greatness. I think I, we're, I, I think we're watching something. I'm sorry, but a thirty nothing run in an elite eight game. I know dump trucking everybody by twenty five. Now I don't think the sport's any good. No, I know, but th they're oh, good. Oh, they're, they're, there's no doubt about that. But as far as America's team, most people I think are going to hope for that NC State can beat Purdue and then win it all. I don't think they're going to yeah, do they are, it. But. They are going to definitely hope for that. But let me give you a quick stat before we close this out of UConn. They have won now. Their 10th straight tournament win by 13-plus points, yeah. which is the longest streak in tournament history. Well, I, last year they said it was because they played a lot of easy you know, teams. Yeah, know. This year it's different. I'll lean on Stoney for this one. Can you name a more impressive run than what you've seen from UConn this year so far? The only one I could think of is when UNLV won the year before they lost to Duke. And I don't remember what – the games might have been close, but that team was just so loaded. It's just – it's unbelievable. And, I mean, they can do it to you in an instant. Yes. They can play high scoring. They can play low scoring. And when they lock in – look, this is ultimately – they have an answer for everything. Like, oh, well, look, Zach Eady will post up and score 40. No. Klingon might have something to say about that yeah, at 7-2. Yeah. Well, what was Illinois' problem? They kept trying to go in on him, and the guy was a blocking machine. What do you want me to say? Illinois know. got one speed. They got to live at the line. I they got to drive it. Shannon puts his shoulder down. They're not that good. No, and they couldn't make free throws. Well, that's another – that's a bit of an issue, isn't <laughs> it? Know. That is definitely going to be a problem. That is your NCAA tournament blitz. Thanks, Tony. Listen, <laughs> home runs. Everybody loves them. Dinger Tuesdays with FanDuel. You can love them even more. That's right. So Tuesdays, you're going to be rooting for home runs with America's number one sports book. You bet a player to hit a bomb. FanDuel gives you $5 in bonus bets for every home run hit during that game. You need another reason to get involved? FanDuel's got it. It's FanDuel.com slash ticket. That's FanDuel.com slash ticket. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball, 21 and up, present Michigan. Bonus issued, knowledgeable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Max bonus, $25 a game. Restrictions apply. See terms, sportsbook.fanduel.com. And if you've got a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER.
Brought to you by Twin Peaks, the Tigers begin their second series of the year against the Mets on the road tonight. Reese Olsen set to make the start for Detroit after a strong spring, won him an unguaranteed rotation spot. The Mets are off to their worst start in the last 10 seasons, having their having lost their first three games to the Brewers. Here's shortstop Francisco Lindor on the rocky beginning. Pre-game at 6.45 here on 97 won the ticket. The Red Wings face the Lightning, who are sitting comfortably in the first wild card spot. They've got 89 points. Detroit still two points out of the last spot, now trailing the Flyers. Jake Wallman is back in the lineup for the Wings after missing the last six games with a lower body injury. Ole Mata will sit out this game while Simon Edvidson remains in. Here's Derek Lalone on why. Here the game on WWJ beginning at 6.45. The Pistons are two and a half point favorites against the injury riddled Grizzlies tonight. Kate Cunningham is still questionable. Here the game on Alt 98.7 beginning at 6.35. At the Coral Health Update Desk, I'm Jeremy Otto. For more, go to 97 the ticket or odyssey.com. All right, 3 o'clock, good to have you aboard. And I want to build off of what we just discussed in the March Madness thing. Bear with me, people. Let me let me, let me bend your ear for a moment. I want to know if I'm alone in this or if you are on the same spiritual and emotional journey as I am. As it pertains to March Madness and as it pertains to college football, this just isn't entertaining anymore. That... um it started to wear on me that there's just, there are no rules. The wild West transfer portal NIL stuff, the networks running it into the ground with the realignment in conferences, or in the case of the NCAA tournament, the potential of expansion and the little guy being left out. If they break away from the NCAA guys, it got so bad yesterday. I actually tuned in for 45 minutes of a college hockey game. Uh, I'm actually going to tune in to Caitlin Clark versus Angel Reese tonight. That's my CTV. Well, I'm hoping somewhere like Kim Mulkey in a sequin blazer has like a chair like SummerSlam and goes right. after somebody. But I'm I'm making a point like I am my passion index for college athletics, which mm-hmm. I term as revenue sports. Yes. Please don't be calling up and selling me college hockey or baseball. It's just Sony – it is getting more difficult for me to be passionate. I mean, these games, the quality of the product. Now, you and I talk pre-show. Yes. Let's air it out so the listeners, that th- we're not hiding anything. It hasn't, you, you agree with me. It hasn't been very good. That as good as UConn is, it's really more about this sport blows. Correct. The quality of product. If I got to see another team go five for 35 from three, I'm going to lose my mind. And the free throw shooting, for the most part, has not been very good. I mean, the, the Purdue game, I mean, like we said, you know, they're good. You know, Edie's good, laborious to watch. Connect was, to me, if it wasn't for NC State, and the he's the story of the, he was the story of the tournament. He was so much fun to watch. Who, DJ Burns? No, Connect, too. Oh, I'm besides sorry. I thought Burns. you said NC State. No, I, I said besides for Burns. Connect was so much fun right. to watch. But the point is, whether it's, look, college basketball, their biggest issue, there's no stars. There's nobody anybody cares about. Half of America hates Zach Eady because watching him, I don't want to watch him shoot free throws. College football, you know how I feel. I think they're destroying rivalries. I think they're destroying the regulars. The greatest regular season in all of sports was college football. Mm -hmm. Now, it's nothing. It's government cheese NFL. Lose two, lose three. Hell, lose four if you got the right logo on your helmet. You're going to get in. 
I want to know where you guys are at as we now head towards the conclusion of what I am coining now for the second year in a row. It is a listless Final Four. That unless you went to one of these schools, I'm sorry, there is no juice. You could vaporize Saturday night to just give us Purdue UConn, and I think all of America would just go, okay. Yeah. Two number one seeds. Let's see if Purdue can finally win. I get that. One of them's an 11.5 point favorite. The other's 9.5. Right. What is your passion quotient for college sports today versus five years ago? You want to put it on a scale of one to five? I'll tell you where I'm trending. I'm trending somewhere down to a two and a one and a half. I'm not that far down. I'm maybe trending a little bit, maybe from a five to a four. And a part of that is because when it comes to football, and I I know you hate this, but why? But because I went to a school that didn't have a football team, so I love the whole big house. I love that whole environment. That's fine. You know, so that is always going to be with them. I just wish you loved their basketball team. Stay away from mine. No, I don't want one of you oh, Michigan I, State I, this and Wolverine that. Whatever. Pick I mean, a side. <laughs> the point is, fine. You still have a high, and I'm not telling people they're wrong if they love it. No, I know. I am. I am trying to just speak as a 43 year old man who college football and basketball were one and one a for me, and now they have fallen so far by the wayside, based upon what we've done to these games. Look, Stoney, I- I've never had an issue with any player in any sport making money. No. You are worth what someone will pay you. But I will tell you, when you start to dig into what some of these players are getting and they're not even that good, like there are rumors galore that this A.J. Store, the Wisconsin transfer, mm-hmm. is going to make a million dollars. million dollars. Who the hell are you? You're not DeMarcus Cousins. Do, do you th- do you think uh, Kansas has buyer's remorse on a million dollars for Hunter Dickinson? Sure they do. Yeah. Because they realized what a jerk he is. Yes, exactly. But my point to you is the played for three or four schools. It's year six. This kid, these, these freshmen come in. They're nowhere near ready because Steph Curry's destroyed the sport of basketball because now every kid on every AAU team thinks they've got the green light from 28 feet. College football, you know where I stand on this. The portal stuff is outrageous. They've killed bowl season. Kids are transferring the day of their bowl game. Right. Well, I've well, seen it. Well, how about the portal? Brad Under was right. He's trying to prepare for a game against Connecticut while he has another assistant coach who's all he's worried about is the portal because the portal opens during the tournament. How ridiculous is that? That's the thing. There's no rules. Right. There's no guardrails on any of this. So I can't take it seriously. I just can't. I mean, last year, I watched Kansas State make a run without a single player who ever signed the dotted line out of high school to be a Kansas State Wildcat. There's a connection with college athletics that I don't care if you went to the school or not. There was a level that these players made a conscious choice to spend four or five years of their life at the same place you care about. Right. That they walked the same hallways you walked, that went to class. I went to a Big Ten school. I didn't go to Yale. But there was an idea of, hey, I'm pretty sure Plaxico Burris just put my roommate in a wheelchair at IM West. It <laughs> happened. The point is, I mean, it, it was it was I'd love to hear this story. Sad scene. The point is, I want to know where that pals to me doing bong hits with Boo Bowers. Yeah, oh, we got Boo Bowers. <laughs> I got a Plaxico Burris windmill sending a poor 511 kid to a hospital. The, but I want to know where you're at with it. And if you are every bit as passionate, tell me why. But if you are not, if it is starting to slide, if the things you don't like outweigh what you do, or the or if you're like me, I have to be honest, I have more interest tonight watching Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese and maybe Kim Mulkey getting into a fight than I did Duke NC State yesterday. I'm admitting this to you, my audience. I, I, don't, I think... You're part of America. I think all the mud tonight is must see TV. And by the way, I don't have the exact numbers. What? But I know Angel Reese is a portal person. She started at the Maryland. University of Maryland. Yeah, she's and a I, Baltimore kid, right. right? Yeah, LSU, a lot of their players. But are if you por- transfer once, I, I can live right, with it. I know. But this every I know, year. I get it. Come on. You're so right. You want to be an adult? You yes. want to make adult money? Then live by adult rules. Look at the kid who started in Michigan. What, Frankie Collins? He transferred to Arizona State. Now he's in the portal again. Sure he is. 
Look at Horn, the point, the 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 scoring guard for NC State, DJ Horn. I think he started out in a JUCO, then over to Illinois State, then to Arizona State, back to NC State. <laughs> DJ Burns didn't start at NC no. State. He started, I think, Winthrop. I think their whole starting five is transfers. I don't have to embrace that. No, I, I get college it. football. It's the same thing. How, what are we doing here? Where coaches now, fans? By the way, fans having to pay for all this also is gross to me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The the fundraising. So coaches now have to prepare for a bowl, retain their current roster, pill for other people's rosters, and recruit high school in real time. Right. Like, I can't take it serious. You're better off just recruit, not even recruiting high school anymore. Well, that's Deion Sanders. He's yes. basically just said, I'm done with it. Yeah, he just hired Warren Sapp to be a, a defensive analyst. I, I would like to know where you're at, because March Madness for a long time has been my favorite event. It was it's, the greatest. The it's, Final Four, because... But it's, it's not anymore. Mike, it's okay to I say know, it. I know. You're not saying it's bad. No, it's not as good. But you're saying it's lesser than. Oh, yes. And college football, I stand by it. The expanded playoff was the month of November. That's all gone now. Michigan and Ohio State means nothing because the loser will still get in as long as you don't have four losses going in. Correct. It means nothing. I, my my if 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 I was a five, I'm down at about a two right now. And I'm honest, I, I can't lie to my audience. But, I find but, the whole thing nonsense. Well, when the game is being play, actually being played, and you will bring up college football, and the Spartans are playing whoever, you're, aren't you not going to be just as into it as you were before? Mike, I, no? tur- I turned the games off the, this past year. Well, that's because they blow. Okay, but fine. But well, if but the quotient, say- but hold on. I know you're making a point for me now. Point for Mikey. If your team's got to be awesome for you to care, you don't love the game. I don't. I used to love the game. Right. Now, before you, before you moved here, were you NFL one or college one? Buddy, I was sick. I was everything one. Yeah, well, I was too. I was everything one. But no, yes. I, I loved I loved college yeah, football. Yeah, so did I. But I, I thought I, but, college but football. I liked it, but, but actually, Wojo convinced me. I was NFL one, and then it got to the point where, you know, probably around, because of living around here with yeah. the Lions, and here where Michigan State, Michigan meant something every week to a certain extent, I got I got sucked yeah, into just, it. Yeah, just I think a lot of the magic's gone. I think a lot of the stuff that I cared about is gone. I don't have to go along with it. I still love sports, and I still I mean the NFL's the NFL, but a college basketball like this college basketball season, I watch more college ball. I double, I triple, I quadruple down on college ball this year. Right. I really wanted to get more involved, and especially on the betting angle for the podcast. Right. But it was the idea of hey, force feed it. Really try to be back into this the way you were four or five years ago pre-COVID. Stoney, the quality's awful. And then the tournament came around, and I'm watching these games. And I'm not watching out of passion. No, I know. It's almost like I'm spite watching it. Well, well, we said during the season, the college basketball, even more so than the NBA, became unwatchable. It, I, it really did because the quality, everybody says, well, yep. the NBA's not as good because they don't care. Okay, fine, right, as regular season goes. But at least... It was a hot, for the most part, except in this town, a high level of play. You know, the college basketball this year and last year, too, the quality sucked. Awful. Yes, absolutely. You know how you can actually feel better about yourself? What's that? Go to Planet Fitness. It's the home of the judgment-free zone where anyone, and we mean anyone, can feel comfortable and work on their fitness goals. At Planet Fitness, you will experience a squeaky clean gym that has tons of equipment, friendly, knowledgeable staff, and a totally judgment-free atmosphere. And if you're short on time, no problem. You get a full-body workout in just 30 minutes in the Planet Fitness 30-minute circuit. Now, you get all this for just 10 bucks a month. And no commitment. That's right. Planet Fitness is still only 10 bucks a month. And if you want to upgrade to the black card, enjoy use of amenities such as unlimited use of the black card spa, including hydro massage, massage, chairs, and all that great stuff. So save big when you join the Judgment Free Zone from now till April 12th. Dollar down, 10 bucks a month. Join Planet Fitness today for just a dollar down. Cancel anytime. For more information or to join today, visit your local Planet Fitness or go to www.planetfitness.com. It's a judgment free zone.
America's favorite place to watch sports, Stadium Swim, located at Circa Resort and Casino. All the biggest games, best viewing experience. Six pools, three levels, perfect view of the massive screen. Located at Circa Resort and Casino, and they will be packed for the Masters coming up in a couple of weeks. Book your spot today, CircaLasVegas.com. All right, David, give me the ticket text. We're asking the question. I, I mean, I'm, I think I've got more interest watching, and no, this is not one of these ESPN first take dumbass topics. No, this has nothing to do with the women's tournament being better than the men's tournament. It, I'm saying for a singular game, I'm more interested to see tonight LSU-Iowa because of Kim Mulkey, because of Angel Reese versus Caitlin Clark. Maybe somebody gets into a fight I'm more interested in that tonight than I am any of the men's games. And it goes in line with what we talked about with college football. Right. Well, the portal, here's another perfect example. And this is somebody from near where you grew up. What? Junior powered forward Sean Dragordan of Siena has entered the transfer portal after averaging 18 and 7 per game in 14 contests. He started his career in Missouri and then went to Austin P for a year. Now he's at nine and now he's transferring from Siena. So he'll be going to school number four. Four schools, four years. You can't even find your way around campus. Like here, and, and I'll admit it, I don't have a problem with the players getting paid. No. I got a problem with how they're getting paid. I got a problem that the cost has been financed by the fans. And I do have a problem that some of these kids aren't worth a damn and they're making way too much money. Go ahead, I don't care. I'll say it. Oh, you're an old white man. No, don't do that. This is simple. No college athlete that is going to be anything other than an NBA player next year should ever see a million dollars. It's outrageous. And now you have guys that might be decent college players making that money. More power to them. Yeah. It's the adults who have failed the fans. Right. The players, if someone's willing to pay you that, that's Fine. I'm yeah. talking about what right. it does to my passion for it. Correct. I cannot take it seriously that a guy that might be a second round pick for Illinois makes 600 grand. Well, let me ask you a question because you've criticized uh, Izzo for not going in the portal enough. Maybe part of that is they don't want to pay in the portal. So now that they have the fans raising the money, even though they have Ishbia yeah. and have Gilbert yeah. and have, uh, I forget the other guy's name, the Saint. Um, does that change your Does that change your opinion? No, because my problem with Tom is if you don't like it, then do what Jay Wright did: leave, okay, or stifle and get in the dirt. I don't want to hear coaches complaining while still making seven million dollars right. a year. Okay, Saban didn't like it; he left. Then he's asked his opinion on it after he's left. I'll listen to you talk, but if you're gonna stay there and collect your check, these are the rules of engagement. I don't know what to tell you. Not yelling at you. I, know, I, just, I, know, I know. Because when you complain as a coach while you're making money, it, it it's talking out of both sides. Yeah, but the point is, I'm trying to make is you're you don't like the fact that these also ran kids are making a lot of money, but they're the ones who are in the portal, and part of the reason that they go to these schools is because they are getting this money right. that is raised by the kids, by the fans. Right. So if the fans don't give the school money. You're not going to be able to get the kid in the portal that you right. want. Right, it's the chicken and the egg yeah, okay. because there's no leadership. Right. There's right. no central oh, yeah. governing well, the body. A, you know, right, there's no rules. All you would need to attach to this is the kids can make whatever they want if they sign a contract. Yeah. Do you know what breeds rivalries? Do you know what breeds interest from fans like me? Knowing who the hell the players are. Yeah, exactly. Do you know how many times this year, early in college basketball, I go, whoa. It's like the Spider-Man meme. I go, wait, he's playing over there? You can't keep up with this no. stuff. 1,100 players are in the portal in the first 14 days. Right. And how many of them are really good? 100, maybe? Uh, no, I, I, if I that? 15 or 20. Yeah, okay. You're talking difference makers? Well, no, I'm talking about pretty like good players. Like a Johnny Broom at Auburn when he left Moorhead State? Yeah. Stuff like that? Yeah. Uh, 15 or 20. Okay. The kid Alabama got, Grant, uh, was it Grant Thomas. Nelson? Grant what? Nelson, yes, from... South Dakota State right. and North Dakota and, 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 State. Difference maker. Right. Might be 15 of those guys. Uh, um, Harrison, uh, the kid from North Carolina, transferred from Stanford. He was the freshman. Oh, Ingram. Year. Thank you, Harrison Ingram. Maybe 15 of those guys. Okay. Most of the rest of this, you're hmm. going to end up with a Matty Sizoko. <laughs> Two, four, eight, five, three, nine, nine. <laughs> you wish we'd enter the portal. <laughs> Please, portal, now. <laughs> Go to Mark, 97.1. What's up, Mark? 
Hey, guys. Uh, I'm actually a Tennessee fan, so I was pretty passionate about it yesterday. Um, Did you like the way that game was officiated? Um, that was a circus. <laughs> you out you outscore a team by 24 points in the three-point line in today's college basketball, and you lose by multiple possessions. Get the F out. <laughs> Sounds about right. It was a circus. So what do you um, what do you got on the topic I brought up here? My nuts? Well, no, and I think like for me personally, I'm been done following recruiting. I've been done kind of following all the off season machinations. Once the fall comes, I'll look at the roster and go, Josh Heupel, you better go win. I don't really how the sausage is made. I've totally lost interest in all that part of it. But let's say you're Mississippi State basketball and you got that freshman Hubbard. Who's going to command seven hundred grand on the portal, and you don't have the funds to pay for it? And you're a Mississippi State fan. You go, why am I doing this? Right? Why it's care? It's a waste of time. Right? Why would you care? And I think they're banking on people are just going to cheer for the laundry. Yeah, and, and I'm, I'm oh, not. Yes, that's the old Seinfeld bit. You did a bit. You just cheer for the uniform. Yeah, but it's it, but I'm leave, with, but I'm with Mark on this. It has to mean something. And now the very conferences we play in, or the very tournament you want to go to they're even going to try to take this away i mean mark i don't think you'll disagree with me i think we're 18 to 24 months away from from the big 12 the big 10 and the sec breaking away from the ncaa and fully destroying everything and it all in the, for the chasing of a check that isn't going to the players correct like if, if the schools were paying the players and i don't know how it's a complicated mess with title nine and all that i get it but the fans having to – if I'm, you know, Johnny Vall fan and my team goes in the toilet next year in, in October, what am I doing this for? I don't, I don't know any of these players. That's Why right. do I care? That's... There's no personal story to it. No, and that's I'm where I'm at with laundry. it. Now, I'm Mark, 100%. And what you said, look, I, I, maybe other people, it doesn't affect them the same way. I think it's grotesque that these schools negotiate the huge TV deals and it's the fans paying for them. Imagine if the Detroit Lions wanted to fundraise for Amon Ross St. Brown's extension. It'd be be done already. No, but you would look at it and go, wait, what? Yeah, I'm paying for my ticket. Right. And shouldn't that be enough? No, now in college, it's even a layer worse. I'm yeah. paying for the ticket. I'm donating. God forbid you sent one of your kids there or you yourself mm-hmm. took college loans and you want me to pay for some kid I've never heard of who's never put a helmet on? Oh, that's Fugazi. Like, and I'm just, do it. Uh, hey, God bless. But for people like me, this is all going right downhill. It's just, I, I, it's, it's a joke. You don't even know who the players are. I know. Think about it. Especially somebody like you who follows this crap really closely. Closer than most people. Okay? Right. And if you don't, can't tell, tell me which school has this player, this player, then what's that say? Right. And again, it takes you a few weeks once you get involved around yes. Thanksgiving where you're like, Oh, he's that Mike. Hey, fun fact. This is why I thought it would resonate with the people. <laughs> yeah. My bad. It's just, it's, it's one of those things where the final four I'm normally amped for. Right. Don't care. And I know it's a bad thing for a radio host to tell their listeners what they don't care about. Correct. What juice is there for this? At best, I get Monday night, UConn and Purdue at best. Even then, what's the number on that game going to be? At least 11 and a half. I would think Wouldn't you. I, I just, what's the, what's the juice? I don't know. How many great games have there been? Like, uh, people want to keep citing that Grand Canyon Alabama game. Fast doesn't mean great. No. Frenetic doesn't mean great. The ending of the Houston, Texas A&M game, the Oakland NC State game was good. There were some good games. There were a couple. Alabama, North Carolina was good, but it was fr- frenetic. The, 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 the mainstay of what this tournament is, is missed free throws and shooting about 10% from three-point lane. Right. Okay? And the Cinderella story of NC State, once again, and also, if you want to say Edie. And I can't stand watching Edie play. I, I, he's laborious. See, and he's, here, here's the problem, though, Stoney. And you're, what you're saying is right. Those are great moments. Those were a couple great games. But there's not How many more. games do we have when we only have a handful of things right. to say that were good? Right. There's no game in this tournament that you are riveted to watch. And maybe we would have had it. Jamal Shedd getting hurt this weekend didn't help. Yes. But these games, I mean, watch. That was, a, that was a good ending, the Houston-Texas A&M game. And the Tennessee game yesterday. That's not a great basketball game when one player shoots 22 free throws. It's not. Well, you know what should get you fired up, Mike, for this weekend? Oh, let's hear it. Root for the Big Ten, baby. I ha- I have no I'm not, I'm not like affiliation. That either. I don't either. care. 
Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. You want to talk madness? Check out the great deals, Moran Buick GMC. Right now, Lisa twenty four Sierra four by four elevation three twenty nine a month. Twenty four month lease nineteen nine nine down. Get zero point nine percent APR for thirty six months. Something's off with that current vehicle? No problem. Just go to Moran Buick GMC MoranExpress dot com. You'll get the certified loaner. You get on with your day. You don't have to sit there and waste time. They'll call you when your vehicle's ready. It's Moran Buick GMC where you always get the best price, period. It's on Telegraph, just north Eureka and Taylor, or at MoranExpress.com. It's Moran Buick GMC. We are professional grade.
All right, a couple of ticket texts. David, you said you got something for us, then we'll do a football today because Stoney is all hopped up in mock draft season, so we'll get involved with that. David, what do you have for us? Yeah, a couple of ticket texts here on the college topic. Within a few years, I see myself being completely done with college football and basketball. You're right, Mike. It's not entertaining anymore, and the portal has killed it for me. I mean, 1,100 players in 14 days have hit the portal. I got Stoney over here trying to break in with a live update. He's trying to get Jeremy Otto to tell you about Prairie View 6-7 forward hitting the portal. 2.9 I, points per game. Yeah, right, just, what, what, Illinois' backup center just hit the portal. Where are you going, son? <laughs> I'm at a two. It's hard to care about college sports when they let a team openly cheat win the natty. It's basically like the WWE. I, I mean, again, I, I'm still waiting for Central to acknowledge it was Connor Stallions on, on Michigan State sideline. <laughs> That to me is unbelievable. That's going to come in his book. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like we're we're in silly season. Go we ahead. are. Search player profiles of at least a dozen players I watched play yesterday, and I think all of them were transferred. Yeah. This is getting ridiculous. The whole thing is, yeah. except for Duke players, right? And and, and again, I, I UConn's got three guys that Danny Hurley recruited, two transfers. That's their starting five. It's, you have to have like a blended portfolio mm-hmm. of players. I'm not saying it's wrong. Like, I don't mind if a kid transfers and goes, look, I've put in three years at this place. I'm all conference. I did everything I could. There's a payday out there. But the idea is once you go somewhere to leave again and again, I, I, can't, right. I can't. I can't do it. You have to sit out after Fran- transfer number one. And That's- sign a contract. Yes. There has to be a contract that if you transfer and if it's a one-year deal, you want to bet on yourself, so be it. But you know what I would do if I were a school? I'd never sign it. If you're coming here, you got to be here at least two years. Yeah, that'd be nice, but that ain't never going to happen. Uh, that, Mike, it's fine. I but, know. but so guess what happens? The world moves on without yeah, me. Yeah, I know. That's fine. Won't be long until MSU's an NIT team anyways. Go <laughs> yeah, ahead, I'll read you one more, and then I'll get to what I need to get to. Yeah. Someone says, uh, I'm done with college sports. It's not about quality to me, but it's about conference realignment. I'm not a pro sports guy, so I'm probably sportless really soon. It, it's, it's tough. The conference realignment in football matters way more than hoops. It's really, really silly that in about 90 days, I'll be getting ready to do a bunch of work for the podcast and for this show and getting ready, and there will be no Pac-12. And Texas will not play in the Big 12. They'll be in the SEC. And we'll be doing, oh, hey, look, Florida State is suing. Or Clemson, who just made a huge run, is suing the very conference they play in. Like, I, I, it's Oh, USC's a Big 10 team now. Oh, really? And Florida State, they want to get out of the ACC. I, I just, you get my point. Yes. I, I it's, it's stupid. It, it's reached but it's, it, it's, stupidity It's gotten phase. to steroid levels because... Years ago, we saw the Southwestern Conference. It just dissolved. I mean, that was Texas, Oklahoma, Texas A and M, and that—that's when it really started. When the conferences, true. Now, David, what do you have? You said you had some for yeah, guys. Uh, something that happened on Saturday, and I'm—I'm I'm just what it's like ridiculous. Rashi Rice apparently is being investigated, involved in a six-car accident. He was racing. Uh, it was a Lamborghini and a Corvette. They were racing on the freeway in Dallas on Saturday evening. I saw the video. Um, dash cam video. What's crazy about the dash cam videos, you not only do you see the crash, you see the racing, but they get out of the car. And walk away. Both vehicles and just walk away. And there's individuals that were hurt in this. And apparently there's going to be a statement released by Rashi Rice. He he's now has a lawyer involved Well, he here. better lawyer up because the reality is this. Uh, unless those cars aren't registered to you and aren't owned by you, and that wasn't you in the video openly walking away from a six-car accident you caused that sent two people to the hospital, I really don't care to hear from you. Because if those cars are registered to you and you weren't driving them, then I need to understand how they were being driven by someone else. Correct. I just, it, the, the whole thing, it's insane. And according unless, to police, it was a guy were, named, unless it was a guy named Jeff Jackson. <sighs> yeah, according to the Dallas police, it they were registered to him. Both vehicles right. were registered to him. This is stupid. And again, the video of them walking away and the guy filming them, because apparently that's all we do in society now. He's like, wait, you're just going to leave the cars there? Sure. I'm just, look. It gets, were there any Georgia football players involved? Though? That was no, because Rashi Rice went to SMU. I, it's, I know. But <laughs> this is where, I, look, every... It, 
Making mistakes is part of being a human being. All right. Now, if he stayed there and you take what's coming and you, yes. you know, you make sure people are okay and you had a stupid moment, that's one thing. And you can go through the legal process and you can still be a Kansas City Chief and you can still do what you got to do. But the idea that he walked away and cared so little about the people he injured and 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 wa- and thought and was so stupid. But I'm sorry, the word stupid applies. Yes. If this is Rashi Rice. David, that's where the NFL should just come in and go, you know what? If Jamison Williams can miss half a season for a gambling snafu, uh, Rashi Rice ought to be suspended for eight games. Period. No doubt. There's a stand. Hey, here's the theme of the day, everybody. There are standards. <laughs> More places ought to have them. Here's the thing. The other thing is, I'm, I'm not a big car guy. I mean, I drive a Chevy Blazer. Look, I don't I, think we need to know it's, the vehicle. It's, it's a fine car. Carry on. Okay. Why does somebody need that? Now, what's a Lam- I said, like I said, I don't know. What's a Lamborghini cost? Depends what you buy, but I mean, if he bought a, a like a, a Huracan, I mean, it would be four fifty, five hundred. I mean, I mean, there's there's all kinds of. Pr- Listen, he's a rookie. If yeah. you're Tyree Kill and you just signed a thirty million dollar contract, you want right. to buy a Lambo. I think your financial advisor would be like, all right, cool. You're a rookie. I mean, half the money is vapor anyways right. to taxes. I don't, I, I, there's not a financial advisor on the planet to be like, yeah, let's go out and rock a half-million-dollar car. I, no, Mike, I, I can answer your question okay. there. That's abs- it, it, it's absurd, but you know what? Hey, he can live how he wants to yeah, live. Right. I'm making a point. Doing the dumb thing is only a piece of it. Right. To walk away when you've caused a six-car accident and leave the cars on the highway. You got to see this video, guys. Oh, it's incredible. Are they looking for the police looking for him, or is he on the? La- yes, or is he they on are the- looking. He's yes. on the cam. I mean, Lamb. They are looking. They are definitely looking. Yeah. Speaking of which, Dallas police are looking for him. Cam did show up yesterday. He finally turned himself in. Yes. But I just, I, this is where the league should step in and go. Here's the deal. Is that you on the video? Yeah. Did you cause a car accident? Yeah. Did, is that you walking away? Yeah. You're spent for eight games. Because, A, you're an idiot and you don't deserve the right to play football. And, B, we've suspended people for way less. True. The, you are hurting the image of the league. You know, there was a woman driving with a four-year-old child who he sent to the hospital and he didn't care enough to check. He walked away. Come on, man. I know. At a certain point, you know what? Eight games. Take responsibility. Eight games. Call your agent. Sell the car. I, I don't, I'm sorry. I know I sound like such an old man today. David, what has happened to me? No, you're right. You know what it is? It's because I'm here. No. So the old vibes just, you know, go across the table. No. Mike, it's not. I, I, but like, I don't feel like having standards. Well, you know what? Maybe it is having standards makes you old now because young people have none. None. This country has none. No. People have jobs and then they leave after a year or two because they think they can always find a better one and all that, you know. It's, but no, the Rashi Rice thing, David, my opinion is simple. If that is indeed him on the video, and those are indeed his cars, he shouldn't play football for the first eight weeks of the season next year. Period. Because that video shows you NFL football player does not care about anyone else but himself. NFL football player sent mother of a four-year-old to hospital and is a bird brain. You should be suspended for such things to me. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. Um, all right, sports calendar loaded the next few weeks with baseball back, Masters around the corner, hockey playoffs, NBA, and yes, the conclusion of what I largely deem to be a dreadful NCAA tournament this year. $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, fanduel.com slash ticket. Make that first bet a winner. It's FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. 21 and up, present Michigan. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued now with trouble. Bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms. Sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem 1 800 270 
All right, we got a little football on a brain. Stoney's all hopped up. The Godfather is hopped up on mock drafts and I things. Know. David, what do you have for us besides the obvious? Yes, we do have a mock draft from The Ringer here, and we have two trades in the top 10. Let's hear it. So let's start here with the obvious. Number one, Caleb Williams goes to the Bears. Jaden Daniels goes number two to the Washington Commanders. Time out for one moment. Yes. Stoney, what is your opinion on Jaden Daniels? I think he's going to be really good. You so you are pro Daniels. Yes, in fact, the last Michigan State football game I saw at Spartan Stadium oh my was God. the Arizona State game where he fourth was and cool. nineteen. Yes, Mike Tressel. Yes. Hey, we got a spy. It's like Joe Bocci in the middle of the field. <laughs> yeah, who could forget? Yeah, but I am sorry to bring that up. No, but I, I don't care. I have no feelings anymore. I just I, w- I wanted to know. I, l- yes. I had no idea if you liked him well or not. Well deserved the Heisman Trophy. He was okay. he was really. Good conference he played in, I think. David, yes. the, uh, the 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 trade, please. All we right. do have a trade here at three. The Vikings trade up. They've traded, of course, eleven and twenty three or whatever to get the Patriots pick at number three. They take Drake May. Whoa! They also give in this thing one hundred eight and next year's first rounder. Yes, I would never. No, it's too much. There is no scenario where I would give that up as the Minnesota Vikings, ever. It's two number ones. I mean, you could give up 11 and 23 and move to five and get J.J. McCarthy. It's three number ones, Stoney. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Two this year, one next year. Yeah, but they get one back. So yeah, uh, I I will vote no on that. And Look, I like Drake May. I think Drake May's got a hell of a lot of talent, prototype. You know, he's played behind a bad old line, unlike other people. I just, but I'm not giving that up. And yes, I'm the king of saying, if you don't have a quarterback, get one. Within reason. Right. We can't be Mike Dick on the cover of ESPN Magazine trading a whole draft to get somebody. <laughs> the greatest. At number four, the obvious, Marvin Harrison Jr. continues to go to the Arizona Cardinals. Isn't that the right fit, though? I think so. Yes. I think people have overthought it here with the Cardinals. The problem is there's a lot of people who believe that for some reason he's not the best receiver in the draft. That's called prospect fatigue. Yes. Go ahead, David. We have a trade. The New York Jets trade up, take the number fifth pick from the set from the Los Angeles Chargers, and they select Malik Neighbors, wide receiver LSU. And they give up a 2025 first rounder as well, do the Jets. Okay. I'll, I'll play along for fun purposes. There's okay, no. great. That the, the Jets, when they don't win the Super Bowl next year, <laughs> and when Aaron Rodgers opens up some mushroom farm. That, that organization will crater to Middle Earth. It's unbelievable. They are so all in for this year. <laughs> yeah, I, I would just say no to that. They can't be in the business of giving up a future one. But fine, go ahead. And then we continue with the normal number six, a wide receiver for the New York Giants. Uh, that is Roma Dunze. Wow, Giants don't take J.J. McCarthrop? They do not no. take J.J. McCarthrop. Uh, I will give you where he goes. He goes number 12 to the Denver Broncos. Yeah, he would never get past Sean Payton. Agreed. I have no – and again, that's probably the most – everybody looks around and goes, all right, I, I could live with that. Because the difference between going 20th and 12th, not a big deal. Right. You start getting into the top five, it gets a little silly. Yeah, that that would make sense to me. Where are you at with J.J.? I th- the problem with J.J. is we don't know. I, I think he's going to be a good quarterback, but not. A, I don't think he's going to be a great quarterback – and I think he's going to take a while. Well, when he, you throw it 15 times a game in college, right, it usually that's the, does. That's the problem. Like, no, look, if he played in LSU's offense, that's his different. numbers would be completely different. Oh, I, probably. I said from the very yeah, beginning, I didn't remember when he was not his fault. time with Cade. Yeah. And I'm going, why didn't you just go to Ole Miss? Yeah. They would have paid you a million dollars, and you would put up 5,000 yards a year, right. and this this would be settled. Right. Go ahead, David. Yeah, so let me give you and go back as of the trade down. So 10, now the Chargers are sitting at 10. They took offensive tackle from Oregon State, Talese Fuaga. He's I, mean. I like him. That's such a hardball pick. Too. He's very mean. Yeah. Yes. Not hardball. The, the, well, the, no, hardball's the, mean too. But, yes. but the kid from Oregon yeah. State, he's he just plays very mean. Then the Patriots get with their trade down here at a number eleven, Quinion Mitchell. But what? Uh, why? What? Okay, hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna just I'm gonna punt on this and I'm gonna let the Godfather handle it. 
Explain what the hell the Patriots are doing. I have no freaking All clue. the cap space this offseason. What'd right. they do with it? Nothing. Okay. Did they get a quarterback in the draft when they're sitting top three? Apparently not. No. They've traded down. Help me. Who's their quarterback next year? I mean, they got rid of Mac Jones, right? Like I, I said. they brought back. Um, help me. Bailey former, Zappi. Former, Zappi, yeah. Yeah, well, they have him, but um, can't think of the other guys. Now, he used to play for them, return. Yeah, he's not good. Yeah, don't care. What the hell are oh, they Jacoby doing? Oh, Jacoby Brissett. Not a starter in this no. league. No. I okay, David. I will say this: it's a fun mock draft. I don't think there is a scenario where the Patriots can trade outside of the top six and not end up with a quarterback. Mm-hmm. I just it doesn't, from a franchise standpoint, it doesn't make sense. Well, now who do your Steelers get there, David? Uh, the Steelers they select at number twenty a Marius Mims tackle out of Georgia. That makes sense. You need offensive line yes. help. Yeah. But You've Georgia been, offensive lineman has not you been know, great. has not been great. Not huh? great. No. Shout out Isaiah Wilson. <laughs> uh, the Eagles take at 22, Jared Verse. I'd be pretty good replacing Reddick, yes. I like Verse that. is one of the guys where there seems to be a huge variance in opinion. I've seen him top 10. I've seen him damn near outside of the first round. It's, it's fascinating how draft to draft, no one knows no one has a consensus no. on him. Well, there doesn't seem to be a consensus on this either because in mock drafts, he's all over the board. Patriots get those two picks from the trade down. At 23, they select Brock Bowers, tight end Georgia. He doesn't make it to 23. You, I, would, you wouldn't think so. I don't get what's happened. You know, for me, he's still one of the five or six players in this draft that right. you just look at as a true difference maker. I mean, I've never seen a tight end like him. The routes that he runs. If the Giants took him at six, you'd be okay with that? Sure. Okay. Uh, if someone could tell me uh, how much longer we're waiting for Darren Waller to make a decision. <laughs> right. Uh, I wouldn't have a problem with it. Okay. Like, I don't – my team blows. So, basically, just you handing me a good football player yes. is handing a homeless person a blanket. Right. You can't complain that it's not made of cashmere. I, I just I, – I don't care. Give me a human being okay. who can possibly make my dad smile. This team is killing my dad. At 29, the Detroit Lions take out of Missouri. Rakestraw. And from the Detroit area, Darius Darius Robinson. Yeah, the D tackle. Good player. Yep. Listen, I I am, people are going to hate this in the lead up to the draft because I will turn into a Brad bot at 29. Let Brad cook. I don't have a huge opinion at 29. Okay, let me ask you this, though. In In this scenario, this guy is available at 29. What? Nate Wiggins from Clemson. Okay, here's what I would say to you. Brad Holmes' specialty in scouting for the Rams was defensive backs. Mm-hmm. He drafted Brian Branch and got it right. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. I, they wanted Witherspoon. Yes. Now, they would have been right. He ended up being very good. Yes. I, if he passed on him, right, I they- would actually defend it by saying, guys, there's look, something he didn't like. Look at this. Look at his track record. Yes, in that sense, I could. Yeah, yeah. he's earned that. I got no. Uh, but Wiggins that. makes sense on paper that he's long, lanky. He's got big top end speed. You, I mean, he had a play against Miami. He chased down an 80 yard touchdown. The ultimate grit hustle guy mm-hmm. got him lines. down at the two. Right. I. It would make sense to me. Mm-hmm. Guy, right, give me, give me. Where's Penix go? Is he with the Giants? Penix does not get you drafted are in the a piece first round, of garbage, which is a shock. All right, to can me. I ask this question? Yeah. When it's all said and done, and we're all working the draft that week, does Michael Penix go in the first round? Yes. Yes, I think so too. Very hard for me. If we're drafting JJ on projection, how do you not draft Penix on production? That end of the first round seems I th- I th- right I, for a team to trade into. It might not be a good enough reason, but I think it's the injury history. Okay. That, that, would, that would be the only reason. And if the medicals don't add up or yes. you think he's going to be Lieutenant Dan by year three, <laughs> so be it. I get it. I got you. Jenny. <laughs> you got new legs. All right. <laughs> David, thank you for the mock draft.
Brought to you by Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men. Fresh off a sweep, the Tigers are in New York tonight to begin a three-game series with the Mets. They'll send Reese Olsen to the mound along with the following lineup. Fearling, Ibanez, and Torkelson at the top. It's Green, Canna, and Rogers in the middle. Urshela, Baez, and Kelly at the bottom. You can hear the game right here on 97 One. The ticket at 7. The Wings are in Tampa tonight ahead of their game with the Lightning. Oli Mata is the odd man out of the lineup with Jake Wallman returning. Dylan Larkin was hit with an air and shot in the team's OT loss over the weekend. Derek Lalone says he's good to go. Coverage starts on WWJ at 645. Pistons, two and a half point favorites to beat the injury hampered Grizzlies tonight. Xavier Simpson, who's played mostly with the Motor City Cruise this year, signed a 10 day contract with Memphis over the weekend. It's Jeff Jackson. Get it right. <laughs> <laughs> he played his first game Saturday against the Magic, logging nine minutes along with four assists. And finally, March Madness on the women's side continues tonight as a star studded matchup pits Iowa against LSU. Caitlin Clark getting ready for a rematch with Angel Reese. Here's the all time leading score on that. Tip set for 715 at the Coral Health Update Desk. I'm Jeremy Otto. For more, go to 971 the ticket or odyssey.com. Um, I think they're talking about the big scoreboard. I don't know. I it's just it's what Roberto does. It's his motif, if you will. Um, you know, in the update there, I mm -hmm. am I am I alone in this? I'm actually watching that game tonight. You're definitely not alone. Okay, in that game. like it's. I mean, there are a lot of people because the Wings game is obviously very important. No, and that's fine. But you you can watch multiple things. Do you know how many baseball games I have mixed in with Shawshank Redemption? <laughs> Okay, like you can watch multiple things. Hey, you accept they get confused. You know, the manager comes out, and the next thing you know, Dufresne's coming in from the bullpen. I mean, that that's what happens sometimes. We're a simulation of most of the Tiger at bats. It's yeah, Dufresne crawling yes, out of the pipe. Exactly. But tonight, you're right. LSU Iowa is must see TV, and it's a rivalry. Yes, I mean it's Angel Reese, it's Caitlin Clark, right. and honestly, Kim Mulkey's a complete psycho. So like, I know. I'm in. I need to see Kim Mulkey. Glitter blazer, maybe holding a folding chair and hitting somebody. Like, I'm in. I will watch this tonight, and I don't find women's basketball particularly entertaining because it's played below the rim, and I'm Correct. so conditioned to the men's game. Correct. That doesn't mean they're not skilled. Oh, they're, they're incredibly very, skilled. Yes, they're great but it's shooters. It's very hard for me to watch. But tonight, based on last year where Angel Reese did the whole John Cena routine, right. put the ring on it. Caitlin Clark, I get tired of having to hear about her, but fine. Here it is. Biggest stage. You got aced out by this team last year. Plus, you got the backdrop of Kim Mulkey going after newspapers left and right. By the way, rightfully so. These newspapers <laughs> are crap. But my point is, I mean, honestly, this whole, whoa, Kim Mulkey's dad. It's like, that's the article? Come well, on, it was man. Just, it was a profile piece of her life, and so she didn't like it when – because she didn't talk to them, all the quotes were actually from her, from her own book. So she well, shouldn't have been pissed. that's the problem with writing a book, isn't it? Yes, exactly. Uh, she shouldn't have been pissed. But tonight, it's compelling. Okay, so if you are a per like like me, I have not watched, well, I've, I've watched a piece or two. Like, I, I did see the, the Cardoza Angel Reese showdown and watch pieces yeah. of that. I've seen the highlights of a girl for Iowa State who's the, the center. Uh, Audie Cooks or whatever her name is, and she put up like 50 points, right. and you're like, how the hell? But, like, I will actually tune into this a little bit tonight. Just oh, yes. Because to, I'm so disenfranchised. Like, the NBA right now. First of all, forget about the Pistons. Yeah. I'm a Celtics fan. I don't tune in on a nightly basis. It's, it's a bad product. Alert me when the playoffs start. Baseball, yes. However... 159 games to go for the Tigers. Right. I got time. This is for a trip to the Final Four tonight. This will be wings depending on how they're playing. Yep. 
and I will actually attempt to watch a little bit of the Caitlin Clark Angel Reese yes. throwdown. And believe it or not, and I can't believe I'm saying the second game is going to be interesting too. Uh, USC against UConn. What is that girl's name for USC? Uh, Juju, Juju Watson. Watkins. Watkins. Yes. Yeah. Our, our, and she has the potential. She won't score as many points probably as Caitlin Clark in her career, but she is could be. The, she'll take double the, the, the shots the, though. Yes, yeah, the best all around player. But like, is the average fan in Detroit going to flip this game on tonight? I think so. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. Are you watching tonight? Caitlin Clark versus Angel Reese, or okay. We don't want to like spotlight players. LSU versus Iowa. Why can't you spotlight the players? It's the only reason I'm tuning in. I know. People don't like that for some reason. Well, too bad. I know. Okay. So the defending champs against Iowa, Wings Lightning, or Tigers Mets. Why can't it be all of it? Well, some people only have one TV. Now it's called go, a remote control. I, I, I know. That's what I'm going to do. And if you doing. cut the cord, it's your problem. It's not yes. my fault you're going to have a pinwheel rolling around when you try to right. turn the channel. Although some people say the UT... YouTube TV is the best because you can watch like six games at once. Multiple, yeah, but, yes. Yeah, but then you're asking for a seizure. You can't do that. <laughs> All these people, oh, how many TVs in your man cave? It's like, dude, if you have six TVs, you have zero. Right. You cannot focus on six college football games. It's no, not I, possible. I know. I, I get it. You're going to have a seizure. The EMS are going to be over. It's going to be know. a disaster. I, I get it. Two but, four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. David, are you watching this tonight? Yeah, I was already planning to watch tonight. I love the women's game. It's so much better than the men's right now. So, yes, I am watching tonight. Are you doing one of these ESPN first take routines, or do you mean this? No, I'm serious. I've been watching the women's basketball games for a long time, even more now. that There's names here with Caitlin Clark and Juju Watkins. Okay, since it is below the rim, is it because of the, the fundamentals they pass the ball? What is it? It's just they have names. There are no names in the men's game right now. There's not many. That, that's a valid point. So there are names, and they're good. They're yeah, they actually are, yeah, really good. The only good. reason we know Edie, he's been there since 1993. Correct. And it's I, I don't think it's, you know, I, I love this whole thing, too, where they're like, well, he's hard to officiate like Shaq. Shaq was, the, was a one-of-one. One. He was the greatest modern center to be born. He was designed in a let. Not fat Shaq the late years. Not no. the big leprechaun no. in Boston. Not your, yeah, I was going to say, you're Celtic. Not the, the Shaqaleers. Shaq proper at LSU. And with the magic. No, no. Yes. Unbelievable athlete. Did Zach Eady, I God love him, and he's not a bad kid. No. I don't have a bad thing to say about him. Did you like what he said about Rick Barnes? But he ain't great. He said, you know, I, I wanted to go to play. He didn't want me. He didn't even look at me. None of us did. I know. Besides, we all know that Purdue did some blood oaths with Satan to always have a seven-footer. Now they got a ginger one coming in next year. They got a redheaded Edie next year. After they had already had Ivan Drago. Oh, what was right. that kid's name? Yes, I know. Uh, and then they, I, know they, exactly just, I can't take it. They've had seven-footers <laughs> Then they had, they, years. They, they had the one kid who got injured at, L, at LCA one year. Like he broke his arm. LCA. During, during the NCAA tournament one year. Not Spencer Haas. It might have been him. You're talking the seven-footer before him. Yeah. I don't know. Let me go look. The, well, the whole, whatever, yeah. The point I'm making yeah, I know. is, <laughs> it's not fair. I know. I know. Zach Eady can't be mad at any of us. He no. was born to go to Purdue. It's right. all they have. Right. They, they build spaceships. That, that, they have a sweatpants-wearing mascot, and they have seven-footers. But I thought it was, you know, but what I like about him is more off the floor than on the floor. <laughs> Did you see when they, they cut the net down? First of all, he didn't he need a ladder. There. He didn't need a ladder. Yeah. But he gave Gene Katie a part of it. Well, I thought I that like was pretty that. cool. I, listen, I like that. Yeah. And I miss the characters of college basketball. Here we go. I sound like I Clint Eastwood and Grant Torino Gene again. Gene Katie, the greatest. Come Get over. my lawn. I, I miss the c- celebrity coaches. I miss them. The Big East. That's all it's it was. It's why I so desperately wanted Rick Pitino back. Yeah. I wanted a playing game in Dayton. Izzo's leisure wear versus Patino's white suit. There's no coaches I care about anymore. I know. None. 248-539-9797. Ticket text, David. Uh, no channel, or same, sorry, no chance of watching the women's hoops, wings, and tigers tonight. Okay. Someone else says, I might watch it for a second, but that's about it. Uh, you usually can't hold my attention that long. And I agree with that. That's why I'm mixing it in. But if there was one game, if you ever wanted me to watch one women's basketball game, it would be tonight because of a pre-existing rivalry. The fact that Angel Reese had to come out and go, believe it or not, we don't hate each other, right. which is code for we do. 
and then you have an insane coach in a glitter pants suit that's going to be so- doing something insane. I, I'll just, I got to tune in for a little bit. There are a lot of characters in this woman. Dawn Staley, she's a great coach, but she she goes at it a lot, well, too. And the team's also like 40 and all. <laughs> I know. And Cardoza, the, the Brazilian center they got, is absolutely just, she, she kills people. I know. So, no, I, I, I will watch. Can I tell you I'll be glued to it? No. All right, more importantly, what's the line? I, Did you do it on Cash no, the Ticket? No, no, no. Oh, come no, on. No, Stoney, I know the line because I, I saw it on ESPN earlier. Okay. So I'm not telling you from, I would have no idea what to do or where the money is. Yeah, it's sure. Iowa minus one and a half. Okay. No, we're not doing, no, we're not doing this. I'm not <laughs> doing this with you. I, 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 Mike, I don't. I don't know how to bet women's hoops. I don't know what's important, what's not. Please. But you know people who do. Who? I don't know. I don't know anyone who bets women's basketball. I think, come on, you're Mr. Cash the Ticket. You, no. have to have, you must have a women's basketball insider somewhere. No, I do not. I would take you LSU. Want, do you want, hey, congrats, you're, you're hired. <laughs> LSU with the money line is what I would take. They're not going to, they're not losing to Iowa. Not losing. Okay, what do you want me to argue? Uh, you're, <laughs> we'll get to the callers next. Uh, all right. <laughs> Yeah, David, what I do you like want me that, to say? L- that LSU money line and USC. What's the line? You know what? Game? I'm just going to start half. reading. Three, uh, in favorite? an instant, an auto accident can put you in the worst financial position of your life. If you you got to hire the right lawyer to make sure they make the insurance companies pay what they owe you. It is David Femininio, him and his team. They've made insurance companies pay for over 30 years. They can help you with your case as well. David, ready to speak to you personally right now? If you call eight five five. 6-5 crash or go to that website. Get David. Get paid.com.
All right, straight to the people. Stoney has got hot takes only. He's got a J.J. McCarthy thing we're going to get to a little later in the hour, but we're asking you. I mean, this is, I don't know what you would compare this to, but is this the biggest women's college basketball game in the history of women's college basketball? For, um, for interest purposes, it might be. I think there was a, I don't remember what year, because I certainly know his story when it comes to uh, oh women's hoops. Here goes Stoney. You know, I watched Cheryl Miller live. No, no, it was after Cheryl Miller. So one of the uh, Connecticut-Tennessee games, I remember. The old Pat Summit. Like yes, Candace yes. Parker days? Yeah, Pat like Summit versus Gino when they hated each other. Okay, yeah. I, but you get my yeah. point. Yes, exactly. Like, this is as big of a, a uh, spotlight moment for the sport as there is. I will watch the Wings tonight. I will have this game as a piece of the of the pie. Now, Tigers, all of this is dependent on, like, if local team, if the wings are really in it, yeah, I'm opting out of this, and I'll be on the wings third right, period. Right. But, like, I do want to watch some of this. I get tired of hearing about Caitlin Clark. I may well, as well so, watch her play. Well, since you don't, you don't go on social media, you could actually DVR the women's game and go into the Doug Karsh bubble and then watch it without knowing after the Wings game. Well, I don't need to do that. I just remote control. Beep, bop, boop, bop. Okay. I know. That's what the last button was created no, for. No, I know. What am well, I, doing I, here? I know what you said. You wanted to just lock in on the Wings. No, I, I, I'll do what's okay. necessary. Okay. Yeah, no, yeah. the Doug Karsh bubble's for losers. That's ridiculous. Uh, sometimes it's good. All right. Let's go to Courtney971. Courtney, how you doing? Hi, how are you? Excellent. What's on your mind? I am a longtime listener, first time caller. I absolutely love the show, just so you know. Well, thank you. Um, and yes, you're welcome. And yes, I will be watching tonight. I um, also wanted to thank you for bringing up women's basketball. I was wondering last week, I was like, I'm going to call him and give him some crap about not really bringing it up, which I understand <laughs> it's not the most exciting, but tonight's game is. so. Yeah, I think tonight, um, it, it, tonight it kind of... Um... Courtney, I want to choose the right words. It, it, it kind of goes mainstream in a way. No, like, like you know how sometimes somebody is a musician and they cross over to become a movie star. Mm -hmm. In this sense, yeah. women's basketball in this matchup tonight, I think it, it crosses borders into you don't have to be a fan of the sport to at least go, hey – I want to check that out. Right, you watch watch social media yeah. and see the the NBA players who are not playing tonight. They will be watching and tweeting more about that than their own. Yeah, and and I'm excited for the rivalry. Like you said, I uh, you know you can't deny Caitlin Clark's talent, but like my dad and I always say, she's a bit of a crybaby. So it I'm is. looking forward to Angel <laughs> Angel Reese giving her a hard time. So yeah, like I'm excited and, to watch. And you know what I like? I mean, Courtney, I, I, again, I feel like I'm having a very old man day here, but like rivalries are largely dead in sports. This is one right. of the rare moments. This is a rivalry. Yes. I, I, you know, good on Angel Reese saying what she said yesterday, but no, I don't think these two uh, hang out. I don't think these well, don't two think like each other. I, I kind of do. And she's doing this thing, like yeah. the whole John Cena thing. Like, yeah, yeah but, right. I, but I think that's just trash talk, which is fine. Well, huh? more give us more of it. Yeah, that's great. But I, I, I think they kind of respect each other and like each other. Yeah, I know, but I, I like it. Once the game was already oh, over, yes. and she's like, "Give me the ring. Yeah. Let's go." Well, I'm like, "This is great." I know. That was awesome. And then, of course, she was vilified. You can't oh, do that to oh, Caitlin. Oh. Caitlin does it every game. Right. Hey, please, please. You're watching a master class in media narrative. Right. Please. Let's go to Paul. 97.1. <laughs> Paul, how you doing? I'm doing great, Mike. Michael Stone, how are you, old buddy, old pal? I am fine, Paul. Ah, that's good. All right, man. You guys really work together. I got to say, this show gels when Stoney fills in. Thank you. The, the, um, the Godfather, brought to you by yeah. Speaker City. Um, <laughs> I already gave him the compliment of the century, but it doesn't matter anyway. <laughs> What's uh, up? Caitlin, great call. It's always good to hear women call the show. Um, hey, look, I'm going to preface this call by saying I'm perfectly fine turning in my man card. Um, if the callers and texters deem it necessary, I'm exclusively watching this game tonight. There is no doubt that I will not deviate from LSU Iowa State. Now, I mean, on. first of all, it's Iowa, but that's all okay. on. Hold on, wings are tied at two in a third period tonight. No, no, 
Wow. No, no, no. Okay. I'm, I'm Mike, I gave up on the Red Wings. Um, I, you know, I just did. Um, I, I, you know me, I'm a hockey nista, and I just don't see it with this Wings team. Paul, I'm, Paul I let me ask you a question. Who are you rooting for, Caitlin and the Hawkeyes or Angel and the Tigers? Caitlin. Okay. Caitlin and the Hawkeyes, absolutely. Why? Um, because I love the attention that women's basketball is getting. She's leading the charge. She busted Pistol Pete's record. Uh, uh, she's uh, the can't. darling of America. I can't, Paul. I love you. I love you. Yeah, you are a you are a gold there, there star. Are two caller. different sports. You yeah, can't Paul, mix that. Paul, you kill me with the Pistol Pete thing, my brother. It, please, Pistol Pete wasn't allowed to play as a freshman. Pistol Pete didn't have a three point line. Right. It is not the same record. You got. I can't can't do the media narrative. No. Just not the same. Now, second of all. Here, ask me who I'm rooting for. Who are you rooting for, Angel Mike? Reese. <laughs> I hope she dunks on Caitlin Clark. I can't wait. And then she does the Cena thing. And then she, I don't care. I just, I, 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 I like, I like a good villain. Yeah. I'm in. I can't take any more of the Caitlin Clark stuff. Let's go LSU. Plus, I like LSU. Like, just from my trip there this fall. <laughs> right. And Kim Mulkey's insane. I I'm in. I'm not a Kim Mulkey fan. I I, don't, I didn't say I was a fan. Okay. I said she's insane. That's true. What part of insanity is fandom? That's that's a good point. I she just, is insane. I just I don't know. I've had enough. <laughs> I need <laughs> give me Angel Reese. Let's go. Uh, right. <laughs> that's what I'm rooting for tonight. Family. The Brian, uh, that Brian. Do we still have the Brian Kelly in the system? Hold on, let's give this a spin back. I, I need this. Family. I mean, you're like Brian. You. That's not how you. No. No, you're from New England. I'm sorry, I didn't realize Foghorn Leghorn had showed up to the broadcast. <laughs> My family. <laughs> what? I said it all. <laughs> I say, I say. Right. It is still one of the craziest press conferences. Or, or, or basketball arrivals you've ever yes. seen. I'm here with my family, and I'm like, well, if you know the backstory of that deal, that wouldn't <laughs> totally be true, would it? No. Let's go to Steve, 97.1. Steve, what's up? Hey, what's going on? How are you? I'm well. I'm, uh, my, I don't have a rooting interest in the game, per se. I've definitely tricked my girlfriend into coming to eat down with me at the casino so I can be close to the sports book. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not betting on it at all. Just want to see it and know it's going to be a really high energy game. Because, Mike, I'm with you. I don't particularly care for the women's game. I'm conditioned to like slam dunks and mm-hmm. certain things that come with the men's game. But this game is going to be so full of energy. And I'm almost sure that the win- the winner of the women's national championship is probably coming out of it. I, don't, I mean, I no one's beaten South Carolina yet. I, but you know what? <laughs> hey. Steve, I'm with you. It's something. You know what it is, Steve? We are so desperate for things that are appointment viewing. We've gotten to a point in sports where so few of the games actually matter when we really think about it. Like if you're a Pistons fan or like if you're a Tiger fan, I have no qualms if you say I'm excited about baseball and I simply want to have it on tonight and relax. I get it. But how important is it or what's the draw to it? This is the only thing tonight along with Wings and Lightning. And that's even if you like hockey at all. I love hockey. Yeah, so those are the two. And if the Wings show their ass like they generally do against good teams, Saturday notwithstanding, I won't have a reason to go over there because it'll just make me sad. Yeah, absolutely, because this was supposed to be the year that they made the playoffs and it's looking real bleak right now, unquestionably. I'm, 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 I'm ready. Now, hold on. Does Angel Reese dunk? He mm-hmm. has before. I need I need that wow. tonight. That would be awesome. I need that tonight. I've never seen Caitlin Clark dunk. Does she dunk? Nah, you no. won't. I no, want- she just shoots it from the logo. <laughs> I want Angel Reese to dunk on Caitlin Clark tonight. And then Mulkey runs on the floor for like a high five in a in a glitter. Her clothes are made by a local boutique. Do you know this? That's yeah. a local Baton Rouge business. Oh. And she designs like every if you can't tell. I mean, it's yes. 
Wow. I tell you, those outfits are something they're, else, they're, cra- they're crazy. Would you wear that on Sportsworks after what you wore last night? <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, ch- check it out. Um, I don't know. I, I once dressed as a woman on Channel 7. No, no, that's not what I was referring to. Would you wear a Kim Mul- What if we got Stony for draft week? A Kim Mulkey blazer. Would oh, you yes. wear that yeah, on like a, the works? Like a male's blazer? Yes. yes. Yeah, a male blazer, yes. David, do you remember when we were shopping for your bishop outfit? <laughs> there might be a happy medium here. I think there is, yes. Draft week's approaching, Stoney. I know. You better make some uh, arrangements. Get ready to get green and stay green with Natural Way Lawn and Tree Service. Limited time only. You purchase a full lawn program. Receive free grub control as long as you mention my name or the station. And it doesn't matter. I know it's going to rain this week. Let him get out there. Let him get the first application of the season down. You will enjoy your lawn the rest of the summer. Don't wait for problems to arise. Certified applicators. Custom tailored solutions specifically to your yard and home. Trust a locally owned and operated company for over 30 years to do it right. It's naturalwaylawn.com or call 888-GET-GREEN. That's 888-GET-GREEN. It's Natural Way Lawn and Tree Service.
248-539-9797. Stoney in for Rico. Mike will be back from uh, doing nature's course, so to speak, in a second. Uh, meanwhile, let's go to Mello in Detroit. What's up, Mello? Mello in Detroit. I appreciate y'all taking my call. Thank you. Uh, Stoney, it's a pleasure. I'm going to tell you, Stoney, it's a pleasure. I've been uh, rocking with you for quite some time, so it's a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. Appreciate now, that. Here, yeah, here's the thing. Uh, I'm so surprised that nobody caught in with this assessment, but for those of you who don't know, this will be the Larry Bird versus Magic Johnson female version of college basketball. So, yes. I'm tuning in. I got the popcorn. I got the pizza. I even convinced my wife to watch it because she's familiar with Reese from LSU. Mm-hmm. But we're 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 going to be very entertained, and this will change the WNBA forever. This is the female version of Magic versus Bird. I'm I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say about that. But from here going, I, you forward, know, you know what, Melo? I think that's an interesting comparison. Although they have played before, Magic and Bird didn't. Right. Magic and Birds was also for the championship. This is just to get into the Final Four. But as far as the hype and all that stuff, you're correct, Mello. This is yes, analog- yes, yes, no. it's, it's analogous to Bird and Magic. There's no doubt about it because they are the yeah. two biggest stars in their collegiate sport right now. Well, just give it one more year to let it marinate, to let both of them hone in on their games and, and get, you know, just get a little more season. And, and, well, uh, they're going, well, Kaylin Clark's make, already said she's gone to WNBA, and I'm sure Angel Reese will be too. Exactly. And um, just one more thing. I'm, I do want to date myself because I'm, you know, I've, I've been around since the Detroit Shock years, and I've watched girl basketball, a female basketball, evolve over the years. And the number six or number seven female player on the roster now is a complete 180 of what said person used to be back in the day. Yeah, Ruth Riley couldn't play in today's WNBA. Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. These, These females today, I mean, I love the game. I love to watch the game because it's, it's, it's far more interesting now to see the athletics, the athleticism that has, um, you know, that's just basically to the forefront these days. I mean, it's but the so the so, opinion, fa- facts, Mello, the superstars in any sport in any year, if they're superstars, they could be superstars in any era because of the training differences and things like that. So, like you know, Lisa Leslie and Nancy Lieberman and people like that, they'd be what great is today. Happening here, he was making a comparison. He was saying that. The athletes from the WNBA, when the shock were good, couldn't even you know be like sixth no. or seventh. I disagree with that. I don't. I don't think that's true. If they were if they were good, they're good. Generally speaking, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. like, the training, you know, like it's everything's different. Everything evolves. Will Chamberlain would still be great today, you know. Uh, I don't know, man. The advent of camera phones, he would have got himself. In some <laughs> well, that's. <laughs> That that's probable. He may have had a couple of sit downs with Commissioner Silver. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. Um, do you have your uh, Tiger overreaction? Yes. Because you want to do the JJ thing at five. Yes. You've got a major JJ McCarthy opinion. Well, if from somebody who's a hell of a lot, I respect a hell of a lot more than me. <laughs> mm. All right. No. <laughs> not him. Okay. Not him. And now you got my attention. Okay. You have Tiger overreaction. Tiger overreaction from three games. They play the Mets today. They won. They're 3-0. and Everybody knows three 1-1 one, one games. Two games where their offense was what we expected them to be, which was not very good, but they still won. And on Saturday, they scored a lot of runs. So I have to grade whether this is an overreaction or not. Yes, pretty much. Uh, the starting pitching, with the exception of uh, Kenta Maeda, is Top-notch, borderline elite overreaction. A slight overreaction when you invoke the term elite. Yes. But I think their pitching is very good. Mm-hmm. And I, I here's what I'll tell you. Maeda, every April, looks like Tanana the late years. <laughs> Let's just, I think you'll like him. 
Give him a few to warm up the engines. Right. But my my eight is going to, I think, be a solid arm for you. Right. Jack Flaherty uh, looked like Ryan Zimmerman and... Uh, he did it again. Sh- Jordan, Jordan Zimmerman. Zimmerman. You know, it's just like it's like when I, you said, I called Denzel Valentine Darnell Valentine all the time. Oh, my. Yeah. Anyway. Well, maybe we got Darnell the day they lost to Middle Tennessee State because it sure <laughs> wasn't. Darnell Valentine was a good college player. Anyway, I digress. Ralph Carlton Valentine. All right, that, go, that's go his ahead. father, who just chose go, between I, American and, and Michigan State and chose Spartan. God help me, please. <laughs> just go ahead. What about Jack Flaherty? Jack Flaherty looked great. So he and, you know, he, he reminded me of Jordan Zimmerman and Green at the beginning of their Tiger starting careers. Hopefully that would continue, but... Who knows? He, I think he that's great. an overreaction based on he hasn't been good since 2019. Okay. All right. And the health is always a problem. The bullpen between Foley and yeah. Shelby Miller and Holton and Chafin he give up get give did give up that one home run. Now, in the exception of Alex Lang, who looked more like Artie Lang, uh, the bullpen was incredible. Not an overreaction. Yeah. I really think good. their pitching and bullpen are what are going to keep him in it because the offense is vomit inducing. Okay. So let's get to the offense. Okay. All right. Uh, overreaction. Uh, Torque me. Torque needs to get his act together, or he's going to have a start like he had last Over year. Overreaction. Okay. Stand down. Okay. It's three games. Well, that's what we're saying. It's because it this is, three is games. an. I still believe Torque will hit thirty home runs. All right. Colt Keith looked overmatched by major Stop. league pitching. A complete overreaction and slanderous. Mark Kana looks like a good signing. Complete overre. Okay, once we got to the offense, he lost his mind. Well, I wasn't all positive. Jesus. Three <laughs> games, you're ready to talk about Mark Kana being just fine. It was fine. And not great. Fine. Uh Parker, Parker Meadows could be the fastest, he could be the, the fastest white tiger since Gibby. How about he could be the fastest guy in baseball? Yeah, that's like, true. No, he's fast. Yeah. Like, he's – here's what I like about the Tigers. There's a profile to the players they're attempting to acquire mm-hmm. where I think the athleticism is there. Colton Keith, Riley Green, you know, they tried it with the Adil, Akil Badu thing. Parker Meadows. There, there's a quotient here. Like, you have to be an athlete to go from playing second to learning third with Jace Jung. Like, I think, uh, in uh, in that sense, I like what some of their plan is. They want to be an athletic team. They want guys that are versatile. And, yes, you can laugh and say, well, baseball, you just stand there. No, to learn different no. positions, right. you need different range factors. you got to be an athlete. And the, as you call it, the Frankenstein third base huh. has been okay in three games. Complete overreaction. <laughs> three games. I mean, Herschel's got two hits. Banya's got two hits, including the game winner yesterday. Well, that's it. That settles it. Third base is locked up. <laughs> no, it's overreaction. Listen, exactly. Here's, here's the thing. It doesn't matter in the short term how you win games, right? Just win. Yes. The the White Sox, if it's not for the Oakland A's, I think the White Sox are the worst team in baseball. And come to Comerica Park and see the athletics. Fine. Because the job in this first 11 games win. is to get out to a nice start. Yes. Be Seven, nine and two. Six, be eight and three. Yeah, you're playing White Sox who are garbage. The Mets who are garbage. Uh, the the the. I just lost my train of thought. The Athletics. The Athletics and the who Pirates. are garbage. Now the Pirates are off to a four and zero start. The Pirates always get off to a good start. And I'm it not seems. ready to go crazy. No, there. I know. But my point is, let's get out. You haven't been above 500 after the month of April since 2016. Yes. Let's All right. Just start there. Two more overreactions. Oh God. Okay, maybe. Stay away from the offense. We'll be okay. Uh, Jason Benetti was unbelievable, and I want to listen or watch every game uh, when I don't have Dan Dickerson on. I think he is the biggest offseason acquisition they made, which is both a blessing and a curse. Yes, they spend more on the scoreboard than they did on their offense. Uh, Also, um, the home run celebration could be the worst thing I've ever seen. Explain to the people who didn't dedicate okay. their weekend watch. Okay, last year, their home run celebration that every team does in the dugout was basically, it was a Red Wing thing. They went and they had a hockey stick there, the guy who hit the home run, put the helmet on, they took a shot on goal, and whatever. This, like, that wasn't good enough for this year. They tried to change something new. Try something new. It was Spencer Torkelson's idea, I found out, to do a home run celebration when you put a spear and put Two or three pizzas on it. 
not real pizzas, but, you know, fake pizzas on it. Mm. And his explanation was, well, our owner owns Little Caesars and it's really good pizza. So, and there are two years of celebrations. One is dedicated to the Red Wings. The next is dedicated to Little Caesars. What's next? Motor City Casino next year? And in two years, the abandoned buildings of 313 to District Detroit? (laughs) <laughs> we got an abandoned building to celebrate to do high Dave, fives with. David, take over. I'm putting the third base outside. That's enough now. Okay. <laughs> Talk about selling out to your ownership. It's the district celebration where everyone goes silent because there's no one there. <laughs> It's like when they freeze out a guy when he hits a home run, he yes. comes back to the dugout. Nobody talks to him. We'll have a little train there. It'll be the fake cue oh, line. Okay. Yep. Time to turn his mic off. All right. Listen up. Football's done. Baseball. Masters. The end of March Madness. Hungry Howie's has you covered the mix and match. Any two items starting at six ninety nine. That's any two items from the Howie bread, the flatbread, salads, oven baked subs, or yes, they're original. Medium one topping pizzas. Six ninety nine. You get dinner on the table in twenty minutes. So mix and match whatever you like on the menu at six ninety nine. Possibilities are endless. When it comes to flavor, Hungry Howie's has you covered. Eight different flavored crusts to choose from. It's Hungry Howie's. Don't settle for less than the best. Order off the mix and match menu today.
three. Hold on a second. I'm turning my thing off there. All right. Three, two, one. Hey, Planet Fitness is the home of the judgment-free zone where anyone, and we mean anyone, can feel comfortable and work on their fitness goals. Planet Fitness is where you can build a lasting, active lifestyle. I love Planet Fitness. Not only does it make me feel great physically, mentally it does too. I'm a cardio guy, love the elliptical, the recumbent bike, the treadmill. And if you're short on time, you get a full body workout in just 30 minutes in the Planet Fitness 30-minute circuit. They got a great deal going on right now through April 12th. $1 down, just 10 bucks a month. That's right. Planet Fitness still just ten dollars a month. Now you want all the perks? Upgrade to the Black Card. Enjoy use of the amenities such as the Black Card Spa, featuring the Hydra Massage, and over two thousand five hundred locations worldwide. You have access to. So join Planet Fitness today. One dollar down. Cancel anytime. Planet Fitness. It's a judgment-free zone. Visit your local Planet Fitness or www.planetfitness.com.
Brought to you by Cars for Kids. Jake Waltman is happy to be back in the lineup tonight for the Red Wings. Simon Edvinson has filled in for him throughout the six-game absence. Waltman has been impressed with him. Here are the Wings and Lightning tonight on WWJ at 7. Derek Lalone also giving an update on goalie Vili Husso has been dealing with a lower body ailment since December. He went back to Detroit today for imaging, and Lalone said, quote, he's progressing, but there's a wide time frame on it, and it's still unavailable for us, end quote. Former Met Mark Canna is back in New York tonight in a Tiger uniform. Detroit looking for their first 4-0 start since the 2015 season. Canna hitting fifth and has started the season strong, collecting four hits and 11 ABs. Reese Olsen opposes Sean Manaya on the bump. We have you covered right here on 97 won the ticket with the call at 7-10. Kate Cunningham and Marcus Sasser are questionable for the Pistons against the Grizzlies. Vegas lights the Motor City in this one, however, by two and a half. Former Pro Bowler Vontae Davis has passed away at the age of 35. Davis last played in the NFL in 2018. As a member of the Bills, police were called to residence in South Florida and found him deceased. No foul plays expected according to the preliminary investigation. At the Coral Health Update Desk, I'm Jeremy Otto. For more, go to 97.1 The Ticket or odyssey.com. Clap it up, baby. Clap it up. All right, 5 o'clock, great to have you aboard. Yes, Michael. Mike, I have a question for you. Yes. Either A or B. Okay. Of these two, what do you like best? Here's choice number one, and here's choice number two. Kid Rock from 04 post game, where you were about six Bud Lights deep, or today. Okay, let me hear him one more time. <laughs> wow. I like the dude at the end <laughs> and the fact that it was Pistons Championship, yes. you hosting yes. a show that wasn't a show, right. and Kid Rock is like, listen, creepy guy, I'm just trying to get laid. Yes. I probably still go with the original. Okay. It's legend. It's like, you know, anything else. The original is usually it's better. It's like your Pamela Tommy Lee thing, <laughs> that, that drop. I know we don't... I know we don't have that in the system. Maybe by next Monday I'll have okay. uh, some of those for right. you. I'm back with you next Monday. Uh, we'll we'll rock and roll. Mm-hmm. I want to bring this up. You missed anything, odyssey.com, rewind. Two notes. Let me at least invite Red Wing fans in before you do this J.J. Mm-hmm. McCarthy thing. We started the show with the Red Wings. I'm making it very simple. You can say I'm a horse's ass, or you could say, Mike, I, I, I feel that way. It's win tonight or F off. Like, enough's enough. If they lose tonight to Tampa, they will have lost five in a row. Yes, they played well Saturday. You didn't win. You don't get a participation award. It, you, I don't want to watch the scoreboard anymore. I want to win games and handle business. You know, win tonight or just see yourself out. Is that unfair? Maybe it's where I'm at. Because I get it. watching them just bums me out because they're not the fun team I watched for, certainly around Valentine's Day, but for a lot of this year. They started hot, cooled off, got hot fell off cliff. They're yet to regain any footing. I know. They're 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 a streak machine and the streak is not going well right now. That's for damn sure. And if they get it yes, and if they get a point, you know, that's your participation trophy, which is obviously one's better than none, but not as good as two. Right. Uh, so I'm not going to completely write them off, but I understand you and your ilk, if you feel that my way. My ilk. Win tonight. <laughs> Are you a part of my ilk? Two four eight. <laughs> No, win tonight word, or be it? done. It is. It is. Win tonight or I'm done with you. Yes. Until I'm not. But I'd love to hear from the hockey elite on it. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. Now you have a new take from two on people. JJ McCarthy. Yes. Go ahead. Um this this morning, a guy by the name of Mike Kills, who writes covers the Denver Broncos, pointed out uh quarterback rankings of this year's draft eligible quarterbacks from Jim Miller, the former Spartan quarterback, Waterford native, uh, NFL quarterback as well, 
And Greg Cosell, Howard's nephew of NFL Films, who's a great guy. He was very nice to my daughter at NFL All Films. All right. Nobody cares. But anyway. Let's keep it moving. He, uh, he, he's a savant when it comes to tape work and study and things like that. He's highly respected. Here's, first of all, they ranked the top six quarterbacks. Jaden Daniels, they had number one. Drake May, two. Caleb Williams, three. Michael Penix, four. Bo Nix, five. J.J., sixth. On J.J. McCarthy, this is what they had to say. Quote, this is Greg Cosell. I don't think McCarthy's tape is very good. I've talked to a lot of people about McCarthy. I don't know where all the momentum is coming from because I've not talked to anyone. I'm talking about people in the league who see McCarthy that way. Jim Miller, quote, remember when Colin Kaepernick was with Harbaugh out in San Francisco? Everything was a fastball. He could never make touch throws. He could never go up and down over the linebacker because everything was a three-quarter delivery fastball. McCarthy's a lot like that, and he misses a lot of throws over the middle where he's behind the receiver. Now the question is asked, is McCarthy being used as a smokescreen to move up by teams, or are they not seeing what others are? I thought it's pretty interesting, especially on the touch pass, although... In the playoff, he had a few really nice touch passes to Roman Wilson. Yeah, including like one the- that the only reason it wasn't picked is it got tipped. Yeah. And it got caught because of it. I Okay. Here's, here's – this is where it's at for me. Mm-hmm. Okay? I have no problem if a team looks at the tools, the traits. How is J.J. McCarthy any different than Max Clark? Think about this. What yeah. the Tigers drafted on was not production. It was projection. Correct. They decided to take Max Clark because he had all the tools right. and they thought they could develop him into X, Y, and Z. Right. Versus Wyatt Lankford, I had the production. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't have a problem if a team decides we're going to draft on tools. What I've had an issue with is when you get beyond the tools, do not just throw in my face a 10-throw highlight reel. When you right. don't throw it, well, it's not J.J.'s fault, dot, dot, dot. No, no, it's not his fault, but it's his reality. Didn't have to throw it much. Played behind an Alito line. Played behind a running game that was going to run it 40 or 50 times. And I can point to multiple points last season when they needed J.J. to throw it, and it almost cost him the game. So I, I have a bit of an issue where the actualization of the football, I, I don't have it. Yeah, you want me to cite the throw to Cornelius Johnson in the Rose Bowl on the run towards the sideline, and you go, "That's Josh Allen." Yes, yeah, there the moments are there. Mm-hmm. But when we're talking about okay, now let's place him amongst these other quarterbacks. Do you know what I actually find the most interesting in this? Their take on Caleb Williams mirrors where I'm at. You think Jaden Daniels is better? I don't know that he is. I'm saying I'm willing to have a conversation that certain people are like, wait, what do you mean you don't think Caleb invented football? And I'm like, well. (laughs) Well, to me, the thing with J.J. is if he played in an offense like Jaden Daniels or even like Caleb Williams, would the production be that good? And I think it would, and that's what I think everybody is – Projecting. That's why you're right. It is on projection because you're sitting there and you're seeing him make a lot of those throws and he does have a gun, uh, but th- th- there's definitely question marks there. There's no doubt. And the other thing why I think he is risen up draft boys, look, I'm first to admit it. I thought he should have stayed in school one more year. I never thought he would be considered a top 10, let alone a top five pick by certain people. But is he? I, well, I, well, that's the. So this is where it, your is question it a, is. It seems it's a smokescreen. What's fact or fiction here, guys? Stoney's giving you Greg Cosell, who apparently was nice to his daughter, and <laughs> Jim Miller. And they're saying, hey, this isn't what you're being told it is. That the people they've spoken to don't feel this way about JJ. That JJ is not going to be a top five pick, top six pick. Right. Look, I think it's draft season. All I've said from the start is uh, I understand if J.J.'s a first-round pick, and I understand if somebody does something stupid because they're desperate. Look at what the Niners did with Trey Lance. Complete projection. 
He played one game the year prior and played at one double A the year before that. In a, in a makeup, in the one game was like basically a makeup COVID game, right? Ju- just for him, probably. So it was a showcase. Yes, but it was all projection about look at the the measurables, look at look at this tape, and it's like on a camcorder. It, it can work, but I get very leery of the projection versus the actual. Now again, the other thing with JJ is he is very good running the football. He can be. Yes. The problem. You better learn to do what Lamar does, which is not get hit. Yes. Because JJ will get snapped in half. Yes, that 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 is true. 248 539 9797. The ticket text that we'd love to hear from you, as somebody in this radio station says, well, too many times on a weekend. Okay, that's just, you're out of line. <laughs> I, I, you are. I know. Oh! I, 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 I know. God. I've turned into Taj Gibson. What can I tell you? Will you stop? <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> Jesus. We two, almost got through the whole show. Almost. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. David, when you hear this about JJ, do you buy or sell what Greg Cosell or Jim Miller are saying? It's so tough because we're in silly season right now right. when it comes to the draft. The final twenty five days. I, I I think I lean more towards believing them that executives are wondering where this hype is coming from. Because I'm also wondering where the hype is coming from. I'm a Michigan fan. Right. He did great in college. He did what he was supposed to do. But I just don't see the hype where he's a top 10 selection for me. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the other thing, and you can you can say it's a credit to the offensive line, the game plan, or whatever. We know in the National Football League, the most important thing about quarterbacks is W's. And the fact that he is, at least in college, a damn good leader and won a lot of football games, I think that has something yeah. to do with and it, it, too. It also coincided with a, a great cheating scandal. So, I mean, there will be this idea of, can I bring Connor Stallions to the NFL? Oh, come no, on. No, it doesn't break down no. to that. But I no. want spy glasses on the giant sidelines. <laughs> it, but, but to me, I don't know. When the pocket collapses on him, how does he handle it? I didn't see that in college. There are things here that I'm really questioning. Right. I wouldn't draft him in the but, top but, 10. But, guys, this is – No, what, I wouldn't draft him in the top 10 either. Yeah, but hold on. If you need a quarterback and your owner's like, what's your answer for this? I'm going to fire you if I got to look at this broke bleep again. And you go, fine. You want a quarterback, Mr. Fancy Pants? Look at this kid. He's got a great smile. Like, you, you – ha- teams are going to do bleep to get quarterbacks. I understand that. But a, a team that's going to draft him – and start him right away, I think, is really stupid. But the pro- – okay, agree totally with the principal, but you know where the sport know, is going. I know, The sport is I draft you, I play you. Right. This is the Terry Bradshaw ain't sitting around for and, three years. And, and the, it also is you do what the owner wants or, you know, no He'll matter – find he, someone he, who will. Right, and that's Frank Reich. A hundred – a thousand he didn't, want, he didn't want Bryce Young. Nope. But his owner did or but his no, general I, manager did. I understand. Look, if you're Vegas, if you're the Giants, if you're Minnesota, if you're Denver. Okay, so we have four teams that have no access to the three presumed legitimate QBs. Right. We're not having a conversation about J.J. McCarthy as it relates to Drake May, Jaden Daniels, and Caleb Williams. I'm not, at least. No. But if I put J.J. with Penix, J.J. with Bo Nix, I can have that conversation. Yes, absolutely. And I can – and by the way – Oh, you didn't like him in college. Uh, I, I wasn't the one drinking his bathwater like you idiots. I just told you he was putting up service academy numbers. You know, it must be nice to be spoon-fed six throws a game. <laughs> the point I'm making is in the NFL, I don't care where you went to school. If you need a quarter, like if, if, if the Giants take him, I'll root for him. I don't care. Right. You're drafting on tools. Any, it, anybody that doesn't is a fan of a team that doesn't like the player on their team because of where he went to college. Did you like you're, Chris you're Spielman? Nuts. Damn right I like Chris Spielman. Well, he's a Buckeye. Yes, How'd exactly. That work? Yeah. So I, th- that's all. I mean, Mike, I, I think you could say we've seen the best of Penix. We've seen the best of Bo Nix. You know what we probably can't say? That we've seen the best of McCarthy. No, we haven't. So on that alone, you could sell that to your owner. Correct. And if you don't have a QB and you go, well, I'll tell you what, you don't want to take this kid, here's Aiden O'Connell. What, rather, are you kidding me? I'd rather have J.J. McCarthy than Aiden O'Connor. Exactly. You, right. Hey, here's Daniel Jones's neck brace. Yes. I mean, it's it just, this is the reality. Right. 248-539-9797. Perfect temperature to sleep, 68 degrees. What's not up for debate? The eco-friendly, best mattress made. It is the iComfort Eco, supportive, designed to keep you cool, comfortable, and feeling restored. Or Serta's perfect sleeper for pressure-relieving comfort and support while you maintain a balanced sleep temperature. Serta mattresses, made in Michigan, have been for 110 years. Just go to Serta.com to find a retailer near you.
Oh, and, and by the way, if you wanted confirmation that the White Sox might be the worst team in baseball, just going to casually lose a 9 nothing game here on, on a Monday. <laughs> they are, and nobody cares. Guys, win your games. You got 13 chances at them. You're already 3 0. Win all 13, but my God. They they're playing bad. the Braves, though. Dude, they're bad. The Braves are really good. I understand. They're bad. I know. Between, now, again, the I never can figure the Royals out. Because when you is, think they're going to be 50 and 110. Did you see the home run with Junior hit this weekend? He's, he's awesome. I know. But look, let's assume Royals are going to be bad. The White Sox, we know are bad. Correct. Twins' best player just tore his quad, quad. Royce Lewis. And look, the Guardians, here's the issue. They're always going to have pitching. It never fails. They will always pitch. Their hitting could be worse than the Tigers. That you just nailed it. Their lineup is, to call it pedestrian, would be insulting. To pedestrians. To pedestrians. <laughs> so it is, guys, the Tigers, it's the same thing. They have every opportunity. Here's where we start in a baseball season. You haven't been 500 when the calendar's hit May since 2016. Let's just start there. Your first 11 games, you got three against the Sox. Win, win, win. Excellent. Mets are terrible. Factually, that's a bad baseball team. Mm-hmm. Okay, the A's are coming to town. Bad baseball team. Let's get out to a decent start. Yes, That's all I care. About. Let's win. If they win four out of the next four out of the next six, that would put them at what seven and two. Six and zero. Oh. Okay. <laughs> all right. No, <laughs> David, take a text, please. I'll give us some text, and then an interesting thing that me and Kenny kind of did in the back here regarding JJ. Uh, get some text here. JJ at twelve or thirteen in the draft. That's about where he should go, in my opinion. That is from Jason in Royal Low. Not mad at it. No. All quarterbacks are projections in college football. They are not close to the NFL there. You could be a great in college and be terrible in the NFL. True. Can't compare the two. Yes, Joey Harrington. Can. Hold on, hold on. The difference is you can take quarterbacks who run pro concepts and have 2,000 throws on tape. Look, say what you are. Right, for instance, Penix is 23. He's blown his knee out twice. What I can do with Penix that you can't do with McCarthy, not that I'm advocating for him to go 12 overall, I can put on the tape – and Kalen DeBoer and Ryan Grubb with NFL concepts developing NFL receivers, panics making NFL throws into tight windows. Right. Okay? So there's some level. But if anyone could decode the quarterback mystery in the draft, then it wouldn't be the position with the highest bust rate of any. I mean, how many quarterbacks go in the first round versus how many end up being stars? Oh, it's in Incredible. None of us can unlock it. No. The league can unlock it. But it's not an insult when I say that JJ's purely projection. Exactly. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. And, if, and you're sitting there saying, well, Penix has this because it's more of an NFL pro style, whatever. The only two teams that you could actually say that JJ fits in from what he did in college would be if he, with the Harbaugh brothers. If Jim would run, which I don't think he would because he's got uh, Herbert there, but if he would run that type of offense and, you know, John does sign a kind of with Lamar. I'd feel way more comfortable. Listen, if my team takes him, I'm fine. Yeah. Because I can't look at Daniel Jones again. Right. If J.J. were bigger, this is the thing. And I don't buy this hype. Of, well, he put on 12 pounds for the God, but he will get snapped in half. Like Josh Allen, it was all projection. Josh Allen did not have the tape. You could sit down, and I remember watching Wyoming, Iowa, and I go, all right, here's the kid I'm supposed to care about. And he can, he can bleed pass. I'm going, this? This is what I'm supposed to be amped up for? Well, it's worked out where Josh Allen's become a good QB. Now, I think he's overrated, but Josh Allen is 6'5", 240. Right. Now, that's a different deal. I, I, I don't know. I'm willing to risk it. See, but here, here's the thing, guys, and, and me and Kenny kind of did an interesting experiment and I know it's not gospel, okay? Mm. But we went through the way too early 2024 NFL draft. So right after last year's draft. Okay. JJ was not in, we went to three of them, not in any right. of them for the first round. So our question was, okay, so then what's changed with JJ? Connor Stout. It's just winning <laughs> because nothing's changed in the way he ran the offense. No. Everything was the exact same. The team success. So that's so that's the but determining my point factor. Would be, here. If JJ were really sharp, Penix couldn't complete a pass. You know, Alabama, Milro couldn't complete a pass. They needed JJ in the third quarter of that Bama game. They right. couldn't, they he couldn't. They went, I swear to God, they went three and out like five straight times. Yep. 
And then they asked J.J. to throw it a little bit, and what happened? It wasn't J.J. that did it. It was two broken running plays that scored the touchdowns. J.J.'s highlight in that game was a five-yard pass that went for 50 and a flutter ball that got tipped. That's just factual. I know. Now, what what they're going to do is, well, look at his win-loss record. My opinion on stuff like that, that's a lot like a pitcher's win-loss record. A lot goes into that. I, I have a hard time with it. He's got a big arm. He runs a sub 4 five forty. He's charismatic. He's clearly respected in the locker room. These are all good things. Yeah, this is 11-on-11. 11 11. This isn't a tennis match. If it's right. a tennis match, I can say, okay, cool, wonderful. It's other factors involved in winning football games. Like when you right. have one of your biggest wins of the season, when they don't let you throw a pass the last two and a half quarters of a game, you can say, brilliant move by Sharon Moore, but the fact is, the first couple series of that game are going to be what his life is in the NFL. There's going to be a pass rush. Yes, there you will don't be. get to stand back there. And they knew right away we can't pass pro for JJ today. Right. So we're just going to run the ball. That's not going to be an option in the pros. No. So I understand both sides of the argument. Correct. And I'm not dogging the guy. No, because it is based on projections. They're projecting that if he played in a better offense, he'd be much better as a candidate. Yes, Ken. So what's his ceiling then? Ryan Tannehill, if you get him a good running back like Derrick Henry, is that the plan with JJ? I'm, I'm done. Kenny, I'm done pretending to understand no. ceilings in the NFL because, Kenny, I've seen guys who you thought would be great. Like, look, I thought Trevor Lawrence would be fabulous. Trevor Lawrence now is struggling. Now, he had one really good year, bad rookie. Let's just wipe that clean. It was the Urban Meyer year. Great year, two, wins playoff game. Huge comeback. I thought he was very mediocre this season. Offensive line wasn't very good. But Trevor Lawrence was supposed to be generational. He's not. Not right. yet. Then you get another guy like Josh Allen, who the times I watched him couldn't complete a pass, and everyone thinks he's a top five QB. I don't know, man. Kenny, I wish I had an understanding of it. And I don't think GMs do. And a lot of times these quarterbacks, it takes a while for people to get it. I mean, it took a while for Stafford to be even good, right? Because he had a crap team around him. Yeah. And he was 1-1. One, one. Look. Uh, that was a bad draft. I mean, idiots like me wanted him to take Aaron Curry. Ooh. I Thanks. admit it. I was a Sam Bradford guy. And Bradford wouldn't have been terrible if he wouldn't keep getting hurt. Well, that was a, that was a year after, right? Or the year before? That wasn't the that same was a year. year. After. Yeah, year after, right. I don't Look, man, there's no rhyme or reason. No. I think it's pretty clear. Right. You can laugh at that and go, what do you mean there's no rhyme or reason? Oh, I don't know. I saw Mitch Trubisky go number two in the draft, and a team moved up to Jamarcus get Russell. Well, he got addicted to lean. I mean, there's a bit, there was a bit of a problem there. It's called alcohol I, and drug abuse. I know, but still. Fair enough. Hey, did you know he could throw it 70 yards from his knee? Well, so can Joe Milton. 248-539-9797. Uh, we will get a blitz in the mix. A lot left to do. Northville Lumber, you know the drill. Oldest company in the state of Michigan. Largest track stacking outlet in the country. Nobody stocks more. Nobody sells more. It's Northville Lumber. Contractors, homeowners, they bought enough treks from Northville to cover 26 football fields. And there is a reason they can move that product. It's because it's all in stock. It's in their warehouse. No lead times, no shipping time, none of the supply chain crying. They got you covered. You need someone to build that deck, they'll introduce you to a pro. Get involved before the price increases. Just call Northville Lumber today or simply go to NorthvilleLumber.com. That's NorthvilleLumber.com.
Thank you both. Listen, Home Run Tuesdays are back. FanDuel, bringing it to you. Way to bet baseball. Uh, look, betting baseball is hard. All right, you need a bankroll. You have to consistently take money line dogs, and you got to be in it for the long haul. So if that doesn't sound fun to you and you occasionally, in a very light manner, want to bet on some home runs, well, FanDuel's got you with Dinger Tuesdays. It's simple. You bet on a player to hit a home run, and FanDuel gives you five bucks in bonus bets for every home run that gets hit in that game regardless. It's FanDuel.com slash ticket. Get in on all of the Tuesday action. It's FanDuel.com slash ticket. You can make every moment more with FanDuel. It's America's number one sports book and an official betting partner of Major League Baseball. 21 and up, present Michigan. Bonus issued, non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Max bonus $25 a game. Restrictions apply. See terms. Sportsbook.fanduel.com. And if you have a gambling problem, just call 1-800-GAMBLER.
All right, odyssey.com, rewind. You missed anything. Rico back tomorrow. Stoney with me next Monday. Draft bearing down on us. Actually, I'm with Rico Friday. after opening day, too. Yeah. Yes. For, that'll be like 10 minutes, but yes. Well, now the way the Tigers' bats are and like, Oakland's bats, it's going to be a quick game. Good call. It's all right. I'll, hey, listen. I'll throw First a, pitch at 105. Uh, we'll be done by 310. I'll, I'll throw a late double in for you. You'll okay. be all right. I got you covered. Okay. Uh, David, what do you got? Yeah, someone's referencing because we talked about the mock draft there where the uh, Patriots gave up their pick here. Someone's saying getting first-round picks for next year will be coveted because of Carson Beck. What? I don't think Carson Beck is going to be like – even in the same league as Caleb Williams or Jaden Daniels, do you? Unless I'm look, I'll leave it to Kenny. Uh, leave me. He's out a of good it. quarterback. I don't dislike Carson Beck, but I, I'm not yeah, tanking he, a season to get him. He's a fine quarterback. Yeah, but he's not. He's not no. that level. No, wasn't at least fi- not right now. wasn't fine enough to beat Bama. Uh. <laughs> JJ is no more than what Tim Tebow was. That's okay. from Tim and Clarkson. That's a little harsh. Well, Tebow is a great college quarterback. But he, we knew he was going to be nothing in the NFL, except still went in the first round. I know, and that's why I will yeah. never rip someone for taking JJ. Yeah. I've seen quarterbacks with way less upside. I still never understood how Zach Wilson was taken in the first round, ever. I know. That was a Joe Tessitore uh, Friday night <laughs> Mountain West special, and I'm like, all right, this kid ain't getting away with this stuff no. in the pros. Someone says, "What's the difference between JJ and Anthony Richardson?" Both drafted on tools. Probably probably Moore. about four inches and 40 pounds. Yeah. And another tenth of a second in the 40-yard dash. Like, guys, you have to look at, in totality, Anthony Richardson had no help at Florida, no offensive line, and his receivers led the country in drops. You're getting a Josh Allen 6'5", 240, freakazoid athlete. That's the difference. J.J. had everything. He was essentially Carlton Banks. He was born into money. Great O-line, great running game. Philip Banks always there to clean up your messes. It's different, guys. And J.J. from a physical profile, he ain't slow, but he's not Jaden Daniels. He's not slow, but he's not Anthony Richardson. Now, he's not tiny. He's not Bryce Young, but he's not Josh Allen. He's not Drake May prototypical. So you're in that middle space. What's up, Rieger? I know I, I heard. I don't you. think Carlton ever got in trouble. <laughs> you get my point. I, I do. I do. By hey. the way, so I'm I'm driving in today, guys. Yes, a great show as always. I enjoy the Mike Mike show. I enjoy this time slot as always. Um, I just disagree with the women's basketball thing. Like I, it wasn't even on my radar. I, I got the wings on my TV. That's okay. That's I, right. I got the Tigers. But now I kind of want to watch because I, I think I watched last year. I only want to watch because I want to watch Angel Reese talk bleep to Caitlin Clark, and I want to see Kim Mulkey like flip the crowd off or yes. something. It yeah. really has nothing to do with the game. Is it there going to be any references to the Washington Post post game? I, I, I don't know. think so. It's a because wild it wasn't card. that bad of an article. I, I know it was a profile. And most of the stuff that was taken was from her book. Well, if she did anything, she gave a lot of pub to that article. Damn Once right it came it out, everybody wanted That's to read it. By right. the way, Rieger, since you are such a huge Michigan basketball fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do we got? FAU center Vladislav Golden has entered the transfer portal. Let's I go. wonder if he's going to follow Dusty. How, how many points? 15.7, 6.9 rebounds, Let's and 1.6 blocks per game. He's a good ball player. Seven, he get that one, big guy from Yale, He's 7-1. Is he coming to Michigan to play hockey? Because that's what he sounds like. Vladislav <laughs> Golden. Listen. Let's go, Slav. Come Listen, on. the biggest thing, Michigan's got to support Dusty May. Yes. As long as these kids aren't Dexter Manley, Michigan's got to let him into school. Right. Like, if Dusty May wants to bring three of his former players from FAU, don't hit me with this credit garbage. No. Your credits ain't that special in freshman math. All right, no offense. The credits from Ross Business School shouldn't transfer. There's a difference here. Correct. These kids are all taking basket weaving. Yes, Rick. I'm curious. Yeah, buddy. You as a Sparty. Yeah. Is that the number one thing you get annoyed with with Michigan? What? The fact that they think they're elite when it comes to academics? No, I laugh at them. Oh, okay. no, that doesn't mean they're A lot elite. of Michigan fans. No, because they're, they're annoyed that Michigan State people think that they're in the same class as them academic-wise. Yeah, well, that's fine. They're both top 75 universities <laughs> on the globe. My point to you is the academics thing only hurts you. You're not, you're not helping yourself. 
Dusty May needs administrative oh, I support. I couldn't give a damn about that. I, I don't even care if kids go to school. Buddy, I got news for you. Please. When a kid transfers well, you're just a to sports four, fan, that's a difference. Right. When a kid transfers to four different schools in four years, you know what they're not doing? Academics. Getting paid that's where we've bit. arrived at in college. School. Well, the kid from Yale, I mean, if you can't get a kid from Yale into Michigan, I mean, come on. Well, he'd be a graduate transfer, wouldn't he? I don't think this one I, would I be. I don't think no. so. Oh, let me see Michigan not take Yale's credits. I know. I'll laugh my balls I know. off. <laughs> exactly. You imagine? Well, they've, there's two seven-footers that they could go after. Who the hell knows? What about Terrace Reed? I think I think Izzo's going to go get Terrace Reed. I don't care. Uh, okay. um, all right, what do you got coming up next? All right, we're going to talk about the Tigers. I thought it was fascinating. Stoney's overreactions, what you agreed with, what you did not agree with. So I have my own thoughts. I want to know what people think through three games is actually real about this team. Right. And then we're going to talk a little Red Wings as well because it's another massive game. I- I'm I'm exhausted. So let me ask you I'm this. burnt out, man. Mike says if they lose, he's done. Even if they would beat the Rangers on here, here's, Friday. I just don't care. Like, you would have lost five you. in a row, Dude, and I'm sick you, of it. But like, here's win the a problem, game. right? Yeah. So if they lose and Philly loses tonight. Yeah, see, here's what we're doing then, already. Then, then, then you're still two yeah, Here we go. Out. So now now right. we're yeah, just going to play the game. And then, and then, and then the Wings go the game. to a tougher, uh, easier part of their schedule. Who's the bigger crackhead? Well, that's, that's what, what, that's that's what, what you do when is. you start right. standings watching. That's what the eighth seed is. Right. The eighth seed is, what do you like better, syphilis or gonorrhea? Right, I mean, it's, it's the 64th team in the tournament, right? Oh, you are? That was me talking about Kid Rock in 2004. When's the golf start, Stoney? The what? When you hit the club up? Uh, probably when the weather gets nice. You realize that drop fits anything you ask, Tony. <laughs> ask him something else. Tony, what are you going? What's for dinner tonight? <laughs> Stoney, I hear you're buying a new car. Why? <laughs> Stoney, how's the weather outside? It doesn't Sud- matter. Suddenly, we have a new entry into the July tournament. This versus this. Ooh. It's a power no, duo. No, I think the chair is way ahead. We'll see. We shall see. All right, Rieger, you're up next. See you Stony, next Monday. Tremendous work. Absolutely. Love it. We'll be back tomorrow at 2. We'll do it all over again. 97-1. Planet Fitness is the home of the judgment-free zone where anyone, and we mean anyone, can feel comfortable and work on their fitness goals. Now, I am a 